All right, guys, let's get this party started. Uh, Ethan Klein apparently had a debate with Fresh and Fit. It seemed to kind of come out of nowhere uh, yesterday. It's interesting because I he just announced that he's taking like an, ade- an indefinite leave of absence like the day before. So great stuff. Anyway, I'm curious. Uh, this <laughs> I've been seeing some people being critical here of Ethan. Um, but this should be a slam dunk against Fresh and Fit, no? I <laughs> got to. Uh, but okay, let's just get this going. Love y'all. All right. All right. I am uh, admitting them to the room right now. Oh my god. Here we god. go. My boys, my dogs. Oh my god. Is it bad? Is What's that up, bad? Players? Wow, that's awkward. Wait, hold on. Oh, they can't Probably have me. to connect their audio. Incredible. Go. A second. Hello, can you hear us okay? We can hear you. Look, yeah, we can hear you. Can you guys hear us? We can. can I can you, hear you guys good, yeah. Are you seeing our uh, video feed okay? Uh, yeah, we are. We're, we can see your video feed. Um, wow. video feed. Ethan lost some weight. It was that, so bad that Fresh and Fit privated the video. Was it true? That's great. I did. Thanks for noticing. I appreciate that. Thanks, awesome. man. Good job with that. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you saying that. And that's not even not even us trying to be funny. Like dead serious. That's great. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's good. No, I, no, I know. I I know. I appreciate that. I, Thank you so much for two dollars from Schminklebop. Good morning, Papa. Nut. I mean, Papa Gut. Thank you. I appreciate. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you guys. I appreciate so, that, guys. You guys know that we're live, right? Just to be clear, and you guys are also live. Yeah. Yeah. No okay. Problem. Okay. Cool. I like to just mention it because sometimes people they yeah, realize halfway people, through they're like, "Wait, this is live." I'm like, yeah. <laughs> "Not many people can do live, so we're one of the few." <laughs> you know what? Is lot doing live stuff that hard to do? Yeah. Just to say something nice about you guys here at the top. <laughs> okay. Um, I gotta say, you guys do three lives per week, and we do that too. And I know it ain't easy. It's a real operation to put on three live shows every week. So I gotta give you guys props for. Th- is it that hard? I mean, I guess they come in with more curated content certainly than I do. But I, is it like super difficult? I guess you gotta make it entertaining. I mostly just come on and like watch a video. I guess so. That sure. I appreciate that, man. We even give you guys your kudos and say there's not many few, there's not many uh, podcast live streamers. It's us, you, Tim Cast, and Crowder. That's really it that I could think of. That <laughs> Crowder, what's luck? None other, huh? <laughs> Pretty much. And PBD, they just yeah. started doing it. So, oh, they do. Yeah. Okay. Huh. They do live stream podcast as well. So that was a nice, that was a nice, uh, solid, uh, organic shout out. <laughs> but most people don't do it for obvious reasons. So yeah, yeah, yeah nice, exactly. Man. So it's we a... definitely commend you guys as well. Okay. Nice. Also, I want to say something else. Um, Coconuts, you have a service dog, and he's so cute. He or she, I don't know, so cute. <laughs> when are coconuts now? This is very awkward. Uh, fact, I just came back from Barbados, too, so that's, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> oh, God. And they were tasty, man. Coconuts are tasty. The way you talk about these guys, I'm like, I understand being civil, but the way Ethan talks about these guys, and by the way, justifiably so, it feels like you're being a little too civil. But, okay. I love oh, coconuts. Oh, man, coconuts are phenomenal. One of the best. Nu- okay. They're a nut, right? I mean, those are great. <laughs> That's not. It's a big ass nut, but it is what it okay. is. Is this your? This is your dog, right, Coco? Isn't like I'm pretty sure because I looked in real quick because somebody was like, "Hey, the uh, podcast, like they're doing it right now, like they're actually talking." I was like, "Oh, okay, that's interesting. I want to take a look." I had seen that it was um that like you had they had like Sneeko and stuff in the girls' room, right, with all the all the uh, other uh, OnlyFans whores. So is that is that what happens? Does he inter- did they start talking to? <laughs> They start having a conversation. So, hero. There you go. All right. Come boy, nice. hero, man. Very tasty you know what? I'll, dog. I'll, I'll call you Walter Co- or Coconuts. Sorry. You know what? It's such a bad habit. I'm trying to be respectful. I call you Coconuts on the show because of the Coconuts Barbados thing. I'm going to call you Wal- Walter's your name, right? Yeah. Okay. Walter? Wow. Incredible. I'll, I'll be respectful. Um, but anyway, I love your dog. I love your dog. Okay. So, what do you want to debate, man? I yeah. know that you guys wanted to have this discussion with us. We're happy to have it. <laughs> okay. So nice, respectful debate, whatever you want to discuss. Cool, cool. All right, so let's start from here. Just it's topical, so I'll bring it up. Is um, the Tate Bros got arrested again? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny because I remember seeing uh, uh, Aiden Ross basically say that the Tate brothers are going to flee the country because <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, they invited me to have a, their last uh, conversation or podcast in Romania, and then they're leaving." Or I was, I was like, "Why? Why would you admit that?" And then I think that's what made this whole entire thing happen. Aiden Ross. I wonder if it was on purpose. I, I truly wonder. Maybe Aiden Ross was giving us an absolute W. Because, like, Andrew Tate, if you look at all the information, and, like, I'm not going to qualify every little thing, but if you look at all the information, like, this guy's a horrible person. A lot of stuff leaked from his war room, um, his own, like, messages, the things that he said about a lot of these women. It's pretty messed up. Like, he takes these women's passports. He doesn't let them leave this, his compound unless he feels like they're in love with him enough to, like, come back. 
it's a lot, man. So, like, yeah, they should be arrested and continue to investigate. And it seems like the reason it's going on for so long is because there's so much. But it's funny that, like, one of the justifiers for keeping them in, like, you know, jail uh, for the time being was because they might, they're a flight risking. Well, look at that. They went to, they went to risk a flight. <laughs> you think it was on purpose? I think Aiden did it on purpose. I think that he's like, you know, I think he might, maybe he believes it. I don't know. Yeah. And, um, well, first of all, Aiden Ross did that shit, right? Like, do you think he should be catching some flack from the community? Uh, we don't know enough to comment on that. So, okay. I mean, I don't know first if you know anything else that I Well, don't. I'll say this. But they were arrested, but they were also released as well. Immediately, yeah. So that's a good, that's a good okay. news right there. True. Okay. They were released, but the judge is said they can be extradited to the UK just after their case finishes and went further and said they're not allowed to leave the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't really... Seems like they're giving them a little bit of, like, a bump check. Like, you better stay. No, too much about, as far as, like, the Aiden situation, and if that actually led, I know that, you know, in the news they're saying that it potentially led to them being arrested, but, you know, what I do know is I'm pretty co I'm confident they're uh, innocent. We know that this stuff is BS. Um, <sighs> these women, yeah. these the guy, by the way, the guy who, like, point blank said to a woman, if like, that was talking about her sexual assault, that it was probably, it was her fault for picking a bad guy. He's who thinks Andrew Tate is innocent. So let's just be clear. <laughs> this guy is an unironic rape apologist. Like, I'm not kidding. He's a disgusting. He's not a real man. He's a disgusting human being. So it doesn't, well, I don't care what he has to say when it comes to the that. accusations before. So can know, I ask you this? If you before. knew, if you found out for sure that Aiden, him saying that is what got him arrested, do you think that that would, that he should catch shit for that? Because I feel like he really, Why? if it's true, which it seems like it is, is like crazy snitching. Like he got his boy arrested. What did we get in high school? Like it's well, crazy. Good. We're, we're talking about like a we're talking about like a horrible sex trafficking rapist. Okay. At the finest. Yeah. Um, but we don't know. We just simply. I mean, he did apologize for it though. It didn't apologize. You can't apologize for running over someone's grandma. You know what I mean? Like what <laughs> the fuck? That, that was messed up, Aiden. Uh, so that's L for you, buddy. Oh, but, so he did. Yeah. So it is confirmed. His life pretty stream? much. It pretty much it is confirmed. Yeah. It's been reported in the news. Oh no, oh, even sure. dude, even Tate's lawyer, I think, put out a statement saying that it was because of Aiden Ross's fucking video. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't see that. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. It is. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, I'll eat it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, pre <clears throat> it's pretty amazing just that that's what took him down. I I've wondered if Aiden is a, an in a secret agent, maybe. Well, um, you he does look like he could be a little Asian. Secret Asian? I wouldn't doubt it. You kind of, like, you know, <laughs> you could see it. No, better than us. Well, I'm not right. a secret agent. Oh. Or am I? You're saying that I'm secretly a red pill guy? Uh, I mean, I think you're very, very versatile. I think they're going with a more 2% kind of a thing. Oh, but I don't know if you're Red Bull. I'm versatile. I appreciate that. That's, I think that's a compliment. Um, so if you, you say that you think the tape bros are innocent, mm -hmm. yes. um, if you, let me ask you this. If you knew that he did do the crime, would you stop supporting him? Okay. He didn't. No, I know, I know. But hypothetically, let's say the evidence comes out. And they're like, here is the... Hypothetically, let's say in his own words, he talked about how he was effectively routinely groom women, uh, get them to leave the country that they were in, come to him. Uh, he would talk about how he would uh, destroy the relationships that they had with other people, with their uh, other friends and family and support structure. <laughs> talk about how they would, wouldn't give her enough money to do anything uh, but survive. Wouldn't let her leave the house unless uh, he knew that he, they, she was in love with him and coerced her into doing sex work for him and then took a majority of the money by lying. Would you? Because <laughs> that's all the information that's out here. We have Andrew Tate talking about it. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> so. Refutable proof. Boom. It's proven. Nobody can doubt it. Would you keep supporting him? The thing is, is that I know that he's innocent. I know these girls. Yeah, you're not answering the question, though. It's important to know. Well, but that's that's why would I even go down that road to know that they're innocent? <clears throat> well, I think it's important to get to the heart of it because I'd like to know that if somebody was proof. Yeah, he's just doing like a litmus test and seeing like, oh, if there actually was proof, would you change your mind? Um, and they're not going to answer that question because, like, they, like, of course not. They're just, like, fucking, they glaze Tate hard as fuck. They're the only reason that, like, he's the only reason they're relevant. Tate is the reason why there was a huge red pill boom. Even to be a R-wordist or a sex trafficker, would you continue to support them? And this is purely hypothetical. I mean, if he's innocent, then you got nothing to worry about. But if he's proven, and I mean, how do you prove it? Would you, stop, it would you stop supporting him? If he, was, if he was doing that stuff, I would have known years ago. Why? Why would you have known years ago? Would you continue to support him if he did that stuff he's accused of?
telling you I wouldn't have been friends with him in the first place if he was one a, a trapper. Yeah, I definitely believe that. Or doing any of these things that he's talking about. Uh, Walter, would you support him? If, friends in the first place. Since, well, since, since he's not wanting to answer the question. The reason that they don't want to answer the question is probably because Ethan's next uh, thing that he was would do, I would imagine, in a conversation is if they said no, be like, oh, look at all this information I have of like, collected facts that Andrew Tate did it. I think that's why. I think they're trying to push them into a corner. Question, maybe uh, uh, Walter will answer it. That pushed great allocations on other people. Yourself? Oh, sh uh, okay. I'm Ooh, a nice deflection. Happy to get it. That's true, though. They did. They did push a false accusation against Myron, even though, like I said, he is a rape apologist. They did push a false accusation against him. To that, we'll just take it. We'll absolutely talk about that. You kind of you. He's shaking. Ethan's shaking. Oh, so you're not there right at the top, eh, Walter? I bust the whole bro. You fucking creamed your pants too fast, man. You got to pay. Uh, Ethan's like he seems to be jittery. Push yourself. <laughs> Big nuts, big nuts, right? Big, oh, they, absolutely, man. That was I'm just simply, I'm simply saying, we've known the guys for years. We wouldn't have been friends with them and been cool with them to the level that we are if yeah. we were involved in any of that stuff. We know I the guys very disagree. well. They're not like dude, these charges are bogus. Hey, yeah, they're too, they're too nice of guys to do that kind of stuff. That's why you haven't heard anything about the case in months. You know, it, 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 well, it's because they're still collecting information. <laughs> like these legal proceedings take a long time. It's how it always works, and he knows that because he used to. I'm pretty sure he used to work in some kind of like. A, I think he used to work to like protect kids, which is interesting considering how much of a scumbag he is now. Everybody knows it's a farce. And also, to be fair, that's not true. Most people believe it because <laughs> it's obvious. They're I mean, when you when you're going on to like Tucker Carlson lying about like what's in the court case, like you know that they're full of shit. Um. Right, like, like in the court case, it talks about how he's being charged with sex trafficking, sexual assault. There's multiple women that have come out against him, et cetera, et cetera. He's going on Tucker Carlson, and be like, it's just over TikTok stuff. So just lying about that, like, even if you think he's innocent, like, why lie about the framing of the case? Like, there are tons of women that have come forward against him. It isn't just over some TikTok lives. He's just obviously he's just in a lying chain, and his audience will believe whatever he says. And then if if there is proof, which there is, uh, all he's going to say is like, oh, that's fake because of the Matrix. Camera footage shows all the evidence. Yeah. So if you want to get the details here, bro. So uh, in court, to be honest, I, I don't want to debate like the facts of the case because I've been through it. And in my opinion, it's irrefutable. That being said, you guys say the same thing. So whatever. We, I actually don't care about the, the details. I'm just interested if you would support him if it was proven. If you saw a video of him raping a girl, I mean, that's horrible to say. Sorry for being so vulgar. Would you be like, would you stop supporting him? Well, to make it very clear, I would support anyone that did that. Okay, good. That's good. In general. What about you? Um, uh, uh, luckily, we know he's innocent, so there you go. That's it. That, there you go. You answered the question. And uh, Fit or Myron? Uh, hold on one sec. My mic is up. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Why is it mic you been, bro? He got you. All right. Can you, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I can we hear can, you. Yeah. So what I said was, we wouldn't even have been friends with him had that been a thing. We, we yeah. know these guys. That's not an answer. Before. That's not an answer, though. I'm telling you. That's a, that's a court case answer. <laughs> we wouldn't have been even friends with him in the first place. <laughs> okay. Do you usually have trouble not answering questions directly? No, it's not about that. It's about just, it's not even a, a real point. I mean, it's a real question. It has a question mark behind it. <laughs> it's not even a scenario because they, they didn't do it. Okay. It's a hypothetical situation, which is what I explained in the beginning. I'm telling you, we wouldn't even have been friends in the first place. If Walter they crushed that question, by the way. He absolutely <laughs> crushed it. He's like, nope. <laughs> it's so stupid. And I was like, y'all, Walter's the man. Okay. See, well, can they hear the claps that are going <laughs> Can they hear the claps that are going on right now? Or can only Ethan hear that? Like I said before, we wouldn't even have been friends if that was the case, and we know these guys well. Yeah, and no, not. I hear you. That's not an answer to my question, though. Fine. But anyway, yeah. um, regardless, let me ask you this then. Okay. Look, what would it take? Like, what evidence would be required to convince? <laughs> it sounds like he's getting up to the point where he might show whatever evidence they would they would say they require. Either one of you guys that he is guilty of some kind of crime, and again. You guys think he's innocent. You've seen the evidence. I'm talking just hypothetically, like, like I said, a video or something. Like, what would it take? I'm just curious. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that we, the reason why I'm so, you know, strong on this is because I've looked at the case. I've looked at. They haven't. So, did they take their conversation down with Ethan? Like on their side? Oh no, it's on. Um, it's on Rumble. I wonder if they took it down because they felt like that would be more traffic to go to their Rumble account. That might be what it is, actually. I mean, that's not a bad strategy, I suppose. Or maybe they felt like, oh, maybe they felt like they said some wild, I think they said some like wild, um, incredibly anti-Semitic stuff and they felt like they might get actually banned on YouTube if they left it up.
at the evidence. I've looked at everything. I've looked at the surveillance footage. I know who the individuals are that made these allegations, and, and it's it's all a farce, bro. It's all lies. It's not just about surveillance footage. Like I understand what he's specifically talking about, but there's more than just like one instance of this. There's a tons of different instances. Uh, instances. There's tons of different information. There's tons of different like evidence that he makes in like his war room chat. There's a lot of stuff. That's why I can speak so confidently about it, and I'm telling you because I know these individuals personally. Yeah. I've been- You're, but this is the problem too: is that when you look at Fresh and Fit, regardless of which side of the aisle that you lean on, you look at them and they have this really weird obsession with like once you meet somebody you're friends and you have to ride or die for them regardless of anything else like you see the way that they, they cry that abba criticizes them because they met up once and now they're best friends and they're upset that they're being criticized um, by abba and so it's like they have a ride or die mentality for their friends which is not something that you really should like you should be more charitable to your friends but you shouldn't let your friends get away with i was gonna say murder but just being a sex trafficking rapist Right, but they will run to the end of the earth for it. Like they go incredibly hard. When it comes to men, also they never like really push back nearly as hard as they do usually against women that they have on their show. I mean, they have like they have a history, like a pattern of um like engaging in this type of behavior. So yeah, like you really can't even if you think Andrew Tate's innocent, you really can't take their testimony specifically fresh and fit because they're not they're not a reasonable unbiased perspective on this. And I spend a significant amount of time with them. I know that they're innocent. Oh, so, so Myron, you worked on cases like this before. And I've done cases like this before as well. You're, You're not, not a I've lawyer. Done. I mean, what the fuck? What do you mean you've worked cases like this? You have done credentials to I've talk arrested, about that. I've arrested human traffickers. Well, arrested, well, poli- since I've when are police arrested. lawyers? Yeah, he, I'm sure he's arrested human traffickers. But like, he it is, this is the thing, is that in his line of work, he's not making the distinction of like whether they are or aren't a human trafficker. He's arresting them because like whatever his authoritative figure is saying, like, hey, arrest this guy, right? But that's, yeah. I mean, if he was still in that line of work, he probably would have arrested Andrew Tate. <laughs> You have no legal standing to say you've worked on cases like this. That, that you don't I'm have any authority. Hold on, I'm the one that has to bring the case to the lawyer for prosecution, and I have to develop the evidence. What are you talking about? <laughs> develop the evidence? Does that mean faking evidence? What do you mean developing the evidence? Well, okay. So it sounds like what he is saying is that he would. I. I mean, I guess I just don't understand the infrastructure that he used to engage in. I guess he would be the one that would examine these types of situations. So I still don't think that it changes anything. <laughs> Okay. I mean, again, we're talking about a guy that sits and like tells women that were assaulted that like, oh, it's your fault for being raped. You should have picked a better guy. So like, they're obviously not very unbiased. The internet, it very clearly has rotted their brain. I mean, they're one hundred percent engraved in audience capture. They could never change their perspective, or they're losing their entire audience. Nobody values them for their intelligence. They value uh, them for saying women are bad and downplaying like sexual abuse. Okay. As no, I'm, I, I'm being facetious there. I'm not actually accusing okay. anything. But All Walter, right. I saw you raise your hands like, uh, get a load of this guy. Since when do police, do you believe that a police officer has the training and authority to comment on, on uh, legal proceedings? Well, I mean, anybody could. <laughs> I don't know if this is necessarily a good question, but okay. I mean, it sounds like he has enough credentials to say like, oh, I've examined evidence before. Um, and he's able to use that. I mean, you could just go, Appe- uh, appeal to authority? You know, you could just end up saying that if you wanted to. <laughs> well, before the case even brought up in the court, someone has to do the work, right? Yeah, they arrest sure. people. Is right. This- yeah, they'll usually gather evidence, arrest somebody, and then, like, the lawyer will look through it. Um, I'm not entirely sure of the infrastructure. I imagine that they have, like, a lawyer. Like, they have, like, lawyers working for the police, no? Isn't that, like, right? And so wouldn't they gather the evidence? So what is that? So knowing cases and talking to juries, and for example, for example, um, you know, lawyers <laughs> He would know beforehand what's happening from a grower standpoint. So I think on some level he would know on the basis of what's happening with this case. There is no prosecution if there's no law enforcement to arrest the individuals for the prosecution. Yes, I know how it works that you arrest, but then it goes to court. What was Myron's old job? Was he an investigator? Um, he worked at the Homeland Special Investigations. Oh, he was an investigator. Like, yeah, he I would he would be able to have like. I don't even know why he's getting into this conversation with him. He's probably he's going to end up like losing out. Um, what is it like from uh, what the fuck am I trying to say? Like just from a Jesus Christ, I can't think of words. Optically, this does this looks good for Myron because like he's like, oh, I was I worked for the investigation unit. So like obviously he would gather information and then he would present it. So he probably he has a, a better understanding of these information. That doesn't mean that he's correct. Um, but like, yeah, he, his based on his old job, like he would have more of the ability to parse through this information than other people. Or where people who are trained to talk about the law do that. So you're sta- so, uh, you. I mean, you're the muscle, right? The police are the muscle. They go, so, they do the thing. Like, they don't make. They don't make judgments. Uh, uh, uh. Let me clarify this for you. Yeah, I was a former special agent of Homeland Security. That's the feds. We Dark. don't bring it unless it's. We don't bring the case forward unless it's ready for trial. We don't indict unless it's ready for trial. There's a reason why the feds. You don't indict right anybody. 
That's what the district attorney does. No, that's the AUSA's office, Assistant United States Attorney's office, United States Attorney's office. And then the AUSA's Assistant United States Attorney's work underneath. You and die people? No. Right. What I'm oh, it sounds like he gathers the information. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Whatever. Is that the feds don't indict unless they're ready for trial. Okay. The Eight feds, bro. You can't, you can't do cast an umbrella and say you're, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we're all feds here. Like, what? <laughs> why? Why is Ethan going in on this point? He doesn't look good here. This is not good for him. You're the FBI now, too? I mean, what are you talking about? They're all 1811, aka special agents. That's the job series. Whether you're ATF, FBI, Homeland Security. I mean, Ethan, I'm not, I'm going to be very respectful here. You're out of your wheelhouse. If you want to have a discussion, <laughs> you can. He's kind of right here. But every single uh, criminal investigator in. It doesn't even change the argument. Like, it doesn't mean that Myron's instantaneously correct. Like, there are so many other angles to go at here. But it's like, why, why harp on this situation here? The government, the <laughs> investigations, me. typically it's a special agent, postal inspector, etc. It's an 1811 job series. It's all the same thing. They get paid the same level, etc. So, from investigator, that's the general thing. Go okay. on, you say, the, an 18, you're going to see it. I understand. The reason I bring it up is just because I hear you using those credentials frequently to say, to, to you know, pass Andrew Tate. And I've always thought that it's just kind of but silly since you have no, since you have no real, legal training. Sure, that's where I would start going into a different direction. Like I said before, go into the direction of like the fact that they've like engaged with, like, they've literally said to women that were assaulted that it was like their fault. You know, go there because now it's like, okay, he has credibility when it comes to his ability to parse through information, but he substantially loses credibility when it comes to his treatment of women, right? That's where you would go here. What? You have no training and uh, do you have, have you passed the bar exam? Have you taken the bar okay. exam? You don't need, do you don't need to take the bar exam <sighs> to, to practice law? Probable cause to develop probable cause. Probable is, cause. That's like a right? fucking. You're comparing Hold a molehill to a mountain in terms Hold of on. legality. Hold on. What? To make an arrest, you need probable cause, and to get someone indicted. I mean, like I, I think Ethan would be better off just finding somebody who could have talked about this if he wanted to go in this direction. This is very bizarre. You need probable cause. However, at the federal level, AUSA is very picky. They have the ability to take a case or not based on if it's good enough for them. They can go ahead and turn down cases. They actually turn down many cases. That's why most cases go to the state a lot of the times and don't end up getting prosecuted to the full extent. But when it goes to the feds and the AUSA actually takes it, they have a 98 to 99% win rate. Yeah, that's the lawyers are good. Criminals, that's why most well, criminals are scared of going to the feds. But the lawyers are good. However, they can't put a good case together unless the investigators make the case. The AUSAs aren't interviewing suspects. The AUSAs don't have informants. The AUSAs aren't doing surveillance. The AUSAs aren't doing Title III intercepts. The AUSAs aren't debriefing sources. They're not doing any of that. It's the investigators that do that. And, and the thing is, is that when you're doing crimes at a federal level, you're way more thorough in your report writing, in your investigation, etc. Okay, good. Thank, uh, thank you for clarifying that. Reacts. What's that, uh, Walter? This channel, Fed Reacts. I mean, Fed Reacts. Uh, a I proud for, Fed. So, well, uh, anyway, to touch. <laughs> okay. I wonder if Ethan did like when uh, Ethan seemed more prepared with like the Pearl conversation than anything else. I wonder if they didn't really do a lot of homework here. Back on the Andrew Tate thing, sure. I just want to show you guys this clip of him, and then and then you guys can comment on it. That's okay. okay. Then you start saying things like, "Oh yeah, but you're always working." This, this is from one of his courses that he was uh, teaching. Uh, yeah, this is one of the videos that shows some of the information about how much of a scumbag he is. I think at the very least, this shows. Uh, in this clip, I believe at the very least, it shows that he was stealing money from them because he was lying to them about paying taxes. And then he also talks about how he does the webcam industry different than other webcam people because he treats it like he's a uh, pimp and they're prostitutes. And it's so interesting because I remember when I was like harping on this point of like, yeah, that's disgusting. People are like, no, no, no. Uh, and they glorified pimping and prostitution as if it was like this amazing thing back in the day. It never was. It's always been like a, an abuse scenario. Um there's literally no reason why some a prostitute would ever need a pimp to like rule over them. If anything, the pimp would just be a bodyguard, right? So it doesn't even make sense. But you know, it's an incredibly abusive scenario. Oftentimes, these uh, prostitutes are, are drugged um, and forced to do things that they don't want to do. If you're going to describe it in that type of relationship, like, yeah, I'm obviously going to cast that judgment onto you. Like, it's it's just a glorification of fucking illegal uh, activity. So years ago. I have to do some traveling and you can't come. I want to bring you with me. Traveling's a great one because the thing about this business is mobile. If you can find a good Airbnb with good internet, you can run it somewhere else. So it's a good little caveat to throw in. Oh, uh, and you're always working. Why don't you work for me so we spend more time together? Work for you doing what? So I have a webcam business. Oh, I don't want to do that. So okay, I know you don't want to do that, but listen, come let's have a meeting. Let's just talk about it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Fine. But let me explain it to you properly. Yeah, and then we've later found out that he uses like he has two bottom bitches, which are other women, to try to coerce women into doing it. Yeah, I think believe he's admitted to having sex with uh, one of his bottom bitches when she was fifteen. Um a lot of information, a lot of information, like very clearly a disgusting individual. In fact, I'll bring one of the girls who works with me. You, your Bolton bitch, the new girl, you go out for fucking a nice dinner. Your Bolton bitch is the one who does the selling. 
You don't do the selling. The girl has to hear from a girl. And this is why your bottom bitch has to be trained. This is why I said it's so important to have a good first girl. Tax is also another important element for controlling your woman. You're not going to pay anybody tax because you're getting paid in Bitcoin. And just the conversation about control also speaks ne obviously very negatively to him as well because um, that's not normal to want to have this oppressive level of control over a person. Like that is legitimate grooming language. And by itself, is this clip everything? No, of course not. But with every other bit of information, it is quite a significant amount. So you don't need to pay tax to anybody. You need to tell your girl that you're paying the tax. Because girls are lazy. And this would be some kind of like theft. And girls are stupid. And girls don't understand how taxes work. So the girl's working with you, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we've made this much money, but I'm gonna pay the tax to make sure we don't get in trouble. She'll sit there and go, okay, okay. Now that allows you to do two things. One, it's another control element. I work with him, my tax is not a problem. If I do it alone, I have to deal with taxes. Taxes are complicated. I mean, that, that's illegal, right? What he just described. Oh, so you're showing me a- Um, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know if that by itself is illegal. But it certainly would be uh, like a contributing factor to everything. Um, like it, it's enough to be like, okay, there's a, that's it's just one of many pieces of information. But the control element is certainly you know quite a lot. A bunch of clips from yeah. a, from a course yeah. from a decade ago. Well, what's what's the purpose? What's Did your, it stop what? being illegal since it was ten? He he says that he fa what's falsifies. The, what's the point of he said here? he didn't break the law, and he's saying here that he falsifies tax document to to Andrew. he lies to his. Yeah, I'm gonna put this. Uh, it's a Willie Mac video, but I'm gonna put this in the description for you to watch. I can't find my reaction to it. <laughs> but that's where it talks about him like trying to hook up with fifth, like uh, sleeping with a 15 year old employees, if you want to call that. Uh, to to control them, he lies on their taxes and steals money from them. Is that not a problem? So, what is your point of contention here? Is it is this uh, is this a debate on Andrew Tate now? Is this what this is going to be? <laughs> is this, bro? Are you seriously trying to get out of this so quickly? No, like no, you no, can't I, even engage I'm it at all. It. I mean, I'm saying I thought we were going to debate on masculine or whatever. But go ahead. What's your point of contention? Is <laughs> well, no. I, this is, is my this is my only question about Tate. I don't I, I don't continue to go on and on about him. Yeah. No, tell me specifically, what's your point of contention here? Is it him having a girl come with him to have dinner with the chick? Is it the taxes? What is this specifically? It's, it's, it's actually. Well, I mean, the, so the point of contention with this by itself would be like one, the uh, element of lying about the taxes and then also the, um, the consistent, I guess, harping on the point of having a control element over the person by itself. That video by itself is incredibly suspicious, right? So those are the two things that you would go. That's why you'd probably want to have a little more than just that, though. There's, I, I don't know if I would. It's <laughs> certainly suspicious. I don't know if that's going to be something that would move his audience, though. It, like I had said, the taxes part seems to be explicitly illegal and exploitative. Like, okay. I there's no other sure. way to interpret that unless you can illuminate me. Okay, so let me ask you this, Ethan. Uh, do you make as much money as the people that work for you? Can I ask you this question, Myron? Do you? Well, that doesn't really matter. But answer the question. I have a trouble just... answering direct questions. No, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm answering your question right now. But I need to, you to understand my perspective where I'm coming here, so it makes sense. Do you make as much as the people that work underneath you? The answer is probably no, right? You make more money than they do, correct? Because sure. you're the boss, you run the podcast, they are subordinates, correct? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So same in this situation. The women work for him. He has a webcam. That's not what he was saying. What he was saying is that he lies to them about paying their taxes um, so he could take even more money from them, right? So what he, what Andrew Tate is admitting here is that he will hire these women for a webcam business and then he will tell them that he's withholding taxes from them, but he doesn't pay the taxes. So that would be stealing money from them. That's that's what they're saying here. Um, yeah. Webcam business. He takes the money and he does this <laughs> with it to go ahead and run this. Okay. Are you? Um, do you actually believe that? Laws are different. Yeah. Do you Let me read this again. Let me watch. Just this. Okay. Okay. Underneath you. Now that allows you to do two things. Don't make as much one, money. it's another control element. If I work with him, my tax is not a problem. If I do it alone, I have to deal with taxes. Taxes are complicated. So control element it allows you to pay her a smaller percentage. Pay her less. So I used to pay my girls. <gasps> I remember that shoe store. Thirteen percent. So for every ten thousand dollars they made, I give them three, and I keep seven. They thought they were on fifty percent, and I said that the disparity is because of taxes. So you're on 50%, we get to pay the tax first, and then it's 50-50. If they say, why is it 50-50? Because I'm the one on camera, you say, because I'm the one typing, I'm the one with the, the property you're working in, I'm the one paying the bills, the electricity, I'm the one who's, uh, and the electricity and every other maintenance cost of this property, I'm the one who bought the equipment, I'm the one who knows what he's doing, I'm the one with the knowledge, I'm the da 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 Shut the fuck up, go on. Yeah, and you run the boss, just like you are of H3, and you make significantly more than all of your employees. Yeah, I don't steal their money and lie to them about taxes, that's illegal. No, well, the point is, again, he's in Romania, he's not in the United States. I pretty well, it doesn't matter because he admits to, to lying and taking their tax money. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that he knows he's wrong here, but... It's illegal to steal money from people in Romania. 
it's it's not about that. He's employing these women. They're making more money with him than they he, would have ever okay. before. The average salary in Romania is about four hundred dollars US. Yeah. So my so this is one of those points where like Myron knows that he's being uh, incredibly like facetious here or disingenuous here. Because he's constantly shifting the conversation away. Myron's not actually stupid. Um, he knows what he's talking about. And he's focusing on like, well, but they're still making money. So who cares when the reality is, is they're still being stolen from and lied to about like their money going to taxes, which it should obviously go to taxes. Um, you pay your taxes, guys. Right, but so he knows what he's doing. Bro, he's the amount of money is literally yeah, in, immaterial. He, no, he, he, no. Said, he said, he said, I lied. Material. Walter, what do you think about this? <laughs> Okay. He said, uh, I he's, he's, obviously he's trying to be a little disrespectful by calling him Walter. <laughs> what a name. Steal money from these girls and lie to them about it. He, he literally said that. Ethan, Ethan if we need to. Wait, hold on. Don't talk over Walter. I want to hear context. from him. No, there oh needs to be context here because you asked me the situation, right? You asked me for me specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and answer you. Okay. These women, okay, were making no money prior. The average salary in Romania is around $400 US. That, that doesn't matter. These girls are making 10K plus a month at this point, okay? It doesn't matter how much they might be making. Again, he's stealing money from them. He's lying to them and not paying taxes for them, which is like illegal. You're supposed to pay tax. So. He's taking a percentage. They're still getting thousands of Bro, dollars. Oh, that's insane like, logic. You're saying it, as, long as, as long as someone you're stealing from gets like a, a decent chunk, then it doesn't matter? I don't, to be honest with you, I don't feel like Ethan has explained his position particularly well here. Um, you know, so I, I don't think that really works per, very well for him. I don't think he's explained like e either way, like they know the context here. Um, but I don't think in this conversation he's doing a very good job of like explaining like what is it exactly? Because based on what Ethan's saying, I don't know that everybody will be like, oh, I understand the problem. Because specifically the problem is, is that uh, Andrew Tate is lying about the split of money that they're going to engage in by saying he's going to pay their taxes for them and then ends up not paying their taxes for them. Like that's the issue there. Right. So that is some kind of theft. Um, yeah. Especially since it could potentially, uh, you know, lead these women to having an issue in the future if their taxes go unpaid uh, in general. Right. So uh, it's something <laughs> that's the argument. And it's that by itself is obviously wrong. So that's what I feel like Ethan hasn't really explained that. He's he's he lies to them. He says, they, you know, bro, he says they the think business. they're getting 50%. They're actually getting set. I tell them they're getting 50%. I'm actually giving them 7%. What do you call it? Well, it's like, thir I think it was 30%, but this is also an example. So who knows? All that. Let me ask you this, Ethan. Do your employees know exactly how much money you make and how much you pay them in comparison to how much I'm you talking make? about their salary? Well, okay. Sorry, bro. Why can't you answer a question? Same Walter, situation, talk my friend. Same it, situation? It, it's not. Walter, go ahead. I'm curious what you think. Yeah, so I just find it funny you're pinpointing Andrew because a lot of businesses run this way in America, especially. No. Uh, I don't think. I mean, they're, that's illegal. I don't think a lot of businesses run the way where they promise somebody they'll pay their taxes and then don't pay their taxes. I do. I do think people are underpaid in America based on how much they should be making, uh, depending on like how big the company is. But that's not what's happening here. So uh, no, people do not lie about how much taxes they're paying and then with, and then secretly. Hey, thank you so much for the small gut from Orange Dinosaur. I like that name. <laughs> withhold money that's called fucking off talk, topic oh my god i can't read off topic but has ethan ever spoke with fresh and fit has he ever talked to Abin and preach i thought this was Abin preach no he hasn't which is interesting because they're so much closer when it comes to their perspective but they'll sit down and talk to this guy very interesting you know they won't talk to Abin and preach because Abin and preach said something insensitive to olivia but these guys they by all accounts they believe that these guys are rapists and again they're rape apologists um and but like oh we can't talk to them <laughs> I should probably put that conversation. That's an old conversation from a while ago. Theft. Well, I'm referring to people paying whatever, whatever they want to pay employees. I'm just saying in general. It's not about people... salary, dude. It's nothing to do with that. That is about salary. That's extremely important, though. It doesn't matter how much they're making. Right, yeah. And this is this is why I love it. You play these clips, right? And you and you're playing these clips out of context, and people don't know the full story of what it's like to live in Romania, how much money the average person makes, how much these women are making in comparison to the do, average person. Do you guys do that to your employees? You made these women millionaires, but you don't know that. Do you? It and doesn't honestly, matter how much money they make. Why don't you understand that, bro? Do you do you treat your do you treat your employees that way? So now we're discussing how people treat employees. I'm confused here. So we're debating like Walter. Stick with it, buddy. We, we're <laughs> no offense. They've, they've been debating destiny too much. They're too good at the actual debate tactics here. But this is literally what we're discussing. <laughs> this is boring, bro. Like, okay, we speak. can move on. We can move on. I, I don't think this is going anywhere anyway. I mean, but right. but again, I'm not here to talk about Tate. I just, I just want to get your guys' thoughts on that. Although I don't know, Walter, if you want to discuss on, okay. any further on the Ooh, if you think he's described theft or if you think that this is just normal payroll stuff. I think it's irrelevant. Uh, Walter, you were the answer to the question guy. So confronted with a tape of him <laughs> confessing to a crime. We close our eyes and uh, think of better times. Yeah. I just, I just feel like, <laughs> I feel like Ethan thought this was going to be a very easy dunk, and he did. I, I don't know, man. The way that he's presenting the arguments are just so bad; they're just ineffective. 
Thank you so much, Orange Dinosaur, for two dollars. Papa is basically a gossip YouTuber, to be honest. Yeah, that is exactly what I. That's well, that is basically what I am. Absolutely, brother. <laughs> I never pretend otherwise. The only difference is I'm a normal person, okay, and that's not extraordinary in the real world, but on the internet, full of fucking terminally online insane people, I'm 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 a rare exception somehow. That's it. I'm just a normal guy that worked a regular job for a while, and I like to talk about gossip. <laughs> I'm a fucking, I'm a, I'm a bitch, dude. See, look at this. Okay. I'm, I'm slaying right now, dude. He's running a business. <laughs> he's paying the women a okay, percentage. Okay. What he tells them and what they get paid. I mean, it's at the end of the day, these women are making a bunch of money. He, you see that? He's what he tells them. What he, and then he, he flipped off that point because he knows that's a really weak point to go on to. That's exploitation of labor. So tell them like, a percentage. Go on, follow that thought. No, no. But what I'm telling you is. <laughs> see, yeah, at least Ethan got it. That okay. Relative yeah. to how much money they were making before, relative to where they live in Romania, relative to what they were doing prior. <laughs> this is like oh, money between these women and millionaires, dude. You know what? Ethan, this is simple. Tell your employees how much money you're making right now. It's got nothing to do with that. And then tell them how much you pay them. And see how they react. Frankly, they do have access to the financials of the podcast. I imagine they probably do know how much Ethan's channel makes. (laughs) I feel like Ethan's pretty... uh, When you see Ethan's dynamic, and I criticize him a lot for... um, how much he like leans and bends to his employees because he's anytime they say something like he's overly sensitive to it in my opinion but that at the very least like allows you to know like he's very transparent with them he continues to pay them even when he doesn't work um yeah i mean like you know he's he's very considerate of his employees in my opinion sometimes a little too much Sleepy, thank you so much for the two dollars. Do you think he's trying to be like Destiny? Uh, maybe. I think I don't know exactly like Destiny. I feel like he might. There might be a level of that admiration for Destiny, you know, because he's obviously a very good debater, um, master debater. <laughs> I, I know exactly how much money. Yeah, they, 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 they have. Transparency. They do. Perfect. I'm literally telling you, they have transparency. What do you want? Dan sees everything. Everybody in the podcast sees everything. Not that that's relevant at all. Great. Well, you know what? That is your business. <laughs> that's like uh, so wait, you, hold on, but, but, but my follow the what? thought. Follow the thought. You said he pays them a percentage. He said they think they're getting fifty percent. Then he says, actually, I give them 30%. He's lying, correct? Listen, man. I didn't think, bro. You want to put us in this hot seat? That, there we go. That was a good way to go with it. To make us expose somebody on camera? Bosses never tell Whatever their employees say. what they're actually like. They don't know. What? What. That's not what the conversation is. The conversation isn't that like, the boss didn't tell them how much money that the boss makes. The conversation is the boss says that they're going to go on a 50-50 split with their work and then they actually go with a 70-30 split because they're stealing money on the um, idea that they're going to pay taxes for them when they don't actually pay the taxes for them. That's the... This is... Okay. This is, okay. Bro, that's payroll tax. That's a federal crime. You should know that. You're a Fed, right? Again, he lives in Romania. Oh, well, United- oh okay. So, okay. So, Romania doesn't have any payroll. Interesting. So, so, labor like, by the way, most of the girls he traffics there are not even Romanian. Uh, but I guess if you... Wait, who do you traffic? Who do you traffic, Ethan? Okay, he's, he's let's, let's, Ethan. Who, 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 who do you traffic, Ethan? Who do you traffic, Ethan? Real names. Okay, okay. I'm not going to say he trafficked anyone. The girls that work for him. Well, I think- well there's there's several several women in that lawsuit. I don't think that all their names have been released for their uh, you know for their sake for their privacy. But I think he's a sex trafficker. But I don't want to get caught in this argument. I don't care about it. You said it. You said he did. So who did he do it? Do it to? Who? We need some names. We need some names, bro. Coconuts. I don't. Uh, okay, so, so so he didn't sex traffic anyone. I, I don't care about that point. He didn't okay. sex traffic. But I'm saying. I mean, Ethan could have just said like, "Oh, the names aren't." I'm pretty sure, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the names aren't revealed for their safety. So they're like in the lawsuit, but they're not revealed. That's all he'd have to say is like, "Oh, the names aren't publicly available." Like it's in the lawsuit. There's several women that can't come out against him. Girl, good boy. Taking it back. Okay, you guys got me. So um. Right. But the- I understand Ethan is just be like, okay, I don't care. Like, I, I understand the um idea that he doesn't like feel like engaging. He's a very this is a, this is, this could be three hours by itself talking about Andrew Tate, um, which is the reason like I don't really talk about it as much anymore because I don't feel like qualifying every little thing because in order to be effective about this conversation, you generally have to. Um, but I think that if you're going to bring it up, you know, you sh- should at least be able to give you, excuse me, give some an- some decent answers back, you know. Girls who live there don't, they're not even Romanian. And also, my, about my employees, they make 100% of what I tell them, I pay them. You understand that, right? I say, yeah. I say, Dan, I owe you, I'm going to pay you $1,000. And then at the end of the month, I give him $1,000. That's it? No, I doubt it. He probably pays them pretty well, honestly. I wouldn't doubt it at all. Andrew says, I'm going to pay you $1,000. Or Andrew says, yeah, I'm going to pay you $1,000, but I ends up giving them $700. Sure. That's not honest. But we don't need to get into that. Let's move on. You guys want to move on? <laughs> okay. Sure, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you this, bro. You're a comedian. You're funny. I'll give you that. Thanks. Bruce Rivers made a video speculating whether Tate would be arrested in the States because of um, one of the victims is American. An American citizen? Good. They should. We should go incredibly hard on people who fuck with American citizens in any country all the time. Goblins. Yeah. 
Because I, I think you're nice, Walter. I do think you're nice. I think you have a kind heart. I think you just got. I, I swear to God, I feel like you just got like in with the with the wrong people. Like you, oh. you have a sweet heart, Walter. You don't have to be to live this so life, weird. bro. This is fire and ice, bro. Like I'm chill, cool. He's fiery hot. It works, bro. It works. You know, fire and ice. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Um, the Tate brothers, uh, Bucerest compounds initially rated by American women and a mold of women. I don't, you know what? I didn't want to get into this. It's fine. All right. So let's move on. Uh, to, you guys have spoke about this issue a lot about rape culture. Is rape culture a myth? Grape. Grape. Sorry. Grape culture. Uh, and we're not talking about wineries, right, fellas? Right. We did a Definitely full podcast. Not. Okay. I don't know why that one got me a little bit. <laughs> we're not talking. I don't know why that got me, dude. Uh, <laughs> a winery thing was so stupid. On this, um, all the studies are there and everything else like that. But yeah, so here's the thing rape culture uh, obviously exists. Um, that conversation is like very, it can be very complicated. In non-western countries it is much more explicit there are other countries where when you go there there's a culture where it is much more appropriate to sexually harass women um that's why there are some countries like i believe japan that have trains that are like women only cars because like there are problems in other countries um just to be clear it's not because of specific people it's a specific culture that has been uh you know nobody is innately a rapist okay except for maybe edp just kidding i think i don't know i don't know what i'm allowed to say <laughs> anyway <laughs> In the United States, it's much different. The conversation about, we'll say, essay culture in the United States is, uh, in many instances, there are actual like situations where it's very explicit, like the Brock Turner case. This is somebody who, like, a woman got drunk. She was very clearly passed out. He dragged her behind a dumpster and he assaulted her, and he got off on that case. That's insane. That would be an example of like more extreme rape culture. But for the most part, it is when there are usually two parties in the situation where one individual, and it's typically a man, is uh, pushier and doesn't leave. Uh, room for the other person to feel comfortable saying no, right? So, like, a lot of the conversation is about, like, unintentional taking advantage of somebody um, in Western countries and in the United States, uh, less necessarily about, like, the legal structure. Not that, that there isn't an issue there, but that's where more of the conversation... Um, <laughs> That's like the, that's where the conversation comes down to, you know. That's why, like, when we do talk about this, I always typically tell, like, a lot of times, young men, like, listen, like, you need to make sure that when you're engaging with somebody, that you leave it open for them to feel like they can say no. You don't need explicit consent all the time, but it's not a bad idea to do things like ask if you want to kiss somebody, or you know, be aware of their boundaries, say that they can say no to things. These are nice things that help, and then also to, to you know, I like to say, stand up for yourself to people as well. You know, be more, and it can be difficult, but as a woman especially, like you need, you do need to say no, and I don't want to do this, and et cetera, et cetera. Because if you're in a scenario where there's like a guy and, and he wants to sleep with you and you don't say no because you're like really uncomfortable, like, you know, that can be very complicated. There can be situations where you're afraid he might hurt you, but there could also be a situation where you're just like not saying like, hey, I don't want to do this. And like, that's why there's there needs to be better communication on both sides. Generally speaking, I say to like men, uh, make it m easier for women to communicate their boundaries, and women like communicate your boundaries more. So that's that's where that's where I think the conversation about like you know SA culture uh, is really centralized around in America. Yeah, <laughs> but again, you're talking about two guys who looked at a woman who said that she was assaulted and said like, "Oh, it's your fault. You should have picked a better guy." So th we're we're not going to get a constructive conversation. I wonder if Ethan has that clip. So do you, if somebody's actually graped, you, that's something you take seriously? I wonder what video that clip is from. August, find that for me, please. Of course, they're yeah. one of the most heinous crimes. I, I genuinely think I, um, that do that should be put to death. Yep, it's one of the really. Worst uh, yeah. I mean, let's just have the educated conversation. You probably shouldn't do the death penalty for somebody who does that stuff to somebody. And the reason why is because it's going to pr increase the likeliness of that individual killing the person after they assault them, right? Uh, if the death, if you get the death penalty for murder or sexual assault, why not just murder the person so there's no evidence, right? Or it's easier. They can't, they're dead. They can't speak up. It's like a pragmatic way to look at it. Like emotionally, of course, I think people who do that shouldn't be alive anymore. But pragmatically, like you probably shouldn't make that the, the sentence to it because it's just going to lead to more, you know, basically pain and suffering. <laughs> so, so you think rape? You think rape is one of the worst crimes someone could do? It's not funny. It's not interesting. It's like just death no, sentence. No, <laughs> okay. no I, I think guys that that do that to women need to be dealt with in a certain manner, and that's unacceptable behavior. So here's right. a guest on sure. your show named uh, Charleston White. Let's listen to this uh, anecdote. Bro, <laughs> okay. Oh uh, no. Nah, nah, uh, okay. uh, well, we we are. Uh, we used to run trains. I believe. I believe this is when he talks about how he would run trains. On. By the way, Abbott and Preach were the ones who really like. Uh, they almost like accentuated this case. So you know, maybe give them a little credit, Ethan. Um, 
but he's on here and they're like having kind of like a joking laughing conversation from what I remember uh, about how they used to basically drug white women and like rape rape them and they tr- running trains on them and yeah so I ain't on white girls uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Robin Hood. Uh, uh, we used to do it uh, and like running a train is almost never consensual by the way that permission so it's not like she came over and said hey I want to sleep with all yeah, you see? guys yeah, yeah, we said, hey man that white girl like you get over here and then we are uh, oh, yeah, 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 we just come in with dicks out oh shit yeah, Yo. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, she- yeah so they're laughing about it it's pretty disgusting behavior we're about to go on Twitch yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, okay Twitch yeah, 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 so um, do you think that what, your friend uh, Charleston should be put to death so wait a who's friend Okay, whatever, your guest. Yeah, you guys are pretty friendly. I mean, you guys are laughing about him talking about how he used to drug him and assault women, so. Them. No, we're not. You were la- I mean, you were laughing. You, you seem to be taking that, uh, having a, a laugh about it. Do you know why? Why? No, do, do you know why? Go ahead, please, I'm listening. Because we cannot believe he said that on camera. <laughs> I said, this guy can't be serious. Also, the okay. other thing, too, um, Ethan, did you see that full interview with Ethan out of curiosity? Probably didn't. I've seen I've seen bits of it. No, I haven't watched the whole thing. I watched the full interview. Okay, out of context. So uh, fantastic. Once again, you like to do the out of context thing, but it's okay. Let me aware. Go ahead, just explain. During you don't have to do that. Interview all that. during the course of that interview, he went through his. I don't know, man. Like I understand the nervous laughing, but considering he's sitting there talking about how he would violently assault women and drug them, I feel like I I nervous laugh sometimes, but I don't think that would be most people's first reaction. I think that that's just them trying to play it off. Like, no, 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 it wasn't a big deal. Mm, sounds like a little bit more of a big deal to me. His life story and how he changed his life and turned it around from a life of crime, robbing people, being involved in a murder, doing that type of thing when he was- Yeah, and that's great that he's reformed himself. I think that's excellent. But you laughing when he says that is disgusting and unacceptable. So was young. He talked about all that in the beginning and now he turned his life around and how he advocates for the youth now to not be involved in a life of crime. So what that clip that you took right there- You said rapists should be put to death. Yeah, they should be. Well, he just said he gang raped. And also keep in mind that he was quoting a song from Two Life Crew. So, so also like, it didn't happen. It, well, of course he's sensationalizing it by quoting the music thing, but I'm telling you that he- Okay. He was explaining his life of crime prior, right, during the course of that podcast. So you're taking that one clip so of forget, it. But that apparently doesn't matter to you because if you think that they should be put to death, then you wouldn't ever laugh at that, right? Think him? Him? No, we didn't. What, what I'm telling you is that we were listening to a life story that he was talking about and how he changed his life around. So obviously he did some shitty things when he was younger and he turned his life around. Mm-hmm. So if you are a rapist, then you can basically... Yeah, but why laugh about it? That's what I don't understand. Basically um, recover and be a guest... Uh, a celebrated guest on the Fresh and Fit podcast. Um, I mean, like, I'm not. Listen, I'm not trying to be insensitive. Yes, um, I'm not really trying to be like super insensitive. Uh, if anybody had ever done that to like somebody that I loved, I would personally bludgeon them to death. However, I am not the system, and so like the system advocates for reformation. And like, yeah, the conversation would be like, if you believe people can be reformed from certain behaviors then possibly some people could be reformed from sexual assault. Um, you know, I'm not gonna I don't I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I have a massively flushed out like perspective on this of like, yeah, we should do that. No, I don't, because I think it's disgusting. That's not really my area of expertise to talk about reformation of literal fucking predators. Um, you know. But like that would be like the general I mean, specifically the progressive logic of like, yeah, people should be able to have the opportunity to be reformed in some capacity. It's a very uncomfortable conversation. Uh, it's uncomfortable. It's too uncomfortable for me to even have. Um, I don't like it. I don't think that you have to be comfortable with it. But like, yeah, that would be kind of the idea that there can be reformation from different for different acts, depending on the severity of it, the context of it, and uh, you know what you did to engage in the reformation of it. Right. So that would be that child. Also, when he did that, he was a child. He had a song that he was quoting again. Again. So you guys give him a lot of grace. He was quoting a song. Number one. Number two. He was a kid when that happened. Again. This is why it's important. How old to was he? Podcast before you go. What do you mean he was a kid? He was in his teenage years. Okay. Like eighteen? No, below that. <laughs> okay. Seventeen. I don't remember the exact age, but I know he was a teenager. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, well, clearly there's a disparity there of a uh, meaning. But I'll say this: since you guys seem to believe that he's. Do you even have a, a tattoo, or is that a temporary tattoo? Goofing around, or not goofing, but you guys think he's uh, exaggerating. And that, but but let me let me just tell you a little bit something about your friend Charleston White. You, you guys you guys know most of this, but the audience. But I'm saying this for the audience. Clear, in, 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 in 1991, he was sent to jail for murdering a man who tried to shop, stop him from shoplifting. And yep. to, but but now we're 2019. This was five years ago. Yeah, I mean that's somebody who should have life in prison with no like opportunity of parole. He was arrested for unlawful carrying a weapon. 2019, he was arrested for assault with a deadly aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. In 2022, two years ago, he was arrested for DUI unlicensed. So very clearly, even if you can reform somebody like Charleston, he did not uh, get access to any like actual reformation that would be able to. You know, cause him to not engage in these behaviors anymore because he still is. Carry of weapon, possession of marijuana. I mean, whatever. Before twenty blazed. Uh, 
2023, last year, stopped by FBI over kidnapping allegations. And again in 2023, he was arrested for animal cruelty and aggravated assault with deadly weapon charges. This is a very serious criminal uh, who is definitely uh, uh, admittedly done rape. And y'all really are interested. You're interested in that. Not our what? Friend, bro. Does this have to do with us? <laughs> it's what? a video of you in it, Walter. I mean, what do you mean? Well, yeah. So the answer to this question that Ethan would say is like, yeah, I think it does have to do with you because you're talking about how you had him on and he did horrible things when he was younger and now he's reformed. But, you know, in 20, I believe 2019, 2020, uh, that's the, the time that he was, I believe that Ethan had said, he was still engaging in these behaviors. So very clearly he has not been reformed. And if you guys did a good job fleshing him out, you would have seen that. But you guys didn't flush him out. And instead, you had him come on and you were laughing when he was talking about how he would violently gang rape women and drug them. That's the answer to that question. That's how you would answer that question and to like still tie it to them. So, yeah, like, yes, it's irresponsible of them to do. I mean, I mean bro, let's rub those coconuts together, man. What do you mean? What does it have to do with you? It's a video with you in it. Use your brain, my nigga. We're not friends. We just did a podcast. Yeah, we did a podcast. Whoa, don't say that word. Podcast, and we're not friends with him. And again, like I said before, the clip that you're going to, he was describing his life story of what he had done prior. He actually okay. mentioned, never mentioned it as well. So again, that was him telling his life story. I think now. another big problem with Fresh and Fit talking to somebody like Charleston is that they're not intelligent. <laughs> their their podcast is not about um, serious, nuanced social conversations. And so, like, obviously, they're having their conversation. Their podcast is about bringing the worst representation of women on, and then berating them and trying to make it seem like all women are that. Basically, just like sugar babies and OnlyFans whores who are just trying to get their OnlyFans off the ground because the Fresh and Fit's audience is pathetic and will fucking buy every single one of them that comes on. That's all it's really about, right? So when you try to like TED Talk your episode, like based on what, like what nuanced conversation do you have other than looking at women and telling them that everything in the world is their fault and that they should have picked better men if they didn't want to get sexually assaulted, right? This is the this is the situation. Um, okay. And so, he was re using a two live crew song to describe it. So put you say laughing in a situation is bad, but that's just hindsight. I don't feel you or Ethan would have done anything differently. Maybe you wouldn't have left, but what would you actually do? I wouldn't have talked to him. I think that's the point. <laughs> Um, and I don't think I would have laughed about it, but okay. Great to death, unless they're cool and want to come on our show. That's not what I said at all. Like I said, you said put rapists to death. You said minor, that verbatim during this Obviously, interview. Minors, minors have a different legal system than adults do. So he was a minor when he did it. Yeah, you didn't okay. mention that. Yeah, Ethan, I just mentioned you he didn't mention the minor thing. What? Okay. What, Walter? He, he was a minor when he, he did, did that. Also, you're a podcaster, right? So you know guests come on your show all the time. What about your bad guests? I can name a few. Yeah, it wasn't a... It wasn't a combative interview. You guys, you know what I mean? Like you guys were laughing and having a good time and being like, oh shit. Well, as podcasters, Ethan, we let our guests talk. So whatever they want to say, they can say because it's their podcast. Now, granted, you're Unless they're women, of course. Some of our podcasters too. Your guests are very, very, very well <laughs> done as well. Actually, bro, your guests are really well out there. Like Liver King, Scammer. Mm -hmm. Isn't that one of your friends too? I, I don't think I would really compare the Liver King to anybody else, especially since not to, not for nothing. I don't really think Liver King is that much of a scammer. Um like, listen, I know I may not look it. I just got back into the gym, but I used to be pretty big into like lifting culture. There's no person in any sport that or professional athlete that's not on PEDs in any capacity. Everybody in the fitness industry is on PEDs. So, um, like, you know, I do understand that like a kid might look at that and go like, wow, I want to be just like him. Like, oh, but any adult for the most part should know that this guy's on fucking tons of gear. Um, you know, it's still wrong, but I don't think it's compared to gang raping women. I don't think it's really on the same level as that to be, I don't know, hot take. Am I right? Actually, if I'm correct, you're you're that's your real friend. And he's how many people? Millions? Yeah. Wait, I, oh, isn't that your friend? Damn, hey, that's your friend, buddy. Oh, they were definitely ready to debate, Ethan. You should have came loaded a little better. Okay. That's fucked up, bro. Okay, you got to chill. You got to hit that island breeze, man. You're getting emotional. I know, bro. I love it. It's chill. I mean, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to use that angle of like, you brought this guy on your podcast, my friend, he's not even our friend. Bro. All you have to say, I think, is there's a difference between the two, the things that these two different individuals did. No, it wasn't that you. Okay, you know what? I missed what. And Ethan could also say, like, oh, I didn't think he was on steroids either. You know, I got duped as well. Whereas they can't really make the same argument. And I said he would. I'm telling you, but we gotta have things in mind. Go ahead and do your thing. You guys are getting emotional, though. I have to say. No, no, we're not getting emotions are high. We need to take a breath. I'm just describing to you that he was he was describing his life story, which involved criminal and nefarious acts. Okay. By the way, Liver King was exposed after he came on our show. Oh, well, maybe you should take a research. Um. I don't even know how to answer that question. That's the most. That's an incredibly stupid thing to say. Uh, just to be clear, Charleston White had done the things that he had did before, and it was public information, before the podcast. Liver King wasn't exposed until after he went on Ethan's podcast. So, like, this is... 
<laughs> they're obviously going to go with the research angle because it's a very easy dunk for Ethan. Because like Ethan has had an issue of like engaging in uh, well, watching the full video that he's referring to, which is definitely a problem. He's done it consistently, so he doesn't get a lot of charity on that. Um, but there's literally no like research Ethan could have done <laughs> in this scenario. So. Maybe. What? What the fuck? A crystal ball, Walter? Oh, well, guess we need a crystal ball. <laughs> too. No, he, you said you didn't know he did these crimes when he was on your show. It's in your head, Ethan. No, oh my God. Yeah. Do you understand how future and past are different? Ball, I guess we both need a. Guess, like, Walter, do you understand the difference between future and past? Are you aware of temporal changes? Well, yeah, this is the things in the future. Fucking all animals and getting caught with a gun. Shit. This is after the fact. How are we supposed to know that? Well, no. I'm talking what? Talking about the rape. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Folk. The reason. Say, what are you talking about? They had this was on their podcast like last year. So, like, the 2019 charges would have still been in existence. What are you talking about? This only happened, like, a year ago when they talked char uh, talked to Charleston White. What? So what was you, Ethan? The reason I brought up his rap sheet is not to say you guys knew about it. It's to show you guys that he's a serious criminal. He was, and he still is. So to say that he's embellishing it, I think, is giving him a lot of, uh, is giving him a lot of grace when he's admitted. Yeah, so this happened a year ago, right? This and we... Shut up. This podcast was from one year ago, right? So... My understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ethan was referring to things that they did as uh, he did as late as 2019 or even 2020. So it's a little bit different. I don't think that anything new has come out after that. I mean, maybe it has, but you understand my point, no? Just a, a rapist. And he, he recounts the story with a lot of uh, joy, it seems like. Uh, and, and, let me watch this one more uh, time, no, and, then, no, and then we can move on. Uh, okay. uh, well, we, we uh, all... Podcast. You want yeah, to no. come yeah. in to discuss with us on this thing? You look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Um, yeah. I, mean, you... I don't know, man. I don't think that this is like a super effective um, moment for Ethan so far. You know, I, I feel like if you're not going to engage with the person, or excuse me, if you're not going to engage with the individual audience, then there's really no reason to even bother, right? I don't think that anybody that's in the fresh and fit audience is like, wow, Ethan, you're right. You know, when it comes to these really shallow takes about Andrew Tate, uh, or when it comes to these really shallow takes about uh, Charleston White, I don't think that you're going to get through to a single person. I don't think anybody on either side is, is is happening. So it seems kind of ridiculous and unnecessary. Like I, I just why even have the conversation? You know, especially since this is supposed to be years in the making. Well, maybe a year in the making because I've been having this conversation since COVID. So, like, what's what was the point of the conversation? What was the constructiveness? I mean, Ethan, regardless of the fact that he's losing subs, um, like he's, I, I just checked like a little, I just, you know, I look at every once in a while, it's down to like 2.9. Like, he's still just as imp impactive as he's ever been because he's still getting like the same views on the podcast. Those people that are unsubscribing are people who are empty subscribers, very clearly. At least that's what it seems like to me when he's still pulling close to a million per stream. So it's not like you needed the content. You just talked announced you're going on a hiatus because your wife is is having a baby soon. Um, you're still incredibly relevant. So what was the point of having the conversation with them if you weren't going to prepare for it? Like, <laughs> I I doesn't make any there's it doesn't make any sense. Like I could understand why like oh I'm, 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 I need to be relevant. I, I, but like he doesn't, he is. He, he seems to provide entertaining content for his for his uh, audience consistently, like just consistently. <laughs> so what was the point of this? You know, why not put a little more effort into, it? especially since like you have a bunch of people that you're paying to do the research. Um. So pay them more. To do more research. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to be a fucking asshole, but it's like, gets a little bit more of a zinger here. I want to, would you, I'm curious about your guys' reaction. Let me see this. Trains on white girls. Uh, uh, <laughs> choo choo. I mean, he's uh, smiling. Uh, Robin Hood. Uh, uh, laugh, choo choo. Choo choo. Yeah, running trains on girls. Okay. And then you went choo choo. Yep. Because that's considered consensual sex most of the time when you run a train on a girl. No, it is not. It is almost never. First of all, Charleston had literally, I believe, just said a second before that it was not consensual. Second of all, running a train is never is almost never consensual. What are you talking about? He, <laughs> it's funny because the reason he's saying that is because Ab and Preach were talking about that as well, and I think that they like readied their argument in case they were ever going to have this conversation. They clearly watched the Ab and Preach video about it. It's no, it's like never consensual running a train on somebody, and and he literally says that it was done non consensually. Oh. Okay, let's see how this thing develops. Do it uh, without permission. So it's not like she came over and said, hey. Okay, he says it after, but still, it's never, like, running a train is never consensual. I want to sleep. What? 
Oh, full screen. My bad. Let me do that. People, all you guys. Yeah. We say, hey, man, that white girl like you. Get over here. And then we are. Uh, oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just come in with dicks out. Oh, shit. Yeah, Yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. yeah she now, if somebody's committing you with the worst crime that's ever been, the worst thing someone could do. Dude, I mean, I understand that you. So he made the initial announcement of like, we would run trains on girls. You went choo choo. And then you're like, yeah, no, we actually would do it non consensually. And you continue to laugh. It just doesn't, I don't think that like any normal person would ever do that. So you guys are shocked that he said it, but you know what I'm saying? Like, Bro, I don't know what to do here, but bro, yeah, hold, hold the L. Yeah, you're, you're really, you're really, you here, bro? Okay. really trying to grasp at anything here. I see what you're like. Again, he's telling his life story. All right, we're listening. Again, he says we come out with our dicks out, and we're like, what the fuck? So it's like that. Like, I think anybody would be like, what the fuck? Like, what the hell? How much longer? How much longer did this interview go after that revelation that he mass raped? He's a mass rapist. <laughs> mass rapist. Okay, interesting. I guess that would work. <laughs> Just, I don't know if I'd have labeled it that way, but okay. <laughs> sorry, I was a little thrown off by that weird. Uh, way to express that. Incredible. Much longer did the combo go? Do you guys kick him out or anything? I don't recall how much longer it was. Well, actually, Ethan, if you saw, we're not friends at all. And actually, after the show, we had some beef. Oh, for you real? Saw? What'd you guys yeah, beef about? Everything. We don't, yeah, we just everything. Don't yeah, bro. So, I mean, this so, is another. You were saying that we're his friend, bro? Come on. I think that, you know what? I misspoke. I don't know if you guys are friends. That's fine. It's the angle you try to approach it. You do a lot, though. You can speak a lot, honestly. Well, I mean, I, I'm willing if I say that you guys are friends, and, and I'm wrong. I'll admit it. I don't. I don't know if you guys are friends. I don't think that detail is important. We're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Twitch. What was their beef about? Is there, um, <laughs> okay? So <laughs> apparently, Charleston White. Uh, came out afterwards the beef was so when they say that there was beef they're trying to um, hint at the idea they're trying to imply put it into your head that the beef had maybe something to do with the fact that he used to gang rape women the beef apparently is because charleston white called them out for for them beating women on their podcast <laughs> and they don't get any pussy so the beef wasn't even because of them it was because of charleston white so I just think that you should keep that in your in your head because again the implication is that they started the beef. Like, oh, we actually had beef with them afterwards. The implication is that it was over, you know, his his past, but it wasn't. It was because that somehow the gang this guy, this terrible guy, um called them out for being terrible. And you know what? It takes one to know one, I suppose. <laughs> so uh sounds like a pretty credible uh, allegation, guys. Wrong here by saying Okay, so so okay. Um we didn't mm -hmm. know. We didn't know. It's fine. Okay. There you go. And we didn't know that he was hey, gonna say that shit. We'd have you, got, you guys did. All right. <clears throat> so um thank you guys. Moving on. Um hey, Ethan, can I ask you a question, bro? Hey, go ahead. Yeah. I think honestly speaking, bro, you're a great person at heart. Well, thanks. That's makes two of <laughs> Okay. Us. Things okay. can happen where we misspeak on what we say. Okay. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, me and I were coming up in the streets, rumble streets, you know, trying to make a name for ourselves. Okay. And somebody made an accusation against my friend Myron here. Some you know, Listerine was misplaced and uh, not used correctly. But all of a sudden, you and your team came to the defense of this person. Oh, right. The person yeah, that came on the show. The Listerine. Okay. I just like what the Listerine you're talking about now, I understand. Because he asked her to use Listerine because her breast milk. And surprisingly, you said that we were rapists. And I was like, didn't no. say that. That's actually a, that's a flat out lie. No, you guys, you Ethan has been consistently supporting the narrative that they like that Myron raped this girl. Like, just to be clear. Um, over and over again in the engagement with Abbott and Preach, in the, originally in that uh, conversation, it's been pretty consistent that he thinks that that was like very non consensual scenario. So um, <clears throat> that's not false. So I don't know why that. you need to lie about that. You, it, they're not lying. You said it like a month ago again when you when you guys re brought it up with Abbott and Preach. So it's not really a lie. I'm a little confused. Insinuated? Did not. not he heavily insinuated. He almost expressly said it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, it was sexual assault. I bought all the clips. You guys want to go over it? Yeah, go over the clips. You said, I think that's sexual assault. And then you've been consistently saying that it was sexual assault. What are you talking about? There's absolutely no way like that you're... <laughs> there's, there's no... <laughs> okay. Oh, you insinuated you... that it was sexual assault. What? What, baby? That's true. That's true. And I believe it was, by the way. We can go over <laughs> I was about to go here and look for evidence or like look for the proof of it while he they were talking and this motherfucker. Like, I just want to split. Hold on. I don't lie. I don't you know why you need to lie about that. You said that we were rapists. I was like, didn't no. say that. That's actually a, that's a flat out lie. I don't know why you need to lie about that. You insinuated. Did not. That it was sexual assault. I bought all the clips. You guys want to go over it? Oh, you insinuated that it was sexual assault. What up, baby? That's true. That's true. And I believe it was, by the way. We can go over that. I do.
I don't understand. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, no. Rape and sexual assault are different, sure. Ethan implied it was a sexual assault. Like, he knows what they're talking about. Okay. And oh, by the way, this whole, like, she lifted a shirt without consent is just, like, it's it's not true. I think you guys need to stop. I don't like Fresh and Fit either. But when you look at the context of the case, uh, that's not what happened. I'm going to just be, just be very clear. We'll go through this really quick. This girl, 19-year-old girl, was on the Fresh and Fit podcast, okay? Um, then went on to Ethan where she described a story about how Myron was a loser. That's what the main, that's what the point of that is. She went on there. She's like, I was never interested in him. I didn't care about him. I had no interest. And then we went back to his apartment and like, he was like, we kissed and then he made me drink Listerine to wash my breath out. And then after that, um, he still wanted to like kiss me. We we're on like the couch and like, he lifted my shirt up without my consent. And like he, uh, well, I, she didn't even say that. He's like, she, he suddenly like, like, like lunged on me or some dumb shit. And then like, after I didn't want to do anything, he, he asked me to like leave and he he wouldn't take me home okay then we see like fresh shows the receipts i don't like him but we still see fresh showing the receipts of they were both very clearly interested in each other which destroys that narrative once you lie about that narrative you kind of fuck yourself and again i think she was on a cope story because what he actually did was open up the shirt and then like he made fun of her breast which made her self-conscious to be clear though they were it was like five in the morning when you ask somebody to pick you up at five in the morning, go back to their place, kiss them. Then afterwards, take Listerine when they say your breath stinks. Then in the bathroom, because they showed, showed the text, say like, you're fine. Nothing bad's going on. Then go into the room with him. All signs point to you're probably ready for the next step. Now, is it explicit verbal consent? No. And I think people should do that. But it's very clearly like a form of body consent. And the fact that she wanted him to drive her home after the fact means she wasn't afraid to be alone with him and she was under no duress. So to be clear, this there was <laughs> there was no sexual assault that happened in any capacity. It's okay that they go through everything I'm saying. I'm letting you know that's what happened. There was no sexual assault that happened here. It was a typical scenario where like two people got together and they were going to hook up and then he made fun of her. So she got offended, which is justifiable and understandable, by the way, because it's a horrible thing to do. And she was telling it through a cope story like, oh, he's a loser. It's not definitely sexual harassment. I'm sorry. It's not sexual harassment. It's not sexual assault. You're just objectively incorrect. I'm very clear. You guys like, I don't know if you guys have like never dated before, but like this is very normal in the dating process to hang out with somebody and then feel out your next move. It's not uncommon. So like, again, I believe that people should be very explicit in their like, hey, I want to kiss you. But like, that's just not how things typically turn out. Okay, if you're sitting with somebody and you're kissing and you're both engaging back and forth, the next step would be to like go to like a body feeling. I don't know what to tell you. The shitty part was that she that he made fun of her breasts. Based on literally what he describes in this discussion, he did essay or okay, sure. I don't know what to tell you. Based on the information that we have, it's not. But maybe he self reports. Maybe he self reports. So let's see what we got here. I do believe you did sexually assault her, Myron? And we can go over that. Okay. Uh, she didn't even want to say that. Yeah, wow. I know. That's I know. I know exactly. That's why I'll say it. I'll let's say see it what. Her. Let's see what You'll Myron. How he. Uh... <laughs> okay. Then. Anyhow. Hold on, Ethan. You must speak a lot. You, you, like, Coconuts, even, honestly, do you think rape that, is like, the same as? Hold on, hold on, Ethan. If this was you, bro, and someone accused you of this, you know what I say? I need all the evidence before I say Ethan did this because as a man, that's true, bro. It's terrible. Women lie all the time and say, "Oh, he did this and that," which normally could not be true, and we believe it because she said it. Versus, what does Ethan say? You know what? I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Unfortunately, you think that. You, you say, you know what? These niggas, they're rapists. Yeah. And, and also, I would never use the N word, Walter. Podcast. How dare you? Well, okay. Well, not today. Anyway. And, and then we did our podcast, right? And we, we debunked it. We showed the text message. We showed everything. Yeah. And um, oh, so yeah, so it doesn't debunk everything. But considering her narrative is that there was no interest there at all, it shows that like she was being, uh, she wasn't accurately representing the situation, which brings a lot of what she said into question in general. Let's and, look at the clips then. Instead of typing, uh, talking hypothetically, let's just let's just dig into it. Clearly, this is this is something of a point of contention. So here, I mean, I don't really care about it. I, I'm cool with debating the other stuff, but if you want to go, well, Walter down, brought it up. He seems to care about it. We want to know why. I mean, I think the, well, I think because I think Myron clear. sexually assaulted her. How? Well, let's we, get into it. Y'all want to talk about it or not? Yeah, of course. All right. So sure. here's so let's so let's, let's, let's start and by watching her recount the better. story. Okay, let's start here. And let's just you know what I mean. Let's just be concrete about. it. We don't need to speak hypothetically. Um, here is 
her retelling the story. And um, you guys I'm like, trying to let you know again, like, because <laughs> you guys lost ten thousand subscribers after this. You guys know that, right? Like after we did our episode, I'm warning you, Ethan. Like you did your episode on this, then we did our retaliation episode. Yep. You think everything. you affected our sub count? That's crazy. Oh, I got, oh, the numbers. I got the numbers. You guys lost ten thousand that day. We can show it right now. Yeah. Okay. On foot, special blade. We. Yeah. I, I don't know if you know this, buddy, but we lose ten thousand every month. Okay. Well, <laughs> so I don't. That's an interesting break. <laughs> I guess it is because then I'd be gone in three months. <laughs> hey, bro, I lose ten thousand every month, sucker. Look, that shit's like, that, that shit's right commonplace, here. man. You'll take credit for that. But anyway, let's talk about. Can we it basically boils down to whether you believe him when he says she consented or whether you believe her when she says that she didn't. And based on the guy's attitude and the track record, I think it's clear. Well, considering the fact that she, like, okay, this is the problem. Okay. All right. This is the problem. Okay. Uh, I'm better than you. Okay. I'm just kidding. I am being as unbiased as possible. I've literally said this guy's a rape apologist, so I know he's a scumbag piece of shit. Okay. And they maybe they'll say something that changes it. But again, she was showed that she lied. About the narrative. Again, I think it was a cope story because he was a disrespectful piece of shit to her. But he, but based on her story, she lied about her narrative. So you can't take everything that she says as an absolute fact. They were very clearly interested in each other. Also, it wouldn't have taken hours to walk home. She was like, she could have taken a fucking Uber home. So, like, it's not that. <laughs> okay. She just want like, it, it shows that if, she, if she's willing to be in a car with him to drive, get driven home, she's probably not afraid of him. Just to be clear. But okay, let's let's see. Can we talk about the actual issue instead of getting so emotional all the time. I'm just showing you the numbers. Who's emotional, bro? I'm just wondering. I just Walter, when I'm trying, I'm just trying to have a straight conversation. You guys start screaming and hollering about sub counts and stuff. It's very emotional. Screaming. Do you guys? Do you want to watch this clip? Let's go for it, man. All right. Okay, let's see. Oh, he's giving these cues like I want to leave. I want to be here. And he's like, oh, you can sit on the bed. So I sit on the bed and I'm sitting at the edge of the bed. You know, like the memes how they say how girls are. And um, I'm sitting at this edge of the bed. He's like, oh, you know, you can come up a little bit more. So now I come up and I leave a nice gap between the both of us, where it's like very obvious, like I don't like you, that I'm leaving a gap between us. Okay. And I'm on my phone. He's on his phone. And I remember again, I was speaking about my views once again. He just jumps on top of me and starts making out with me, wow. like, like like trying to kiss me. Speaking about my views, I bet I I just I find it hard to believe because a lot of her narrative was centralized around like he, she would only hang out with him to dumpster on him, and like when they were had she even said in the conversation that when they were on when she's on the podcast, she was like giving Myron a lot of shit. Then it was showed that she didn't talk like at all during that whole podcast so there's a lot of inaccuracies in her perspective but and stuff and so i'm like i have my hands like on him where it's like i don't want him like laying. thank you so much for the small gut from brave man on me like intimately so i'm just holding my hands up and i'm like no no no, no. I'm, like this was about like max a minute long and i was wearing like this shirt and it's like a very loose shirt whatever and he basically lifts up the shirt and made a comment and then i was like i'm done i'm over this like and Wait, I he lifted up out. your shirt and kind of looked at underneath it and commented yeah yeah my chest because okay. i have i have piercings. you, you i'm yeah. sorry you, you say what and I said I have piercings, so he made a comment on it. Oh, okay. And it was very Did, creepy. It was so very I, I, I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> this, this is a bad. This is very bad. This is a very disturbing yeah. uh, story, actually. Yeah, it's pretty. It's interesting, but at that point, I think like, he may have assaulted you. you. I mean, at this point, I. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to say that, but like again, like. Mm, no one that's just, so, and again, that's why. I, first of all, I don't think it's fair how you guys dogpiled on her because she never even said it was assault. I did. So let's talk okay. about me. Because um, Ethan, the reason why she said it wasn't assault is because um, you're leaving out the part where. She came over to my place. She left where she was at to come to my place. She went and hung out with me. We went and got food prior to this. Then we were in my bed. She came back to my place, by the way, after this. Matter of fact, Fresh, didn't she ask you to give you a, give her a ride to my spot? That is correct. Oh. And oh, all yeah. of those things entitle oh. you to grab her fucking top and expose her breasts? No, but the, see, they're both fucking, they're both, so, dude, I get like every day closer to saying bad words. The, the two, they, they're all idiots, okay? Oh. It shows that there is a pattern of interest that she has said that she has communicated even though she's lied about the pattern of interest that she like okay she, let me communicate better what it shows is that there is a pattern of interest that she has in myron whereas um she commun she tried to she told ethan she had no interest at all and she was just there at five in the morning after being at the club um and then you know brushing her teeth or, or mouth washing her mouth um after they kissed because he wanted to kiss her more like it doesn't none of the narrative makes sense it's very clear that they had a mutual interest in each other um and her narrative that she had no interest and she was just there to debate at five in the morning is ridiculous it, it is it's ridiculous it's not it's not normal it's not logical um you know if it walks like a duck it talks like a duck <laughs> you know it's a duck so yeah that's the problem now could he still have assaulted her sure but the, considering her credibility is destroyed after that and he showed that there's a in her own story. It's clear that there seems to be a mutual interest based on the details of her going to there at like five in the morning and all the other things that we've just went through. And the fact that her, she lied about the text message communication, how she was never interested, even though she was interested very clearly, they had a mutual interest. It destroys the credibility of her story. So, yeah, it would make logical sense that there was a, a mutual interest and that they were just generally progressing from kissing to this to that, etc. That's pretty much all that it comes down to. What? Um, what? 
That's what she's... Dude, you guys are so annoying. It doesn't matter if she was interested in the past. Consent can be revoked at any point, even if it's... Yeah, a consent can be revoked at any time. There was not a single time that she ever talked about uh, revoking her consent. And her story is clearly not credible based on what she says. That's the problem is that, like, you guys are so, like, brain warped into, like, what you want to think about the situation. You're not looking at the details. Yes, you can, you can withdraw consent at any time. We're not talking about that. We're talking about her entire narrative being, I was never interested, was completely debunked. And it ruins her entire argument. That's all we're at. So it's unlikely that that is what happened based on all the context. That's what we're talking about. So like, we're not talking about like, oh, you can, yeah, of course you can revoke consent. That's not what happened in this situation. That's not even a claim that happened in this situation. Just to be clear, we're talking about the progress, like a typical progress of people uh, engaging in like, you know, basically casual sex for the first time. Just to be clear. <laughs> okay. I think maybe you guys are projecting your experiences too much onto this or something. I don't really know. But. Said you did. Max a minute long. I don't think that they exchanged texts afterwards, but they exchanged texts beforehand. And I was. Two more kisses. We're making out. I, I, I don't know if you're in the game, Ethan. I know you're married and you haven't been, you know, single for a while. But um, it's called escalation. It's called women showing you signs. She said and that you people. attempted to kiss her and she pushed you off. That, that's that's not true, bro. Because I told her to go get Listerine and she went ahead and did it. Okay. That's well, where the came from. Well, first of all, let me say this. Let me say. You're not gonna win this. <laughs> you weren't there. Here's all other, right. Well, uh, here's another thing too. You're getting you excited. I'd like to make my point, but you can go ahead and finish. No, no, no. Here's another thing too. At the beginning of that clip that you like to play, because you like to play clips and not the full thing. I said, "Oh, come up." And what does she do? She gets off the edge. Like of the, the, the problem here is that I legitimately sat there and watched like the entire four-hour Fresh and Fit podcast and read through every single text message. I didn't stream it, but like I I recapped it at the end of it. So, uh, because they were that was when they were fucking crybabies and they were constantly um, DMCAing everybody, even though it was like reasonable shit. But just to be clear, like I, I did, I fucking watched everything. Like they said everything. Ethan said I watched everything. That's where I'm coming from. That's where that's where I'm coming from. So like when you guys are like, well, no, I don't, you guys are like coming from like, hey, I watched Ethan talk about this. I watched fucking everybody talk about this. Like I did my due diligence on this topic. So like I have a little bit more information than you guys did closer to me i mean i think that's a sign right? well that's what you said that's that's what you said happened she just said in the thing no you're right she she said she said he asked me to come closer and i came a bit closer but that that makes sense to me uh if you know why does that make sense yeah i think thank you so much for the two dollars from anna fox or anna i don't know hello sir papa gut nice cap thank you i appreciate that reasonable that i that i heard her say he jumped on me yeah let me speak please thank you i think it's reasonable for me to conclude she says he jumped on me and he lifted my top to expose my breasts and commented on my breasts right that's okay is reasonable for me to conclude that that is uh, sexual assault, and so and then when I really double down on it is if that's the if what she's saying is true, sure, but like that's the problem we're having here, no, like that's the that's the issue that we're we're having. Here. I just finished. I'm gonna put this in the description so you can watch it, like me going through everything and parts of the information. I'll watch that. It's be like one of the videos in there. Is if you take her for her absolute word, of course it's sexual assault. But that's stupid to take everybody for their absolute word <laughs> without looking at the other side. And again, and I just put it like everything will be under sources for like the core video when you watch this as a video. Like they show through text messages, not through their own opinions, through text messages that there was mutual interest and that destroys her credibility in this conversation. It's also you have to be kind of silly to think that she was there at five o'clock in the morning to have a conversation about politics and red pill. That just makes no logical sense. So, um, when you responded to it, so here, let me watch a clip of you responding to it, Myron. It's funny how I could still remember the story two years, like a two years after. Yeah, because we fucking constantly talk about this. It comes up like every couple of months. He's wearing like this shirt, and it's like a very loose shirt, whatever. And he basically lifts up the shirt and made a comment, and then I was like, I'm done, I'm over this. Like, so he lifted up out. your shirt and kind of. That, my friends, is what she's mad about. Yeah, he's probably right because it's a disgusting thing to do. I think that this is a cope story because, like, dude, imagine that you're a guy. Uh, this is for the men because women probably already understand. Imagine you're a guy and you're sitting there and you're a woman tilts your pants down and she's like, and she laughs at your dick. That would be, I would, I would be traumatized for life. Okay, I would be traumatized over that. That's what it's like to have your like shirt pulled up as a woman and like him to joke about her breasts. And that's, I think, where all out of the pain came from. I don't think personally that she came on here to like expose fresh and fit as rapists. Maybe I'm wrong. I think it was more of like, I was never interested. These guys are losers. That's what I think it was. I could be wrong, right? But that's where a lot of it comes from. And it's like a horrible, disgusting thing to do. But since we're so harping, we're harping so heavily on like whether or not this is sexual assault, which is probably isn't, we're missing the bigger issue of like, this guy's just a scumbag. 
that like makes women feel uncomfortable in every context. He has like he that's what it comes like there that's that's the story. That's the conversation. But we don't get to have that conversation because we're sitting here debating on whether it's fucking sexual assault. Like it's it's unproductive. Actually, you know what? Hold on, let's, let's, let's play just a little bit longer and I'll expose it for y'all. I've looked at underneath it and commented. Yeah. Yeah, my chest. Because I have, I have piercing. You, you, yeah. Hey, what is he saying? Yelled at her breast too? Ethan, that's fucked up. You, you say what? No, I said I have piercing, so he made a comment on it. Oh, okay. The more we talk about that, like, just to be clear, you know, and it's fine if you disagree with me, but the more that we have these bad conversations about sexual assault, the less people care and the more people tune out to, like, real sexual assault allegations. Just to be clear, it's happening way too much. And it was very creepy. It was so very I, I, I don't want to. <laughs> no, it was not creepy. She's mad because I basically made a joke about her titties being lopsided. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just a shitty, disgusting thing to do to somebody. Like, I mean, it fucking is, man. <laughs> right? There you go. And the fact that they're still laughing about it is like, yeah, they're immature fucking losers. Like, that's the, that's the, the primary aspect of this scenario. Like, he's a loser for even doing that in the first place. Why, like, what was the productive nature of making fun of her breasts? It's gross. Ta da! Yeah, so you just described sexual assault. What? What are you talking about? You just admit uh, to it, right? I mean, you said, I, no, did, I, I did lift her top and I commented on her breasts. Him lifting her top doesn't mean that he's admitting to sexual assault, considering all the context of what happened before that. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, and That's, it was 100% consensual, Ethan, because. Well, sheesh, not according to her. Oh, see, here's the thing. I don't know. You, I'm, again, once again, it's fantastic that you pulled up a clip from that podcast. I don't know if you saw that number 59 there, but during the course of the podcast, that was 59 times she lied to you, and I showed proof that yeah, she you lied. You were very generous with those podcast. cap counters. Uh, oh, no, 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 I, I was, I was no. very thorough about it because I showed full text messages. It was a six well, hour anyway, long. Anyway, I'm talking about the, This is the point. Oh, was it six hours long? I think I played it on double speed. Damn, did I really sit through six hours of that? Let me see. I'm gonna go look it up. I, mean, it's probably I just fit. It might be in the sources, or maybe I didn't put in the sources. I'm a fucking idiot. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know. It wasn't really six hours, though. That'd be fucking wild. Let me see. Uh, uh finish watch. That's fucking wild if I did that. Okay, let me continue. The matters, right? The assault part? Let's focus yeah, on yeah. that. Okay. So you, you basically are confessing now and then that you lifted her top and commented on her breasts. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean it's sexual assault. She let me do it, Ethan. What was she? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. Spoken like a real fed, bro. She let you do it. And, and what, in what way did she end it? Did she say you can lift my breast? You can lift my top and make fun of my breasts? Well, she never said you can make fun of the breasts. That's the crit point of criticism, obviously. But again, when she came back to his apartment at five in the morning, she was kissing him. She put Listerine or she put Listerine in her mouth because her mouth, like her breath smelled. She sat on the bed with him. She got closer to him on the bed. That's according to like her, like based. Yeah, no, like there's so many different ways. Right. So, yeah. Ethan, no, 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 Walter, let Myron talk. Don't, don't help. Uh, uh, Ethan, uh, let me ask you a question. Like, she let you, you do it. What does that mean? It, like, when you and your woman are about to make love, you sit there and go, a few months before I lift your shirt up. Are you talking about my wife that I've been oh, married to for 12 like, years? What, whether it's your wife or a woman that you've looked at with in the past. She said let she was pushing you. you off, dude. No, that's not true. That, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not true. Okay, it's but that, if that's what she said, then you agree it's reasonable for me to conclude that their essay did happen. That's not true, bro. But that's even... What, but if you were just going based off what she said, sure. But like, that's the problem is that he cleared up a lot of it. He can't prove everything. There wasn't a camera there that night, but he clears up the narrative that she wasn't interested at all on his podcast and you didn't engage with that. So no, it's not really like and at first it might have been reasonable, but at this point it's not reasonable. <clears throat> you know what? Especially since like, here's the thing. Okay. Like I'm married as well. Okay. Obviously I've been married for a while. Um, I used to like, I used to engage in casual yeah. sex like every once in a while. I used to be in like a polyamorous relationship. Okay, I know what it's like to date. I know what it's like to not be. Um, I know it's like to engage with somebody when it's much more of a difficult dance. The beginning of a relationship can be exciting, and the dance is exciting as well because you get like the nerves when you go to hit on, you know, when you make moves on somebody. But not everything is explicit. Again, I believe in explicit consent. And even when I was with my wife, I was a little bit more like explicit. I believe I said like, "Can I kiss you?" And she said yes. Right. Um, Right. So there's a different dynamic when you have casual sex versus being with somebody for a long time where like it's much easier to understand body language. I'm married. I know when my wife doesn't doesn't want to have sex with me because I know her very, very well. That's the problem with casual sex is you need to be able to affirm your boundaries and set your boundaries more since you're in a casual relationship with somebody. Right. That's why you probably shouldn't be engaging in casual sex because it can be very difficult because like you guys aren't as explored and like those conversations haven't happened yet. You haven't been together for a long time. You don't know each other particularly well. Right. And so I would say like if you're somebody that's going to engage in casual sex, you need to you you need to be a little bit more uh, outspoken about your boundaries. You need to be a little bit more assertive about your boundaries because that's like a huge part of this, too. 
So because a lot of her language was even like, oh, I was indicating with my body language. I didn't want to do this. And I was indicating that. So say it like, why not say it like, no. And you feel like, well, I might have been afraid. I don't think you should be engaged in casual sex because that could be true. You could be afraid for a legitimate reason. You also might be afraid for an illegitimate reason. So you need to be like more assertive of your boundaries in these situations. It's very complicated. I, don't, I really don't think people should really be engaging in casual sex. It's a very difficult thing. Um, the, the, the exploration of boundaries are very difficult, right? So like, you know, it's a tough scenario. Uh, I personally wouldn't recommend doing it, you know? Um, or again, I'm an advocate of ex like explicit, ex like enthusiastic consent. I think you should do that. You know, you, there's a set, there's a way you can be sexy and ask a girl if she wants to kiss you. Um, I think that most people, you know, <laughs> most of the time, the only people who do ask are usually nerds, but you can be sexy and ask that question. Okay. So, you know, what's okay. interesting to me is that you're, you're, confessing. Entire talk. But you're confessing, you're, you're, you're confessing right no, now. No, you understand no, that, right? No, 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 no. no, no. Confessing Am I crazy? Just, this no, man just confessed. No, because you're trying to listen. You're trying to hear something that didn't happen. I'm telling you, she literally, right? Because once again, you're playing clips and you're not playing the full thing. This girl. Ask Fresh to come to my house. He had to drive her from Miami Beach all the way to my spot, yep. which is about 30 minutes away. Okay, FYI. She went out and hung out with me, went to go get some food. Then she came back to my place. Then I told her we kissed. Why do you think I told her to go get some fucking Listerine? Because I didn't like the word. As much as you want to go on about what happened, the lead up does not indicate consent in any way. It does. It does indicate consent. Again, you can withdraw consent at any time, but lead up absolutely will indicate consent. Like if you're hanging out with somebody, let's say you go on a first date and you're hanging out with somebody and you have a really good conversation and you hold their hand and you go out to dinner and then after you actually go on an unplanned uh, dessert date as well and you go to the park and then you sit down on the bench and then you like all that would make you go like, oh, I think I can kiss this girl. Right. So. That doesn't mean that, like, so you go for the kiss, and if she doesn't like it, she doesn't like it. Like, okay. But, like, all that lead up would give you the indication that she'd probably consensually okay with the next step. Um, yeah. This is just victim blaming. What do you mean, don't be afraid and just be assertive? It's reasonable for any woman to be afraid to say no when they're in another man's house and he's a tall, fit ex cop. Listen, no, I'm really not trying to be rude because I just went on an entire situation before where I talked about how men need to make it more comfortable for women to say no, but then also women need to be more assertive. If you are somebody who struggles to assert boundaries, then you shouldn't be having casual sex. If you're a small, petite, 19 year old girl, and you're afraid of like a large, I don't know, six foot tall um, ex cop that's muscular. Don't isolate yourself in a room with him. She wasn't there under any duress. Her story is she went there so that she could debate politics with him or some fucking idiot response that nobody believes. Like, if you don't feel like, don't put yourself in that scenario. Okay, now if he violently assaulted her, that's 100% his problems. But she didn't even, in her own story, she doesn't even say no. She doesn't even, she's like, I was, I think I was giving the body language of indication that I didn't want to do this, right? That this is a totally different thing. You need to be able to assert your boundary. Like you have to assert a boundary because if you're in a scenario and like, let's say a guy is acting perfectly reasonable, but you're just too afraid to say no. And so you're like, you're, things are progressing and you're not doing anything about it. Like, I don't know. Like, what, what do you want me to do? Like, do you think men are mind readers? No, right? This is a very complicated conversation on both sides. This isn't victim blaming anybody. This is just saying, like, be careful. If he assaulted her, then that would be a horrific thing, and he would be 100% at fault. But if you're in a, a scenario where both of you are interested, which we already know for a fact because we've seen the text messages, like, you need to be able to just be like, I don't want to do this. I want to leave. I don't want to do this. That's the problem we're having. It's not victim blaming. Like, it's just like a, a sort of boundary. If someone's giving you a cultural, you don't, don't jump onto them. This is the problem is that I, I have, I'm going to stop getting stunned by the chat. You're assuming that what she's saying is a fact, despite the fact that she's been proven that her narrative was false. So like you're doubling down because you're completely locked in to your anchor bias. You're completely locked into this anchor bias that like he must be like, you're listening to her story. I looked at the objective text messages. I'm not listening to what Myron's saying. I'm looking at what he showed in objective text messages when I watched the apparent six hour stream. Okay. And we already know that men, this is the problem. Men tend to lack, I know many instances, emotional intelligence. So like, if we're actually gonna have this conversation, this is like a huge issue with men of being like morbidly, emotionally unintelligent. So like to expect them to read body language is also like another issue. That's why these things are complicated. Oh, guys should just know when the cold shoulder. People should know these things, but it's it's so difficult because men are fucking idiots. Like men are legitimately dumb as fuck when it comes to emotional intelligence and reading body language. And they're incredibly stupid. 
This is what I'm talking about. This is why this is such a complicated conversation and people should just try not to engage in casual sex because it's so complex. Like you can't expect the person that you're with to be able to read every aspect of your body language because at the same time, she might have felt uncomfortable. Let's say that she did and she might have felt she was communicating uncomfortableness with her body language, but maybe she wasn't. Maybe she was just communicating nervousness. I mean, if she's going and after they kiss, she's going and getting the Listerine when he's like, oh, your breath stinks. And then she's going into the room with him and then sitting down next to him. Who's to say that she was communicating uncomfortableness or if she was just communicating that she was a little nervous? We don't really know. There are so there are thousands of different small nuances in the story here, and you guys are inserting the way that you feel about it into it. All I'm doing is looking at what she said and looking at she lied about the narrative of interest, and that's a huge deal because if she's lying about how interested she was and she's lying about how she was there to have a fucking political debate, how am I going to take everything that she said as a fact? That's what we're talking about. That's how, that's where I am. Like, this is a very complicated conversation to have. And it's so simple for different people, because I think that you mean well, but I think one of the biggest problems that we have is well-meaning fucking hysteria when it comes to all allegations out there. There is a thing that will happen, somebody will do a bad thing, and then people will engage in hysteria, and they will, since they will, they will go disproportionate, and they will just become very, like, hysterical, like, oh my god, this person is the worst. This person is horrible. And it's like, no, this person did a bad thing. And I'm speaking vaguely, but people will go like, no, no, this person is the worst person ever. That's where we're at. That's what we constantly engage in. And that's what I think Ethan's engaging in. It's like well-meaning hysteria. That's that's the problem. It, again, it's very complicated. <laughs> this is an extraordinarily complicated topic. This is This is what sexual assault culture looks like, by the way. This is the discourse that is like the sexual assault, like the rape culture conversation. It's mostly this. It's mostly the middle ground areas where one side um, doesn't realize that they might be pushing boundaries and the other side gets their boundaries pushed on and it's hurtful, right? There's like a lot. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> to be fair, you're right. I think you're the worst. Okay, see, there you go. Incredible. Incredible. Thank you. <laughs> exactly my point. Okay. The, one of the biggest problems is that like we're all it's and it seems difficult to understand from my perspective because like we're all ourselves. So it's a weird concept that every single one of us has had the number of years on earth of experience generation, right? I have I'm almost 34, so I've been on this earth for 34 years almost. And I have 34 years worth of experiences that are unique to me that build me up to this point of conversation. And then you have whatever, you know, if you're 30, you have 30 years of that, or you have 20 years of that, or you have 40 years of that. And we use these bits of experience that we have in our life to fill in the gaps of stories we hear from other people. It's the exact reason why different people will have different languages and conversations with each other in different um, atmospheres, Right. It's, it's that's what I'm talking about. So when we have this story, you're inserting yourself into it. I'm inserting myself into it. But the way I'm trying to look at it, in my opinion, is as unbiased as possible. And I'm not saying bias is always a bad thing, right? I'm just like if you know if you're allergic to peanuts and you have a bias against peanuts, probably a, it's probably a good thing. But that's what I'm talking about when I'm coming here. Okay, that's the point that I'm saying. All right, and it's important to keep these things in, in, in mind. All right, thank you so much for the 14-month small guy from Mr. Sign 12. You ate big, bro. Okay, thanks. Also, first time on the stream, I bet. <laughs> thank you so much. Ethan. Lead up Ethan. is not consent, brother. Yes, and then I say, yo, I don't like the way of breast smells. You need to go get some listerine. She goes and gets the listerine and comes back, okay? <laughs> then we're in bed kissing or whatever. And she says, oh, you jumped on me. That's not true. That's why she was wanted to say, oh, I don't want to say it's sexual assault because she knows everything was consensual. She, everything that led up to it was consensual, bro. Now, you're trying to make something of, of something that isn't true. Just okay. To, okay. Just to review, <laughs> you say there was lots of leading up to this. Okay. Yes. That showed that she was uh, consenting. Yes. Then yes. you guys go to your bedroom and, w and where um, you kiss her. She says that you jumped on her. You disagree. But then the part that's important, in my opinion, which is the essay part, you say you 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 say then and now that you lifted her top and commented on her breasts, and you don't deny that. Yeah. Well, again, if the lead up to, if, if she was kissing him, then that would be the natural next lead up. I mean, you go to a, a person's bedroom, the natural escalation is probably going to be sex. So if you're kissing them mutually, they're probably going to go to lift up your shirt. Yeah. Don't forget, 
She Walter, let him, let him answer. I just, I, I worded, I took my time wording that. Myra. Oh, she was wearing my clothes. She, she was wearing my clothes, too. His clothes. She was wearing my clothes. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. I forgot about that part. Why a girl would change their clothes? Uh, and hold on. I just, just, so you, again, just to, just to. I believe she got there and she had like, I don't know if she had thrown up on herself or something. And that's the, that, that would be the issue. Or she, it was like raining out or something, but I believe that she changed clothes. I mean, why, I mean, here's the thing. Why not go into the other conversation? Of like you hooked up with a 19 year old girl who had just gotten drunk. By the way, I don't. I know that drinking is illegal at 19. Don't care. You're a legal adult. But you're a 30 something year old man that went and you had a girl get picked up from a bar, which they're not saying by the way, who was drunk, and then you had her come back to your place. And Myron says he doesn't drink. Myron and, and Thresh and Fit, from my understanding, my recollection, they explicitly do not drink. Talk about that. Why not talk about that? Why are you hanging out with 19-year-old girls who are getting drunk, and why don't you drink yourself? Don't you think that you, there's a, definitely a possibility of you preying on these women? I don't think that just because you're drunk means you can't consent. It depends on the level of drunk that you are. But like, we don't really know that conversation. We don't know that. Why are you consistently going out to bars and clubs, consistently picking up girls who are 19 years old, consistently not drinking? Why are you doing that? That's the conversation. Like again, like we're so distracted of like these these details of whether it was like this explicit sexual assault when we're not talking about the real thing of like what a scumbag or what this is just scummy behavior, but we don't talk about that. Right? That's what we should be talking about. Like that's where we really should. He does talk about it. It's like that's where we should have started with. I feel like the rest of this is just uh, is just a distractor. Say I understand it. Because then you could have an educated conversation about how gross that is. And that absolutely puts him in like gives him the opportunity to like sexually abuse women course like and i wouldn't doubt that he does again he tells women who have been sexually assaulted that it was their fault for picking bad guy for the wrong guy like this is the guy we're talking about to to uh, to think he's a rapist is not unrealistic it's just that based on this specific part of the story this one doesn't seem to be the rape right you let you let you lifted her top and commented on her breast right you don't deny that yeah okay my shirt i lifted my actually i lifted my shirt so if a girl's wearing your shirt my you shirt. can assault her Okay. No one said that. No, there was no assault. There was no assault. I'm trying to show how oh, ridiculous okay. your argument is trying to say that. Because oh, you told her to do Listerine? It's like, bro, it's my shirt. She changed it to my clothes. She drank my Listerine. She was in my bed at 2. Like, Ethan seems to be a, an extraordinarily loving husband and father. Like, that's an undeniable thing that nobody could say. But I also don't think that he ever engaged in, like, casual sex or hookup culture. So... It's not. It's, it's kind of hard for him to have these conversations. I think. At three o'clock in the morning, she asked my friend to drive her to my spot. Thirty minutes. Let me ask you this: Was she on the foot? She said she was on the foot of the bed. And then buy your own video that you just showed. Papa, did the girl go from the Fresh and Fit studio straight to Myron's house, or did she go out to drink and then the house? So just to be very clear, my understanding is that Myron's studio is inside of his house, and so they were like, it was from what I remember, it was the girl and her friend hanging out at the club drinking. My um, fresh picked them up because Fresh was hooking up with the other girl. I believe they brought her to Myron's studio slash house because it's the same thing. And that's where they continued to engage. Right? Just to be clear. That's what we're talking about. <clears throat> She said, said okay, she scooted up a little bit. She came closer. Okay. She came closer. That doesn't sound like a... If I'm trying to hook up with a girl, if she's like sitting uh, at the edge of the bed and you just inches a up a little bit, that sounds like someone who doesn't want to kiss me. She got close to me, bro. We were making out. Why do you think I told her to get Listerine? Ethan. Like, come on, <laughs> man. Ethan. Come on, Ethan. We're all men here, right? Before you married your wife, did you smash? Maybe? Was it do I do premarital sex? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And when this happened, just take it back in time here. Not to get to your business, but I'm just curious, bro. You were in the bed at some point with her, right? And did you magically just like say, hey, babe, can I see your tits? Or did you say, oh, shit, go ahead. It's happening right now. Hard as fuck. <laughs> lift it up and then go for it. What happened? Um, not that. No, I did not just lift her top up and go for it. No. Right, so I need enthusiastic consent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said well, to me lifting your shirt up this much. That would mean you consent to me lifting but it up. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like you guys were laying in bed making out. It sounds like you were making awkward advances on her. Dude, she told you in, the own th in your own thing that I told her to get the screen, correct? Why would I tell her to get the screen? <laughs> can you, you can only smell someone's breath if you're making out with them. You probably did it just because you're being a dick and you felt rejected because she didn't want you. Oh, but she went and got the Listerine, right? Because she was rejected. It doesn't make sense because then she goes into her, his room after. That doesn't even make sense. Ethan, remember Amber Heard? Yeah. Yo, imagine if Johnny Depp didn't take her to court and fight for his life. So, and his so Amber Heard, Amber Heard lost the defamation case, therefore women be lying? No, no, no. They, they do be lying. Just proven. They do be lying. They, they do lying. be lying, bro. And how many other men have been in the same position where they've been lied about by women? Just, just to be clear, because everybody's saying like, oh, no, it's not rape, it's sexual assault. Okay, I understand. Rape is like explicitly having sexual intercourse without consent. Um, and sexual assault is like unwanted sexual contact. I still don't think that this is sexual assault based on the context of the situation. Because again, all the leading up factors leads you to like understand that she was like it was a consenting scenario. 
I already like I've already talked about this like in, in depth. I don't feel like going through the same conversation again. Well, here's the thing: she didn't even <laughs> say it. he said it for her. But again, again, this this is why. I, yeah, right. Of course. And again, I think it's fucked up that y'all went after her because she didn't say that. First of all, I thought that was fucked up. She has every right to to um describe. Well, she did decide to come on a public platform, and so they needed to defend themselves, right? I mean, like, there's a level of smart responsibility that you would have for bringing her on there and then, you know, taking her story and by your words, like saying, oh, it was sexual assault. Um, that's like the danger of talking about these topics online is like, yeah, of course, if somebody came forward and, and, and alleged somebody alleged that I sexually assaulted them or sexually harassed them or anything, especially falsely, because I've never done that. Um, I, of course, would defend myself, too. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to play the fucking, you know, Minecraft game. Or everybody's like, I understand your experience is valid. No, I don't because I've never done that before. I'm going to be as aggressive as possible because I'm not going to sit here and play niceties with somebody that's falsely accusing me of sexual assault. So like, yeah. The bad date that she had with you, which is what she was doing. And then I drew the conclusion based on what you said then and now that you lifted her top and commented on her lopsided breasts, as you said, um, uh, which is the definition. That is actually quite literally it sexual assault. No, it is not. It's not it's sexual. Yeah. Criticism isn't illegal, bro. And you're it, lopsided. This is funny because if this was you, this position here, you know what the big difference between us and you? We say, you know what? We need all that. We, we need, need evidence. So she you want to say crazy shit like that, that? You are essaying somebody. Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not taking this to the police. She gave her story, and I listened. Well, no, but that is a reasonable perspective. I mean, they would say no, it wasn't rape anyway because like they're rape apologists. But, um, like yeah, taking one side of the story, like there's a way for somebody to tell a story and for you to affirm that person without um instantly believing who the allegation was against. If that makes sense, right? Just to be clear. So no, no, you you assume you, assume, you assume her defamation would be considered it's not defamation. It's literally not defamation, bro. It's a first-hand account. It's a first, it's a girl saying this is what happened to me. How's that defamation? You said this was sexual assault. She said no, it's not that. And then you tried to make it that. That's crazy, bro. That's like let's say well, you, I, I think bro. that you basically bro, admit you that you did sexually assault her. That's how bad you fucked up on that yeah, one. You're enemies came toward your friends, uh, apple and peach. Come to our defense. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is definitely my opinion that you sexually assaulted her. That hasn't changed. Well, sir, I would say the general consensus is that you're wrong, and you guys lost ten thousand subscribers that day after we did our. Bro, I lose ten thousand every day, bro. It's like a fucking game. Don't you know? I'm sure you lose every day 10,000. I mean, we can not every day, every month, every single day. Come on, man. Can you, you guys, 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 since you guys love Social Blade so much, why did y'all erase 120 million okay. videos right before coming on our show? Uh, right before coming on the show, or was it like a, before that? Because they got into like trouble and got demonetized. Um, 160 million views. Interesting. I wonder why they did do that. I wonder if it had something to do with that. Thank you so much uh, for the right for the two dollars from the right track slash Hank Russo. Papa Gut, my psych class is watching you right now. Wow, very nice. What does your psych class think? <laughs> we don't. We didn't. What are you talking about, bro? Quite literally, look at Social Blade. You guys, are, you guys removed like a ton of content from your channel. Oh, yeah, we're controversial, bro. We got five more on Rumble. Wait, what? Yeah. What did you remove? Yeah, we. We're... Oh, are they like consistently streaming and taking some live streams off or something? What is that? Yeah, we, we cleaned up our channel, bro. Like, we're, we, we all of our videos on Rumble, man. Yep. You cleaned it up. Yeah, we cleaned up our channel. Our, our shit, because uh, we're not politically correct. We've made great changes. Oh. And yeah. well, let's be clear. Like, the reason that they got demonetized wasn't political correctness. is because they were being insanely racist ab and preach, letting a white supremacist come on and, like, wear KK, like wearing KKK masks. I'm pretty sure that was uh, uh, Fit, the one who did that. And just, like, saying, like, insane shit. So it's not just not being politically correct. Again, <clears throat> this is the thing that's like, it's so funny when creators like Fresh and Fit and Sneeko victimize themselves and say, oh, uh, we're just banned because of, we're not politically correct. Like, well, you know, we're just saying things that other people, no, uh, excuse me, let me speak a little more intelligently. We're just saying things that nobody else will say. This, that. The Daily Wire says everything for the most part that these dumb fucks say, they just say it in a better way that doesn't get them demonetized because they're intelligent and engaging in a strategy of pushing their message over being antagonistic. Fresh and fit mostly are just as antagonistic as possible in the communication of their message because that's the only way that they get views is when they act obnoxious. It's not what they're saying. It's how they're saying it that people are drawn to. That's literally it. That's why, again, you have like the Daily Wire pushing a similar conservative message. It's not 100% so, like the same, but it's similar conservative message saying some pretty intense shit. They don't get the same backlash because, again, they're just intelligent and they know how to correctly put the things onto their other platform. Um and not be super like insanely provocative. So why, why yesterday of all time? We didn't do it yesterday. Yeah, that's what it says here. No, nah, we did it weeks ago, man. Yep. We did it about two weeks ago now. At this point, well, it says the last thirty days. No, not what it says. Uh, I'm just. I guess I got. We all got to look. I mean, not that this even matters very much. But uh, this is. I guess this is Thursday, the 29th. What the fuck is today, dude? God, this is 2:29. We're at 14. Okay. Yeah, fits. Yeah, I will actually. Yeah, well, I wonder why. Why did they take down sixty-six million views? 
Thursday and Friday, 50 million views. That's quite a few. That's not just one podcast. Why are this one's a million views? What is it specifically that they're trying to do? That's a good question, I guess. I don't, I don't know what it is. Point. But putting all the good stuff so we're transparent about that. We said, yo, all of our videos on Rumble, go check it out. All the best parts on Rumble. Yeah, man. Tap into it. I mean, you know about YouTube. Okay, so you guys, you guys are going back and erasing uh, offensive and uh, things that you guys have said I on your channel. Sure. That's fair. I've done that too. And everyone's happy. Yeah, yeah, bro. Creators do it, bro. yeah, bro. Everybody, yeah. yeah. We, we're controversial, man. I mean, I don't know why you're. I mean, that's not the point you're taking away. I am from the too. No, I am too. You lost 10,000 on that day after making that video. So, all right. Well, well, is he considered controversial anymore? I guess Israel Palestine makes him a little bit. I don't know. You know what? It, that, <laughs> Even though he has a completely non controversial take. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm happy to say bye bye to a, to a assault apologist. You know what I mean? Like, go enjoy Fresh and Fit. But I'll be I mean, honest, there's zero overlap in our fan base. It's literally and that's fine. zero. And that's fine. I there probably isn't any, like, legitimate overlap <laughs> at all. I couldn't imagine a single person having overlap. I think that's why we got so many people watching. We got almost 20 Actually, we got 30,000 plus on our side watching. You guys, are, you guys usually erase your videos? Like, you erased, um, there was a video from yesterday you guys uploaded and then erased. Which one was that? Okay. No? Yesterday. No, we only did I mean, We didn't even film yesterday. I mean, uh, it was a video that was up and then it was deleted yesterday. Nope. Was not, we did the Jake Shields interview and that's still up. Well, either way, man. Nice try, though. No deletion is normal. Yeah, thing, bro. But yeah, I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not running from that. Like, yeah, we delete videos all the time because we're trying to be within the guidelines because our stuff is controversial. Okay. So we so got to keep. There was a video up. where you were dressed, you were dressed up in some anti-Semitic outfit. Oh, here with we go. Zerka, and you, it was up two days ago, and it was gone yesterday. It's private now. What? It was never up on the YouTube channel ever. That is never. not true. That is not true. You're lying. That is lying. Never, okay. Oh, I guess got him. At the timestamp. Oh. Where? Show us. Okay, I, I have to. You I got it. it. I still got the timestamp. Yeah, give me a sec. Well, I've got it all here too. Well, you guys want to talk? I mean, Myron, is it? Is the timing of going and erasing your anti-Semitism have anything to do with the timing of this conversation? Anti-Semitism, what are you talking about? Anti-Semitism. Oh, are you denying being anti-Semitic? Oh, I mean, maybe. Might. I wouldn't doubt that. No, I'm not anti-Semitic. People that they hang out with, I mean, they've hung out with, like, fucking, um... What is that asshole's name? Nick Fuentes. So. Whatsoever. Mm. Are you? Do I hate myself? I wonder. Okay. Because I'm Arab. I'm Wait, hold on, hold on. Why do you, want, why do you wonder that? I'm Arab, so do I hate myself as well? Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, I didn't ask if you're Islamophobic. Uh, you guys want to talk about this? So here. Uh, here. You don't have to be a... I think that he's going to go into the argue, the conversation that like uh, technically like Arab people are considered Semites, but it still you would it wouldn't be like anti-Semitic doesn't encompass all I guess Semitic people, it's all Semites. So like that's why we have Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, or you know I don't know, but anti-Semitic does not it specifically talks about Jews like that's how the word is defined. Just to be clear, well, a Muslim to be an Arab. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Are you okay? <laughs> you said Islamophobia, like what? There are Christian Arabs, and there's Jewish right, Arabs. Right, right, yeah, okay. So you say, so you say you're not anti-Semitic. So here's the clip that is. This is the one that he erased from the other day. This is yeah. from YouTube. Uh, here it is, and then you can tell me if this is anti-Semitic or not. You're sitting with Nick Fuentes, by the way, a known neo-Nazi. You you agree with that, right? He's a neo-Nazi. Uh, no, I wouldn't agree with you on that. He's a great. He quite literally says that he's a neo-Nazi. He says he enjoys Hitler. Um, he talks about how black people are inferior to white people. What are you talking about? He's like a legitimate white supremacist, like neo-Nazi. What do you mean? This isn't like this. He talks about how like sleeping with black people is the same as sleeping with dogs. He's a disgusting human being. What are you talking about? It's like literally you can't eat, like you can't object to it because that's what he he's proud of it. What are you talking about? Deeper. Want to agree with you on that? He's he is an alt account that he communicates with you with called Autumn Groiper or something. Like he literally he literally is a self-described Groiper. Kids love Hitler. Kids love Hitler. What does that have to do with, like, what's your, what's your point here? You're taking one clip. You're no, taking, I, I, I just, it's not one clip. Like, okay. This is how you know that they're dishonest. It's like this guy, like, Nick Fuentes is like a leg, legitimate piece of shit. Fantastic at taking sound bites and trying to run with the narrative. You're fantastic at doing that. We've bumped you a bunch of times trying to do that. What's your problem with Nick? Right. He's anti-Semitic. I don't understand. He's like a literally anti-Semitic. He's racist. He's everything. Like, what are you talking about? Right. Okay, he's a, he's a great upstanding guy. He's, there's nothing uh, anti-Semitic about him. Let's watch this clip. <laughs> he's gone. I already told ADL. He's fucking gone. He's anti-Semitic. <laughs> what the? Myron got the call? <laughs> six million died. Yeah. Fucking piece of shit. <laughs> so, at this point, what, do, what is this you're dressed up as? And, and what does six million died refer to? I can't see what you're showing. Oh, really? I can't see it. It's you dressed in a long black beard and a black top hat and a suit. Um, and you're, you're talking, yeah. So, so what is it you're dressed up as here? Does he also have a nose on or is Myron's nose just big? You know what? I'm really glad that you brought that up, Ethan. You know what I have here? Okay. <laughs> what? Viking hat? Mexican hat? Are you anti, are you comparing wearing up? Oh my God. Okay. He has lots of hats. I think the question is like, what's the purpose of wearing the hat? Hey, bro. Okay, bro, we, <laughs> we can actually talk. Uh, we don't need to see your whole wardrobe. And, but that's very sassy and zesty no, 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 of you no. to have a... No, no, no. Be <laughs> People keep coming. People keep. Oh Jesus Christ! I can't speak. People keep coming in here and telling me Keffel's deleted all our videos. Yeah, I saw. I mean, that's nothing to really say. Like, well, yeah, that's. Uh, 
she should probably take a break for a little while and maybe come back uh, a little better. Because you know? here's the thing, friend. Because I love when you guys do bro, this. Because oh you're going to go ahead and take one clip. <laughs> Let me just show you the clips, man. You're getting so emotional. No, 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 no. Because, because this is fantastic. Well, in Ethan's defense, he is giving you the opportunity to explain the context of this clip. So. I, like, I knew you would do this. I knew okay. you would do okay. this. All right. And here's the thing. I make fun of everybody. I got hats for every single race, every single religion. Oh, okay. Okay. So what is it? I have I more. Would you like Beast. to see it? Dude, you can show whatever you want. I make fun of everybody, every race. I'm not anti anything. I hate everyone equally. I make jokes on everybody, bro. You knew I would pull. You were. You knew I would pull the videos. Your race, right? That's fantastic, man. You could pull whatever you want. You did erase awesome. it though. Just you to be realize clear. that we don't have anything. All okay, let's, let's continue. Let's continue. I understand what your point is. Let's continue. So I mean, does Ethan bring up the? Yeah, does Ethan bring up the zesty allegations, aware of Myron uh, hugging other men and talking about how pussy is disgusting and you shouldn't make women come? Myron is unironically gay. Like, I would bring that up. And there's nothing wrong with being gay, unless you're homophobic, of course. Then yeah, it kind of fucks you up there. So you say, so you're just as a Jewish guy, and you start saying six million died. What is that about? What do you mean by that? <laughs> I mean, hey, dude, if you want to debate on that, you could go ahead and obviously have that discussion with Nick. Oh, but again, Nick, I thought he was... Oh, okay. Nick is just... He, well, he's a, he's, a, he's a Holocaust denier, so the conversation is going to be that it didn't exist, which obviously it did. So, like, they're supporting that narrative, which, yeah, they're anti-Semitic. It obviously happened. He's a normal, upstanding dude. No, he's, he's a, he's a Holocaust histori historian. <laughs> Yeah, Look, funny, I, right? Go ahead, let's finish this. No, 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 no yeah, if, like, the next one happens, he hopes Ben Shapiro gets taken first. Uh, still an appropriate comment to make, just to be clear. But the context there is saying, um, like, oh, I feel like you're supporting white supremacy uh, or another uprising by being conservative, so I hope you go first. Still wrong. Little different than saying that the Holocaust never happened, right? So can, they're both bad, but, like, we can understand that we aren't babies with dumb little poop brains, and we can understand that there's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a difference between those two things. Just to be clear, do you, do you, <laughs> is it okay for me to say the N word? Comments on Ben Shapiro. Is it okay for me to say the N word? Uh, Ethan, you disabled our screen sharing. Can you uh, delete that or whatever? Because if you want to go down this road, that's cool, bro. Wait, hold on a sec. What happened, Walter? Are, are you guys having a hard time seeing the video feed? Uh, just to just sorry to pause the debate for a second, but I do want to fix that so you guys can see. I mean, this isn't really even a debate. It's him trying to reach. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to argue with you. I, I'm just wondering if if it's you need me to fix something. Technical I'm trying, question, to, trying to help. Yeah, it's just a technical question. Are, are you not able to see Ethan anymore? We, we no. can't see Ethan right now. Yeah. You can't oh. see Ethan? Okay, um, one second. Let me see if I turn off and on my video. video. We see Ethan now, but we can't share our screen to show our videos. Um, uh, if you want to send us links, I can post stuff up. That's oh, fine. if you want the ability to screen share, here. I think I just did that. So theoretically, you can screen share it now as well. Yeah. All right. A, a big old poop throwing contest. To be actually honest with you, you know, I feel like what's the point in having these conversations? Uh <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. This whole thing is fucking wild. I don't wait to get off in the first place. Let's check that. Oh, the tech. This is coconut. I know. I know. It's interesting because, like, my me like viewing, like watching Destiny's content, it made me just feel less enthusiastic about having debates because it's like I feel like I couldn't be as effective. So, like, what's the point? You know what I mean? I feel like maybe some of that energy could have been maintained here for Ethan. Well, he has an entire robust like ability structure to come with more information so hey thank you so much xoxo breezy for the five gifted papa gut memberships i appreciate that so much i genuinely do everything is a conspiracy but uh it just it's off by default i just it turned it on matrix. all right it me. guys yeah, it was the matrix exactly. okay hold on hold on let's let, let, let continue let's continue okay. shall we do you, oh, hold on do you want, do you want to show the anti-semitic clip of you talking about ben shapiro Let's but, bring it up. Can, I, can i say the n-word myron can i say the n-word I don't care. You is Ethan just going to be like, oh, I can say it because I'm Jewish? Is that what his alert is? What you want, bro? Is what it appropriate want? for a white person to say the N word? You're going in. You can say whatever you want. What word? Walter, is it appropriate for a white person to say the N word? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the what word is funny to me. Sorry. A <laughs> what word? <laughs> sorry. What word is that? I, I'm sorry. Hold on. Sorry, my head. What word is that? Why are you what? acting like silly? Like you don't know what I'm oh, talking bro, about. Bro. Remember, coconuts for brains. What word is that? Can, can you just tell me real quick? Oh, oh is what that what that? happens when I'm making a point that you know oh, is not easy no, for you to no, answer? No. You go, oh, I can't hear you. I got coconuts for brains. What's that word, Ethan? You, you're so smart, bro. What's the word? Just real quick. What's that word? Uh, you don't play the video. Oh, oh no, I gotta, I gotta get the okay. clip. Word, uh, Ethan. Come on, you're. I, I, I would. I think that the argument is still uh, incredibly flawed because Fresh and Fit got banned for being racist. Abin preached. Just to be clear, okay, that's what happened. Um, you can still be anti-Semitic as a Jewish person. You can still be ra like uh, you know racist to black people as a black person. There's a difference between saying a, a, some kind of a slur, a Jewish slur as a Jewish person, versus saying that like you 
hope that another Jewish person is the first one to go if there's like an H uh, an H point two, you know what I mean? An H two O, H two point oh, right? Just to be clear, um, yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit different. Thank you so much again for five dollars from XOXO Breezy. Hey, Pop, it's my first time on live stream. <laughs> I bet. Thank you so much. Smart, bro. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, look, bro, you can say it if, if you, you guys want to play videos of me saying the N-word, I'm going to, we, we can't show that, but I know that I have done it. That's actually, what you're saying. Yeah, you did, and you made a bunch of racial comments, too, saying the N-bomb all over the place. I actually, so, then, yeah. if you're going to call me a racist, uh, base. Says, bro, we're both racist together, then, in that case. Yes. <laughs> well, no, not quite. Um, I thought you guys were going to play the Ben Shapiro. Comment. I mean, maybe, but I think it's a little, there's a, probably a little bit of a difference between, like, saying, you know, the N-word and, like, the F-slur, which was wrong years ago. Uh, because I think he said he just likes using the word, but he didn't use it at a group of people versus putting on like a KKK outfit and dancing around um, and like mocking Abba and preach and then making your profile picture their face next to a monkey's face. I think that those might be a l the intention seems a little bit different. seems like there might be a slightly different intention there. intention there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm not a very smart guy, but that's what it feels like. Clip. Yeah, let me get it real quick. Right? But, by the way. but I don't. Uh, I don't think it matters because I'm a Jewish man talking about another Jewish man. Obviously, different rules apply there. But let me. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I mean, you understand that. You say the n word all the time, and, and obviously, that's that's okay for you to do. It's it's not racist if you say it. Then it is racist what? if I say it. So, okay, so so you're racist too, then I guess. In those moments, I definitely had moments of of racist behavior for sure. Okay, and so and so you're anti-Semitic. More like base behavior. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the same level, then. I guess we're both racist. Bro, let me just let me just show you this point. You're obfuscating so hard. Let's just let's just focus. Oh, okay. Big words, dude. What do you want to focus? Okay, so the clip I showed yeah, you, you're dressed up as a uh, like a Hasidic Jew talking about the six million dying Holocaust, but you make fun of everyone, so that's fine. So let yeah. me go to some of the render obscure, unclear, or unintelligible. Okay, so they're just saying dumb shit. Gotcha. Tweets you made. Nick, sure. Nick Fuentes is a nice person. He was a pleasure to have on the show. Said Pearl. Yep. They hate Nick because he criticizes valve problems in American foreign policy and them boys. Can you tell me what yep. them boys means? Uh, so <clears throat> it's probably um, is it a reference to Jewish people? I mean, you, you want to go into this realm? Ha, sure, yeah, of course. I asked you, didn't I? He has very valid critiques of American foreign policy when it comes to Israel. <laughs> so what does "dem boys" mean? <laughs> so what's the valid critique other than I don't like Jews? Because there are valid critiques of like the relationship you could certainly make. The America's uh, perspective as a government is going to be that this is a very strong Western ally. Um, in the Middle East, and like America tends to try to uh, spread its culture to different people. I generally agree with the message of doing that because Western culture is ob objectively less oppressive to its own people. However, there could definitely be criticisms on how they do it. But is there, is that you know, or is the criticism, hey, we should push for a ceasefire, or is the criticism like, oh, they control the world, right? Just to be clear, because it's probably the ladder that Nick's well it is the ladder that Nick says because I've seen him say it before <clears throat> whatever you want to what mean well you know what, it means. No, well, what, so, it, what does it mean when you say it it means what Jewish people the boys in business <laughs> whatever you want to mean yeah, it can be whatever you want well no you said I know what it, means. it means Jewish people okay is okay. that what you want that okay coconuts I'm living in a reality where we're all sharing the same you you, you trying to create so this like weird situation where we don't we pretend that we don't know what anything means and we just pretend we have coconuts in our brains before bro <laughs> guys let's just try to focus and do a point so we can actually talk about something Sure. Um, I, I, uh, so I you mean, keep continuing with the Dem Boys things. Okay, let's go. Uh, the Bolsheviks killed millions of Russians. Who's going to tell them they were Dem Boys? Yep, that's uh, a fact. Yeah, that's a f and then you say, this one is really interesting. You say the movie Europa is the yep. most based documentary. Yep. I don't even know what the movie Europa is. Can I read a synopsis of that, of that film? Where are you going to read it from? Wikipedia? One of the bot forums? Well, tell, well, tell me if you think this is inaccurate. Um, okay. Hold on. I'm uh, grabbing it. Um, here it is. So yeah, it's from Wikipedia, but if you have a better place to describe it, that's fine. Wikipedia. I looked it up and it came up with Euphoria. So I was reading it and I was like, oh, Euphoria follows a group of high school students as they navigate love and friendships. Like, oh, wow, that sounds like a pretty good movie. Yeah. Wikipedia, Wikipedia lies about everything. Hell, they even make you look crazy on there, bro. You're gonna read well, it's all true. It's all true what they say. I mean, you know what I mean? Uh, I, here's I don't know, man. Like, I, I think we have to get away from the argument that Wikipedia is, an un, is a shitty source because like, when I was in school, they would say it is, but Wikipedia is like the best source out there for like everything, generally speaking. Here's the, here's the synopsis of the film and then correct, me where, correct it where it's wrong. The film yep. promotes various anti-Semitic conspiracies claiming that communism was created by Jews with the goal of total world domination. Thank you so much for the five dollars, Alvin Park. It's hilarious that Ethan is more willing to talk to Fresh and Fit than Avon Preacher. That's what I'm saying, dude. I do think it's a little bit silly. I do, th especially since Avon Preach are reasonable people that will have a reasonable conversation. And the Jews control the world's money. And very clearly, Ethan's not afraid to have the conversation about this topic, but like the topic that Avon Preach and Ethan 
uh, have a contention over, which is what they just talked about before. So, like, why not? Why <clears throat> are conspiring to engineer the downfall of white race by encouraging immigration and interracial relationships? It also engages historical revisionism to claim that Jews started World War One and Two as part of a plot to establish Israel by provoking the Nazis into acting in self-defense. The film also claims that Jews what the fuck Jews caused Germany to defeat in World War One, which is commonly uh, referred to as the stab in the back myth that Adolf yep. Hitler was fighting against a global Jewish plot. You called that movie uh, based, most based. Yeah. Oh, okay. Why? That's inaccurate. It is very based. And I so, mean, is, is it 100% accurate? No. Oh, so then... <laughs> okay, so what? what's based about it? Most documentaries aren't. There's always so an error. Part? Okay, okay. Like, all right. I'll say it's too based. It's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's not... Based, so, but you guys yeah. don't have a problem with the description? I mean, dude, I mean, what'd you read that You read that from what? I feel like if you're this deep in the rabbit hole where you think that everything is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, then, like, there's really no reasoning with you. So I don't think that there's any productive conversation to even bother trying to have here. Like, what's the point anymore? If they actually think, like, that the Jews run the world, it's like, what's the point? You know, what's... I, I don't understand. <clears throat> yeah, bro. Tell me. You watched the movie. Tell me if it's accurate. Wait, you watched it, Ethan? Did you watch no, it? No, I did not watch some fringe neo-Nazi documentary, bro. We can't even have a conversation, conversation, bro. Then we can't even have bro. Ethan, is what's this what's accurate? What? Dude, you guys are such more... Like, Ethan, is this what? accurate? What? Is this accurate? Come on. Is, is, is this accurate? We're going to talk about this, man. Yeah. You didn't even watch it. Come on, bro. You that they said the sky was green in there, and you wouldn't even know. Is this description accurate? We don't know. Do That's know? why I'm asking you, Walter. Jesus Christ, man. I mean, it might have helped if they actually watched it first. I don't know if he, I don't think that he like has to watch it first to be like, oh, is it bad? But it probably would have helped for him to watch it. Like he could have really like, I mean, I just feel like he would have been better off coming like, super prepared. I feel like this has been, uh, you know, uh, a lot in the making. I remember it was a year or two ago when Ethan tried to have this debate with Hassan and the two of them, and they were the ones that rejected it, not Ethan. I remember like specifically they kept making excuses. I've looked at like the actual messages. Ethan was down to have it. Um, they even said that they don't like they could just do it online because originally they were going to try to do it in person and blah 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 and whatever. And like now you have your opportunity, and it's like you could have really hit a pretty hard dunk fest. And I I feel like Ethan's like dropping the ball pretty hard here. Um, it's a little unfortunate. So it's pretty rough. You, what do you know? What do you know? I'm, it's 12 hours. No one's got time for that. Somebody does. Who cares if it's 12 hours? It's eight hours. Which one? Listen, not for nothing, but Ethan has people he could pay to watch it. Instead, he could watch it instead. All I'm saying, I'm, I, like I said, I don't think he has to watch it. But I mean, we do have a consistent pattern of Ethan seeming to have a little bit of a rough recollection of information. <laughs> so I think he could have been more prepared. Uh, he could have had someone else watch the movie. You know what I mean? Paid somebody else to watch the movie, break it down, have that person come on and be more of the expert on the conversation. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm saying. That's fucking crazy, though. Did they even watch it? 12 hours? How about, how about you so watch it? Walter, you've seen... So, come back and hold, on, let me, uh, hold on, let me talk to Cocoa Butter. Or Coconuts. Um, Coconut, co coconuts, um, you've seen this video, this movie, correct? I've seen everything. Bro, why, why, why are we here? Are we doing? A, are we going to talk? or Are we going to be silly? I thought we had a big one on. I don't know. What is that? Have you Ethan? seen this movie? Have you seen this movie? Oh, uh, well, I've seen. Everything. Okay. What's the Ethan? Look, you said it's based. So I'm assuming you saw it. Is the, is the description accurate? Is the description accurate? Bro, to be honest, that's the video. I don't know what's accurate on there. Like, what, what you I read it to you. I mean, what the fuck are you talking about? Information entered your brain. It's time to process it. Whole story I watched when I was a kid. Why can't y'all? Why can't y'all answer if it's accurate? Who won? Like a couple months ago, they got remember shit. Do we need to go one by one here? Um, okay, communism was created by Jews with the goal of world domination. Agree or disagree? Thank you. I don't know. Ethan, if you didn't watch the movie, then we can't have a coherent discussion on it. You didn't even watch it, bro. So why would Jewish people even want communism if the stereotype is that they like money a lot? Like I don't get it. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not supporting these stereotypes. It just doesn't even make logical sense to me. Wouldn't they want capitalism then? So it doesn't even make logical sense to me, but okay. You're reading Wikipedia thing asking us if it's accurate. I told you at the beginning, not all of it is 100% accurate, but mm -hmm. it is accurate about a lot of things. Which It's like what? Parts were inaccurate and which parts, you know what I mean? Because I just read the description. It's, like eight, it's an eight hour long movie. You do realize that, right? Damn. That's a lot. That's a big commitment to being a, a fucking eight Jew hater. You invested uh, a lot of time into hating Jews, brother. Sit down for eight hours and watch that. Uh, number one, I'm not a Jew hater whatsoever. Um, okay. Well, we're working on that. We're, we're working on trying to absolve you of that, but we're having a hard time. Business partners are Jews. We work with Jews. We don't have an issue with Jews whatsoever. Right. We, we just love movies. What Jews does he work with? <laughs> oh, what? With that? Okay. Uh, that, uh, we're critical of other things that might not. And here's the thing: we're critical of people that aren't even Jewish a lot of the times. Okay, so, so, so we're critical of a bunch of things. Just to wrap, but, just to just to wrap this up okay. uh, on the movie Europa. Of which the narrative is basically tons of conspiracy theories about Jewish people, uh, uh, a lot which are echoed by uh, Adolf Hitler and used as cause to kill Jews. You describe that documentary as Europa is the most based documentary. 
Yes, and the reason why I called it based, Ethan, is because okay. it covers historical facts that are hidden from American like what classes. Like well, what? Watch the documentary. We can have. Why can't you tell me? There's a bunch of. Yeah, them. It sounds. First of all, it doesn't. It seems to not portray any historical fact. Right. It seems to have a big narrative. Now, are there facts in there? Probably, but then they seem to attach a narrative onto that fact to try to make it seem like Jewish people are bad. Um, if that is the case, that they tried to, you know, justify. They tried to make it seem like Hitler was justified in, in starting World War II. That's insane. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's listen. Like I said, like I don't think that there, I don't think that there's any productive conversation to have with somebody that is a conspiracy theorist because that's what Myron is. He's a conspiracy theorist. Um, that that's where we are at this point. I, I don't think you should have even bothered having the conversation. I don't think it really is particularly productive. Tell me what, Walter. Uh, tell me what, Myron. Get me pique my interest. We can have a coherent conversation. Really? You, yeah, you can't have a coherent conversation because you can't fucking talk about it because you know you'll look anti-Semitic as fuck if you even describe one thing it's about. Well, you watch the movie, and then you can have a discussion on it. Oh my God, you guys hate you, you right so now, much. Because you tried, you tried to reach with the anti-Semitic thing, saying that you were. This is not a reach, my friend. A bunch of things. That was a reach. Then me saying that the movie is. It doesn't seem like a reach at all. If it's an anti-Semitic movie, <laughs> he, very clearly they're dodging the question, which means that they know that it's they're being anti-Semitic, and they just don't want to say it. There's a bunch of other historical facts in there, right? Like how the Federal Reserve came into play, etc. So do you need to learn about the Federal Reserve through an eight-hour neo-Nazi fucking uh, <laughs> propaganda film? What do you mean? You, there's lots of books about that. It would help again, bro. All right. Help. All right. So I, anyway, you, you guys say that it's most right. based, but you refuse to tell me what it's about or dude, if the description's accurate. Dude, once again, I told you, you not know, everything is accurate in the film. What's well, not accurate? Watch the movie, bro. Walter, you are silly. You're a silly boy, Walter. <laughs> You're a silly, goofy guy. Oh, silly together, my friend. That's right. One of us. Well, the problem is, is that nothing's going to change if they if Ethan had watched the movie. Nothing is going to change, right? Like there, he, he's just, he would ask the same question: "What's inaccurate?" Well, watch the movie, and he'd be like, "Well, I think this is inaccurate," and then they would dance around that question too, because that's mostly what they do is just dance around these conversations. So, it's fucking, we're, we're, you know what I mean? One of us hating Jews and being silly. See, you keep love, trying to say that, that you keep trying to say that we hate Jews. We don't hate Jews. Either. We just friend. love, we just love Hitler. It's very clear that they do not like Jewish people. Okay. Like Nick Fuentes says this a lot. Well, I don't really hate black people. I just think sleeping with them is the equivalent to sleeping with a dog. Like he said that before. Or excuse me, I got yelled at last time I said this. He said that it is comparable, but not exactly the same thing. Sorry, let me let me clarify that. I don't want to be uh, too non charitable to the literal you know racist that thinks that black people are animals. Right? Like, what a what a fucking asshole I am. Um, <laughs> that's what he's, oh, I don't hate them. I just wish they weren't here. That's what he says. Like, it's disgusting rhetoric. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Do you have black friends? What? You never Wait. said we love Hitler either. Wait, hold on. words in our mouth. No, I'm being silly. I, I, you didn't say that, but you said, but you did say that. Anyway, no, go no. ahead, Walter. Go ahead. No, no, you love Hitler. Ethan, you didn't just say that, did you? You love Hitler? Yes, Damn. Walter. You got me. That's, that's so crazy. Big, Walter, oh my God, bro. You just got me so good. I a sound bite like you guys do. Oh my God, you guys. Bro, you got me so good. It's almost like I it's almost like I confessed to watching an eight hour fucking documentary about Jewish uh, conspiracy theory. Well, very clearly, they didn't watch it either. That's the thing is, I don't think. That they watched it at all. I'm pretty sure they're just saying this um, because they want to be edgy and they don't really care. I'm calling it base. I watch one of my hobbies. I like to watch World War II films. I like to watch World War One films. I like to watch documentaries <laughs> in general. I enjoy learning history. I enjoy okay learning. Mm -hmm. I watch this channel. I, one of my favorite YouTube channels is Nutty History. I like to watch that as well. Nutty. Six million so, Jews yeah. died is a myth. That's nutty. How many Jews died in the Holocaust? <laughs> Do you know? Do you know? <laughs> to laugh. Uh, yes, yeah, six million though. How many? I mean, the, the number is like six million, right? I mean, it's changed a bunch of times. I mean, when has it changed? What are you talking about? It's less. It hasn't changed at all. It's like 6 million Jews, but then like 10 million people total, I believe, is the number. What are you talking about? I don't know history. You don't know my history? What, like, what does that mean? How many? I mean, I, I answered already. You said well, like. Well, I don't know. Well, I, uh, that knowing yeah. the... You want, uh, roughly 6 million? I mean, to give you the precise number of people that died in the Holocaust? Yeah. Do you, know, many, uh, do you think that's possible? Oh, okay. So, Wait, so you guys' bar is really well, fucking weird. You want, so if I, I can't give you the exact amount of people that died in the Holocaust, then I don't know what I'm talking about. That's literally like impossible to know. Yeah, we Six know million people? We don't know either. But you have an opinion about it, clearly. We don't know, we don't know either, bro. Just saying. It's about six million, though. I'm, I'm comfortable saying that. Okay. Okay. Well, so you don't know exactly. We don't either. We'll take your word for it. Well, I know close enough. It's six million. All right. We'll and, take your word for it, bro. Thank you. And so how many do you think died in the Holocaust? How many Jewish <laughs> people? Whatever you think, man. Whatever you think, we think too. So you guys believe six million Jews died in the Holocaust? Whatever you think, brother. You guys really like are you guys cannot answer questions. It's pretty incredible. You both are uh, just you're getting we, so much Yeah, and this is the thing too is that they get to hide though through it. They get to go like, well, we have a factual this is their perspective, not mine, obviously. They're like, Oh well, we have a factual perspective on this, but we're not allowed to say it or we'll get banned again. That's what they're gonna communicate to their audience, is that like, oh no, no, they they know. 
but that we just can't say it because it's too controversial because they silence the truth. That's their whole narrative. And that's what I'm saying. Like this doesn't, this doesn't uh, change the minds of any fresh and fit viewer or watcher. And I don't think that you need to specifically talk about these like anti-Jewish conspiracy theories to change the minds of a fresh and fit viewer or watcher. You just have to change their mind on another part of it. And that starts the potential de-escalation of that person engaging with fresh and fit. I don't think this video does that. I don't think that there's like a single conversation that Ethan had, even when he's right, that like is going to have any uh, viewer of Fresh and Fit go, oh, you know what? That's interesting. You know, I don't, I don't think, I just don't think so. Do you know, you guys are getting so emotional and you close off on me. I don't want you to close off on me. Like, I want you just to answer the question. You're, you guys are doing like, um, you guys close crush down and I just want to know if you, how many, I know you have an opinion. Why are you afraid to say it? Opinion? You, you try to, you try to Why are you afraid to answer the question, man? I wish you guys wouldn't be so cowardly with your opinions. You did not do your stand, homework for the state, my friend. Stand on your not, fucking beliefs, brother. You did, not, you did not do your research. Okay, how many Jews died in the Holocaust? Try to say we're anti-Semitic. That was a fail. Try mm -hmm. to say you were a self-fit. Like, I don't have a bunch of other outfits here. That was a fail. No, you watched eight-hour movie. We're trying to watch it all. Bro. Yeah, Destiny kind of... would be tearing into it. Like, yeah, like, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I don't mean to glaze the guy, because they're, uh, but like, you know, he's a more effective fucking debater. I, like, you know what I mean? Like, well, I leave it to him or something. Or, because it wouldn't have been difficult to be like, hey, Destiny, are you down for like a 2v2 conversation or something? Like have him get involved in some capacity. You know, I just feel like, you know, I, I don't know that I would be the one that would be super effective in de-escalating people's, uh, you know, or de-radicalizing people from like legitimate fucking conspiracy theories. I don't think I'm the guy for that. So, you know what I mean? Like it just, uh, sometimes it's good to just know what you know. It's a little crazy. I don't know. Man. That's just how I feel about it personally. You know, but. Or I ask you questions about, but I didn't watch. I'm going to read a Wikipedia synopsis and say that this is true. I told Which you that. Which you have not refuted at all. You won't even tell me what is in it or what's it about because you know it will make you sound crazy. Why won't you just answer the question how many Jews died in the Holocaust? Why don't you watch it? How about you watch it, man? We can have a discussion hey, about it. You just told us what it was, so hey, we'll take your word for it. Yeah, man. By oh, the way, you guys are awesome. By the way, Ethan. You guys are so cowardly. Like, at least, if you're going to believe shit, at least stand on it. You guys are being pussies. Like, you guys are yeah, such cowards. I can't, I'm surprised you guys are such cowards. Like, you know, I'll answer any questions you guys have, and so far I have. I'm not here, like, pussyfooting around, like, oh, I, I guess I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Whatever you think. That's what I'm, that's like emotional, lame, closed down. Like, you guys are being babies. Answer the questions I ask. For you. I've answered every question you guys have asked me. Great. Let's do Okay, how many Jews died in Holocaust, Walter? How many Jews died in Holocaust? How many Jews died in Holocaust, Walter? Whatever you said, bro. That's not an answer. Dude, I don't know. Whatever you said, I believe you. You are worse than I am, my friend. All right, well, Europa's base. Let's not forget. Okay, so so you guys are not anti-Semitic. I think we've pretty thoroughly debunked that claim. I think it's pretty safe to say. How are we anti-Semitic? Break it down for us. Tell us how we're anti-Semitic to make that claim. How many Jews died in the Holocaust? You told us. We're going off you. What you said. Okay. You guys don't want to have a serious conversation about it. Okay. What's the weird feedback audio? I don't know. It's, is it me? Do I have like audio feedback? Okay. So uh, how are we anti-Semitic now? Uh, all right. <laughs> let's let's move on to um. Uh, making accusations, I can't back it up. No, I, it's been thoroughly proven. You guys are anti-Semitic, but like I'm not. There's no point in like running in circles, being like, prove it, and then you guys being like, I don't know. Yes, yes, Ethan. You do realize, right? Because you want to talk about us bringing Nick Fuentes on the show. You do realize, like two days later, we brought Dave Rubin on, right? Well, Dave Rubin is one of the most self-hating, fucking contradictory no, 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 no. morons. No, no, no. The point I'm trying to make here is that did Dave brought... Rubin address what Nick went? Come on, bro. It's not about that. I'm telling how you, how many Jews died, brother? We brought Nick Fuentes on, then we brought Dave Rubin on. Is Dave Rubin a health Well, they consistently engage with Nick Fuentes. It's not like a one-time thing. Like, they are legitimate friends with a, an actual, like, neo-Nazi white supremacist that doesn't respect black people. So it's like, it's very interesting that they would even uh, platform him, but... Holocaust <clears throat> uh, uh, historian? No, but or he's just a, some random dude. Honest? He's a Zionist, okay? And that's fine, but we like to bring people on of different thought processes and different opinions, okay? So just because we brought Nick on doesn't mean... Dave we're Rubin, King of the on. Jews, baby. He I came to clear it all up. We bring people on with different perspectives. Matter of fact, we're going to bring Laura Loomer on uh, this week. So we bring people awesome. on with different perspectives, dude. You're trying to sit here and say that we're anti-Semitic, but we open our platform to Jews all the time. So nice try. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I mean, how you on a podcast with you and you're Jewish. I mean, if they don't explicitly hate Jews, then they like certainly capitalize off of like an audience of people who hate Jews, like for sure. I mean, that's the thing is that like this is what happens when you get more and more radical. I mean, the red pill audience is like right next to like incredibly far right audiences. Like red pill in general is just full of a bunch of like men looking for a victim complex. It's just a bunch of pathetic guys that are looking to blame something like something in the world uh, on their problems. Uh, that which is mostly not having a father. Are not having a strong like masculine figure in their life, right? That's pretty close to also hating, <laughs> hating women, also hating Jews. Those are pretty close things. <laughs> so it's it, they're within close proximity, so it's easier for them to audience capture. So even if they don't believe what they're saying, they're certainly playing into it for a particular audience. And it's at that point, like, is there really any difference? Like, come on, man. Wait, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, man. Whatever. We don't need to talk about it because it's a it's a road to nowhere. But no, no, because, because you doing this show with me is proof that you're not anti-Semitic. Very good. You, you tried, right? So you, you, you okay. Fair to... enough. Debunk. Debunk. You guys. Oh, yeah, they're very anti-black too. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, they, again, the way that they treat um, fresh and fit is fucking insane. So.
you're bumped in. It's anti-Semitic, yes. and you're getting bumped right now. If you, it's, it's all been debunked. Like, we do a collab with you. Okay, all right, let's, let's move on to the next topic, and then uh, it's all been debunked. Go ahead, uh, Walter. You, you had a question. So we talk about dating in today's society. You know, mm-hmm. women. Um, but in this case, you're married, bro. Good job on that. That is a compliment cool. to you because obviously speaking, getting married nowadays is not easy. <laughs> Granted, how do you even make your wife happy? How do you maintain a good relationship? Who want to hear your opinion on this? How do you maintain a good relationship? Oh. I mean, you just respect your wife and listen to your wife. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's very difficult to explicitly tell you like, how to do it. It's something that like it's easier to learn through like a parental figure or like a father. Obviously, my wife and I are equal partners in our relationship. We have our different roles that we tend to do. We respect each other. We listen to each other uh, when one complains. And we set up solid boundaries so that we don't get pushed around by the other person. Because even when you're married to a good person, you need to maintain a boundary um, because some people will unintentionally steamroll you. It's just a give and take as a constant dance back and forth. And just to be clear, Fresh and Fit don't talk, don't know what dating is. What they do is they specifically talk to whores, like women, that they find on sugar baby websites that want to promote their OnlyFans, and then they berate them, <clears throat> and they try to make it seem like that's all women when it's not, right? You surround yourself with the type of people you want to be with. I don't know why you would surround yourself with a bunch of OnlyFans people. It's weird. You know, God bless if that's your preferred job. Do your thing. But like that's not who I would prefer to be around, right? If you surround yourself with strong women, you'll be able to have a much uh, easier time finding somebody. Be what? Uh, it's about maintaining uh, like mutual respect, listening, good communication, and uh, and probably eating pussy too, Myron. I know that you hate doing that because you think it's disgusting. But genuine encouragement, I think, being caring about the things that they care about and supporting them and treating them like equals, I think, is uh, the paramount uh, qualities in maintaining a good, healthy relationship. Are they gonna go? Are they gonna have like a meltdown about the word equal? Relationship. That's good. No question. Let's say I'm a young, young guy, like 21, getting into the world. Mm-hmm. How would I get a girlfriend or a wife, you would say? Well, that's a weird question. Like, if you're 21 years old, then you would date. Well, you should, like, whatever the dating metric is right now, you know? I stopped dating, again, I was poly for a while, so I stopped dating when I, I don't know, like, 29 or 28. Um, but, like, yeah, I mean, the fucking Tinder, go on a date, explore a girl, <laughs> learn through experience what to do and what not to do. Learn what you did wrong in a relationship if it goes poorly and what they did wrong so you can set better boundaries in the next one. You really just need to go through like experience of dating. Um, as a man, you're going to be the one that's going to have to you know shoot your shot. <clears throat> so be ready to shoot your shot. Don't be discouraged when you get shot down because like 95% of the time you shoot your shot, you're going to get shot down. Like it's not like, I don't know. What is it? Get a decent job. I don't know. What? <laughs> No, no, I want opinion, bro, because obviously... I don't know. I don't, what the fuck do you... I don't know. I, I don't care. But hold on. You criticize us about our opinions. But what? I just want to hear your opinion, bro. I, I don't know. I don't care, and I don't know. Oh, so now, now you don't, don't know. know. All of a sudden, you don't... I mean, why, why not have it? I mean, I, I had the same initial reaction, but why, like, not, why not give an answer? Like, it's, a, it's, a, it's in such an insanely open-ended oh. question that's so weird. That's why we had the same reaction, Ethan and I, but then, like, afterwards, you should come to an answer, because now they're just going to use that... <laughs> To like fucking uh, uh, like go after you. you how are a twenty one year old supposed to meet a girl? I mean, who? What the fuck are we talking about? So how can you criticize us? Go, okay, people? how about that? Go into a crowd and talk to a girl. I mean, go to go to uh, go to a friend's party and talk to a girl there. Uh, I guess. I mean, if you see a girl that you find attractive in public, yeah, approach them. Sure, you could do that. It's going to be considered weird, so I would recommend because nowadays everybody's everything's online. Everybody's so fucking like weird. But if you see a cute girl, you can approach them and be like, "Hey, I think you're cute. Like, here's my number. You know, you could call me or you could not call me. This way, it gives them the comfortability to do that. I guess. I mean, I feel like the majority of relationships are probably happening through. Well, actually, that's the truth. The ninety-two percent, I think it's like ninety plus percent <clears throat> of like stable relationships are not happening through like twin Tinder or OkCupid okay or anything like that. Most of them are happening through. Like hobbies, work, church, family, friends of the family. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. Be a little confident and approach a girl. I, I mean, like, this is such an open ended question. They're, they're, it's hard to give specific advice when you have no context of like the person. So if somebody came on, I could like flush it out and ask questions of like, oh, how are you, blah, 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 you know, ask whatever questions I need to. That would be much more impactful than just giving vague general advice. You know, it's hard to do that. Is that it? <clears throat> Do you want me to list every possible way that people can interact, Walter? What is your point? You can meet at a bar. You can meet at a train station. You can meet at a a, a restaurant. You can meet at Walter's house. You can meet Walter's mom. She's a great lady right here. Make sure you follow a girl home from the bar at night, as long as she doesn't have her friends there, of course, because she'll think that that's really cute. (laughs) 
Do, don't do that. You can uh, meet at the, actually, I don't know anything about your mom. She might be, she might be bad, but I doubt it. I think she's very sweet based on what I know about you. You can meet at the beach. You can meet at the, uh, at the ice cream parlor. You can meet at the mall. You can meet it. You can meet in an air, in an airplane. You can meet in a blimp. You can meet in a, do you, do you want me to keep going on, Walter? Or is this enough? You got it, bro. You got it. Okay. That was a good okay. answer. Okay. They're going to, they're going to tear into that response. He's, he's going to, he's about to like be made to look so dumb by their audience. Like, is he not aware of the optics of this question? All right. So we talked about, that's, that's whoa, that's the end of your fucking questioning. What did no, you no, just do? Wait, they're just shows. What? Continue, bro. Wait, no, no, don't continue. What was your point? <laughs> no, you, you criticize us about our talking points, but yet you yourself no solution, no solution to the problem. So it's almost like oh, because like our talking points. Oh, because okay. because I. What's the problem? Like that's what I would want them to say. I know that there's problems when it comes to like the dating market. There are like the biggest problem that men. Well, there's actually multiple, but the, one of the biggest problems men face in the dating market is that they, they're the ones that are supposed to be um, the ones that ask a woman out. And now we live in a very online world where people are socially interacting less and less and less, which gives men less and less of an opportunity to present themselves in public with somebody. Um, a lot of young men are inside. They play a lot of video games. I know it sounds like a silly thing, but I used to play them a lot too. That's like a big hobby of theirs. They're inside. They get a lot of some social interaction while they're inside. Uh, they masturbate to porn, which like kind of has it also an impact on their uh, desire to mate with somebody. Um, and it fucks up boundaries when it comes a lot of times to, to sex. Uh, there's so many different issues there. That's why a lot of it is like you kind of have to go try to go outside and get a fucking hobby and like learn to socially interact in general. We will we'll, we'll pay off in dividends. Um, yeah, there's a lot of issues with it on there. Uh, sure. You know, women tend to get more attention on like Tinder and other apps as well, especially from guys that are like more attractive than what they could typically get, which is another problem too, because a lot of times guys are on Tinder to fuck, even if a woman's on Tinder to try to find a relationship. So like an eight out of 10 guy will hit on a six out of 10 girl. Cause he knows it's easy pussy. Uh, there's a lot of issues that, that are, that are going on. You know, what you really need to do if you're going to go on like the online dating perspective is try to put together a big, a decent profile that's like expressive of who you are without being too much more than just a couple of words because women actually read profiles, take some decent pictures. Um, there's not a whole lot you could do. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's so many aspects to it. Showering is a big one too, you know, unironically. But. I didn't have a canned response to how 21 year old men are supposed to meet women. That's crazy. I mean, it's not about a canned response. I mean, you're hypercritical on how we approach modern dating and how to deal with it. And well, yeah, because they don't talk about the average woman. They talk about OnlyFans women. So Your response isn't really um, conducive to being successful in the dating marketplace nowadays, which I thought that's what I've the debate. Well, I mean, what does the success of the dating marketplace mean to you, though? Like, if success means to you fucking a bunch of 19-year-old drunk girls because you have a lot of money, um, then, like, you're very successful in doing that. If your success to you is finding a long-term relationship that you can build and grow together, you're, you're tuning into Fresh and Fit Podcast is never going to allow that to happen. So there's no actual success. And a lot of it, um, Fresh and Fit have absolutely like, abysmal <clears throat> talking skills. They are, honestly, they're incredibly disrespectful to women. Um, Myron doesn't make women come. He's admitted this. So the only reason they get pussy is because they have money. It's the reality. Like there, there's really nothing going on there. So like I don't really know what is they what is it that they're saying that's helping all these young men in this marketplace of ideas. Like go to the gym. Great idea, guys. Go to the gym. Run five by five strong list if you've never been before. Uh, okay, it's a phenomenal routine. But what is it that they're really saying? Um, I should have known that you would try to do some stuff like this, pulling out, you know, oh, talk as Andrew Tate, anti-Semitism, blah, blah, blah. What? You have Charleston White. Charleston White. What do you think this conversation would be about? Which I'm actually great and happy because this debate has exposed a lot of criticism that we've gotten from other creators. So we've been able to debunk it on your platform, which we appreciate. Yes. You, um, you have beaten the anti-Semitism charges, my friend. Let me ask you this. Yeah. If, talking, you, let's go back to- You can't explain how we're anti-Semitic. You're right. I have no possible explanation. Um, 21-year-old men, they're out trying to meet women. How do we avoid, how does these young men avoid meeting thoughts, whatever that is? We probably wouldn't want to go on so, uh, fucking sugar baby websites and date OnlyFans girls. That's your question? Yes. How do they avoid meeting? When you say thoughts, let me be clear about this. Are we talking about like promiscuous women? I guess that's what it means, right? I mean, that's okay. something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, there's, you just got to look for the warning signs. Right. And there's, and there's a bunch of them. There's many. Okay. Can you, can you list some? I think one of the, uh, another big problem people are having is that people in general are maturing very slowly. You know, they have uh, both boys and girls. And so obviously that's going to be another issue as well for people. Um, like we have an issue when it comes to money in this, and, and well, we have an issue when it comes to the ability to live on your own nowadays, which is keeping people in their houses longer. Uh, and it's preventing people from being able to mature f as fast because like, you're going to be living with your parents probably till you're like fucking 30. Cause it's very difficult to move out, to find a house, to get a good paying job, to be able to afford that house, you know? So that these are things that are making it difficult to mature more and be more independent, to learn more. Um, 
there are so many different factors that are making things difficult. I mean, there's a bunch, but here's the thing. It's not like, you know, it's a tell like, oh, she has these signs. She's definitely a thought. You know, there's always going to be exceptions to the rule, but all you can do is watch behavior over a prolonged period of time, which is why we're big on, you know, betting a girl for at least six months to a year. Right. Um, just watching behavior. But having a six months to a year is insane. <laughs> well, like, I mean, I would say don't like start getting into a relationship with somebody for like three months. So date them for three months to kind of like get the most you'll, you'll get most of what that person is like before you like commit to anything. Um, but six months to a year, like what the fuck? What is what is this? <laughs> A lot of guy friends, liking to party, uh, former drug use, uh, current drug use, alcoholic, uh, sure. former alcoholic, um, being involved in certain professions where she has to display sexuality to make money. Strippers, OnlyFans, uh, porn star, sure. model girl. Um, she, you know, was in a, a sorority that likes to party. She went to party college. Um, she was uh, in the military. You know, she was in uh, job fields that were uh, where she was surrounded by men. Hmm. Uh, just a bunch of things that she okay. didn't have a problem. Right. So uh, regarding there's regarding there's a, million, there's a million things. Okay. Regarding showing the body and all these kinds of stuff. Coconuts, and I mean this no disrespect to her because I don't know anything about her, but just to, to what you say, is your girlfriend a thought? Who? Your girlfriend. Wait, what? Your girlfriend? Which one? Which one? <laughs> the one that you're like seriously involved with? Daisy? Fitness Daisy. Wow. Oh, Daisy? She's cool. Yeah, she's your girlfriend. Is she a thought? Is actually a girlfriend. Are they? I mean, I wouldn't doubt that he's going to downplay it because he thinks that that's uh, a cool thing to do. I have no idea who this fucking person is, though, so I don't care. Who said that? I'm, I, I'm asking you a question. That's what I'm saying. You don't know, you don't know anything. Bro, you... Well, I'm showing pictures. Can you guys see the feed? She, she's showing... And she's in bikinis. She's she's surrounded... She does, like... Why, is, why does Ethan assume that that's, like, his partner? I wonder. And stuff where she's surrounded by... You guys know about the, the like, uh, pageant business with, like, the guys in the back and stuff. So she's doing all that. Here's a picture of her ass um, at the <laughs> okay. gym. She's wearing really tight Incredible. yoga pants. Uh, really sure. suggestive. Is she a thought? Is this a problem? She can do whatever she wants to do. Oh, okay. That's nice. Oh, Ethan, uh, let me... I I understand what Ethan's like doing. He's, uh, I guess, the Skrulls is my, uh, whatever, the fucking, the Gremlins. Um, I don't fucking remember his name. God damn it. Fresh. Yeah. Fresh is girlfriend. And he's like, oh, is your girlfriend a thought? Like, I get it. I just don't, um, I don't understand the, 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 the productive nature of the conversation. Because even if they're dating, um, you know, we're talking about a sphere of incredibly disrespectful men that only value women's body, so they wouldn't care about that. I don't think I just don't I don't see how that's like productive in the conversation about. I don't I don't really get the point. Yeah, you might, no, you might not. Well, here's the thing: he doesn't get it. Oh. Um, Ethan, we see multiple women at the same time. We're, we're not. Monogamous. Yeah, I don't believe you. You guys both have girlfriends, and you love them, and I think that's special. Uh, why doesn't Ethan believe? I mean, they have a lot of money. I don't know why he would not expect them to be able to have multiple girls, especially since that this woman who's apparently some kind of a model is probably only with um, fresh because it gives her the ability to consistently advertise herself to his audience. So, but okay. Bro, and, I, and I don't know why you guys have to back yourself. You're research, bro. Ethan, you, you really bro, did a bad it. job here, man. Bro, you don't know that at all. God Myron, damn. I just have to say, don't you think it's a little... Well, go ahead and play... Let me play you this clip, and then, Coconuts, you say that it's totally fine, but here is uh, a clip of you talking about it. Well, if you're in a serious, committed relationship with a guy, and you have, you know, sexy photos of yourself on the internet, you know, Instagram is just one medium that you can do it. Yeah, it is cheating. She's posting pictures like that? Bro, it's a wrap, man, for you. It's a wrap. So I don't when like you post that. Pictures, it's not sexualizing okay, okay. Yeah. When you post pictures of yourself so, on the okay. internet, Ethan, that are Ethan, we'll your... I guess the point is, is that this girl's cheating on Myron, I guess. It is sexualizing yourself. Know, exactly. it's not and it's not traditional. It's okay. it's not no, only fans, whatever, even if you're not a hoe. Myron, look at the titties out. Okay. The titties out on that top left. Go, scroll up a little bit, Chris. Look at this. This is haram. Thank you so much for the 50 sec. I don't really know what that is. I think uh, I don't know what currency that is, but it's incredible stuff. I appreciate that, brother. Uh, from Brave Man. Hope we get to see Destiny in a bait on H3 soon. A few voices over reason on YouTube. but recently discovered you and glad I did. Keep up the work. I appreciate that. Yeah, that would be interesting. I wonder. Uh, I know that Ethan's still maintaining um some kind of relationship with Hassan so I don't know if that would happen anytime soon even though Hassan you know did disrespect Ethan and him allowing his audience to destroy Ethan um, and not defend him <clears throat> but I just let, like unregulating his discord and whatnot but yeah uh, that would be cool That's your it would be some great content to goon to you called her a hoe you called her, her, yeah, you called her a hoe or show yeah and I said Sorry. again and I'm really glad that you brought this up. I knew you were going to bring this up. Thank I knew you were going to bring this up. And I'm really, I'm really, see, you're, you're very predictable, my friend. Bro, just talk. You can't. Right, I just got to, I got to check every once in a while. You know, because I'm a huge TikToker now. <laughs> So, no, 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 because dude, because we go cook you, man. This is this is why you've been, right. this is why you've been ducking us for Get years. On with it, dude. Come on. In the first clip, when I said you're in a long-term committed relationship, right. they just will occasionally like uh, pull the video out of the creator program, and I gotta like respond to it and like put in an appeal ticket. It's like, it's a little weird, right? Mm -hmm. And having <laughs> photos of yourself like that, it is cheating. Well, guess what? 
since she's been my girl. Guess what's on her profile? It's hidden. It's private. She doesn't have those pictures up. So okay? you're saying things that happened in the past deleted. don't matter. She deleted, she deleted thousands of people that used to follow her. So, right? so things in the past. Beforehand. So if she's if she's things happened in the past and she's moved on and then that stuff doesn't matter anymore. Well, it's not about that. It's about how does she you doubt Destiny would engage with Adrian at this point? Why? Why wouldn't he engage with him? Destiny would engage, engage just like with anybody. What do you mean? She acquiesced to you. Zach is Swedish. Oh, okay, cool. Does she get into your frame once you get with her? Okay, so but with the thing with Fresh, because you reached there, that's not as well. Well, Fresh said, uh, like play the girl. sound, Zach. What was it? She's posting pictures like that, bro. It's then, a wrap, man, for you. It's you said rap. it's a wrap. Oh, not a no, it's not. No, it's, it's not. Rap, not. Can I explode me, right, bro? It's, it's a wrap. Like, bro. It's a wrap. This is like, this is literally why I say you're not uh, prepared because obviously you don't want her channel. You don't know how we move. And it's funny because we <sighs> get pussy, bro. You don't. It's, uh, it's unfortunate because it's kind of, it kind of is a little bit true. I feel like they could have been a little bit better versed. Like, I would have dug up the clip of like Myron telling that woman that, you know, it's her fault for being assaulted or, you know, gone into the conversation about him. Maybe he will later, but him being gay and like hugging on guys and <laughs> saying pussy is gross and all these other different, you know, and, and again, it's, you know, uh, part of this problem seems to be Ethan's researcher. I don't remember who it is. Um, that individual seems to be relatively ineffective so far, but hey, you know, we still got plenty of time. So maybe there's lots more that we'll see. I don't know. But <laughs> it's like, bro, like, what are you trying to say here, bro? You know, maybe if they talk to Abin and preach, <laughs> <laughs> they'd be able to get some decent research ideas but you know yeah i mean, I, mean like, I am uh, you're just congratulating me on being married my, uh walter what the heck bro so, so uh, no like hold on pick a lane am i do you get pussy and i'm mad about it or are you happy i'm pick a lane what the hell i hate pickles i don't hate them they're just not my favorite married. you're trying to put us expose us we don't know how we move i said come back to you because that's what you can do with one girl it's fine my uh, our coconuts um do you usually take your um side girls to i mean to be to be fair if ethan decided he wanted to date again it wouldn't be hard for him to get women i mean he's a rich famous youtuber their women would throw themselves at him. Like it's not exactly hard for him to do. Like it's not difficult. Like women, you it's women would throw themselves at me. It's surprising. Like when I like as a successful YouTuber, like TikToker mostly. That's it. Like it's not. It's like women are dumb, right? I'm just kidding. But like people are attracted to like famous people, and especially people with a lot of money. Um, it's not like super hard. For Ethan to the, like be able to get a girl, <laughs> like even the, the, with his looks, I guess he's not a bad looking guy. So just to be clear, like it's a very immature thing to be like, oh, we get lots of pussy. It's like okay, like you have money and status, and it's mostly pussy from girls who want to be on your podcast so that they can promote their OnlyFans. Like it's not particularly fa valuable or crazy. I don't really um, <clears throat> like it. Doesn't really matter. It's not really that hard to get women. <laughs> it's, not, it's not. It's not the hardest thing in the world. Like. To uh, meet your mom and buy her presents for her birthday. She bought her really a wonderful mother's gift. Uh -oh. Seems serious. Ethan, this is your Who, by the way, more power to her. She seems successful, Ethan. and God bless her for getting out there and shaking her body, or showing her body. And I think that um, I think women. I think it's fantastic that women feel empowered. I think it sucks <laughs> that you guys wrap yourselves into pretzels and it just. And then now, now that you. Oh, okay. You guys have actually God, entered relationships, which hasn't happened until recently. You have to like, you're getting called out by your own fans. You're having to justify. You just love the girl and you want to be in a, in a relationship. And in the real world, isn't black and white like you guys try to. I mean, is that real? They in like a loving relationship? I have no fucking idea. Imagine it is. And oh, well, uh, but now you guys are kind of like uh, caught in your own web. You no, just love your girls. I love. You know what I mean? Love is love, dude. You guys just give in. It's a wrap. This is why it's funny. You know why? I see the vlogs every single day. So what? Multiple, multiple girls in my videos, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. I stopped doing it because you used to have vlogs. People were acting weird with the girls in their family. So stop posting that. Doesn't mean it stopped. It just means I moved differently. Now, granted, you're gonna say, "Oh, bro, this girl's your girlfriend." Ooh, well, then, I don't believe you guys are have multiple partners. I don't believe well, it. You're gonna know. You're not here in Miami. You don't see. I don't know. I just why? I don't really understand that. Like, I don't really understand why you don't think women would like OnlyFans girls, like young nineteen-year-old drunk girls, would want to date these guys. It's like, like literally, the again, these women, like, dude, I swear to God, I forget the specifics. It was another scummy thing Myron did. This is see, this is why you would talk to Ab and preach about this stuff because they have a. I'm pretty sure there was an instance where he asked a girl to come on and the girl was, like, was explicit about how he didn't want to sleep with him. So she, he decided not to let her on, which by the way is definitely disgusting behavior to leverage your, like to be like, Oh, I'll only let you on if you have sex with me. Like that is literally an abuse of a power dynamic. Like again, you should have talked to Evan preach about this brainstormed a little bit with people who, who are consistently criticizing it, uh, fresh and fit. <clears throat> That's what a lot of these girls are doing because they're like, oh, yeah, I'll have sex with you to promote to be on the show. Just their existence on the show is bringing them like thousands of dollars from Myron's audience to their OnlyFans. Like that's the point of the show. It's for men to sit there and berate women saying that they're the problem and then jerking off to them because that's what they really want.
So, like, I don't understand why you don't think that they would be able to have sex. I mean, they're like they're engaging in Harvey Weinstein esque behavior. I don't understand. <laughs> like, yeah. Just as I just am telling you, we all so, fucking have girlfriends. Cringe. So dude, Gay. Uh, These two no. dudes have girlfriends. Gay. Try. Exposed. Try. You guys are so exposed right now. Ethan. Girlfriends. Ethan. What do you, what do you mean, mean exposed? I do a weekly show with my girl and I say she's my girl on my show. What are you talking about? Well, what Myron's the one cool? dodging, but you say you have multiple girlfriends. That's a lie. Everyone knows, everyone knows that my girl is Angelica. We do so she's not a hoe. You called her a hoe, but she's no longer a hoe. We true crime show together. So also, she's not a hoe. She was a just rotting my fucking brain. A hoe, but she's not a hoe anymore. I love the fact also, because if you're going to play that clip, I also said, and they're like, oh, well, we don't know. This is what this is one of the profiles where you got to get to know the girl. Exactly. I said that too. You made sure to not show that part, didn't you? I'll open it. No, it's there. I'll, I'll watch it again. So, so, yeah, you don't watch anything, which is why you are very ill informed. But let me go ahead and just like that. I mean, here it is. I've well, watched the whole thing. You guys can watch it again. I mean, again. You know, sexy photos. There's a lot of information. I'm hearing a lot of information right now. Of herself on the internet, you know, Instagram is just one medium that you can do it. Yeah, like, she, she's posting pictures like that, bro. We, it's a wrap, man, for you. It's a wrap. So I don't when like you post that. pictures, it's okay, okay. okay. Yeah, when you post pictures of yourself right. on the internet, that are scantily clad for the purpose of getting andor attention, yeah, so what what is sexualizing yourself. What what is the and it's not traditional. It's okay. not. I wonder if there could be a point here because I uh, listen. I don't know. I don't really care about Myron's potential relationship with this girl. I don't think it really exposes anything, but I don't really know. Because and listen, I don't really, I don't like, I don't dislike Ethan. I, I like, I like liking this guy. You know, I like, I want to like him. Right? I say that all the time. Okay. But I don't think that he has the credibility to just make a claim with something and like a, a narrative without like a, a lot of proof. Because clearly, especially in this conversation, you're seeing plenty of times where he just doesn't really know what the fuck he's talking about. So, you know, I so you would you need to you need to be a little bit more locked and loaded when you talk about this shit. Uh, Even if you're not a hoe, Myron, look at the titties, out. Out. The titties, out. The titties out on that top left. Scroll up a little bit, Chris. Look at this. This is haram. Oh yeah, yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Streets. Yeah, streets. She's for the streets. Clips out of context is what you do when you try to run with a narrative. Out of context. What the fuck do you need? As I told you before. Okay, so so. After you called her a hoe and said you're for the streets, you said psych? No, no, no. What I'm telling you is I was like, oh, well. Okay. <laughs> with this profile, you got to get to kind of get to know the girl, right? Mm. So here's what I want to say. Because you're trying to run with this narrative of like blah, 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 right? Blah, blah, blah. No, refresh the situation, right? Because you, you brought up the, the Asian girl. Fresh used to literally vlog a girl on his other channel every day, but he had to stop that shit because people started getting weird and sending girls weird messages, etc. Yeah. So he's with different. Oh, well, yeah, but that's. Okay. Going sure. in every day. That's not one of his main no, goals. No, he's not. Okay. I just need to take a quick piss break. One concept to you because you're, yes, bro, many girls have met his mom if I'm going to break the fucking bubble to you. I'm sure that's true. Walter, you. Uh, why are so many girls meeting his mom? That's like weird to me. If you're just casually dating them, why do they meet your mom? That's bizarre. Bizarre. Why did I say that? Bizarre. Walter, you do not strike me as a dude who brings girls around your mama easily. Look, many girls have met his mom. That's number one. Is that right, Walter? Hold on. That's yes. a funny thing. Walter, how many girls meeting your mom? Damn. Many girls have met mom. Okay. So that's Why? That is weird, though. Why are a bunch of girls meeting your mom if they're just. What the fuck? I mean, your mom, Walter. Respect, Walter doesn't want to answer. respect your mama's time, man. He exposed this though. He yeah. Like, guys, go to his mom, bro. So nice try. So, so wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. This is good. Why is it an exposed, Walter? Because I don't want to be like that. <laughs> He's a fed though. Give him, give him some bread. I'm trying to use yeah. that to support your claim that that's his main girl. I'm trying to tell you, all girls meet his mom. The game needs to be sold, not told. You're just Why do all girls meet his mom? That's fucking weird. I don't understand. What, what the fuck is happening? Hey, Ethan, you understand that. Give him a game. Keep selling dreams to these girls, bro. It is what it is. <laughs> Wait, what did he say, Walter? He's selling dreams to them. Is he saying he's lying to them? Being like, oh, meet my mom. So they feel like he, they have a chance with them and then for dropping them. That just seems like scummy behavior. I don't know if I believe that, though. The game is to be sold, not told, my friend. Yeah. So, so to be sold, not, not told. <laughs> but isn't your whole show telling this, the game? Isn't that what your whole fucking show is? What do you mean? Uh, to you. Oh, you to me. Because I'm out. Because I'm married with kids. Lame. Yeah. Like, I'm a loser married with kids. But, successful. Again, but, but you can't put that on me because I don't do that right now. Yeah, I mean, if we want to talk about girls, why is your girlfriend going to the gym right now? My wife. My wife going to the gym. Yeah, why is she going ahead and starting to work out? Now? What my... What's wrong with that? I probably to get healthy. My wife and I have been going to the gym and working out because we want to be healthier and live longer. Why would your significant other want to be healthy? <laughs> oh, now she wants to be healthy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> whoa. Every girl that. <laughs> I understand what Myron's trying to say. <clears throat> He's trying to say, like, oh, she's working out to, um, to get away from you in some capacity, Ethan. But uh, maybe. I doubt it. But I mean, like my wife and I have been working out to get healthier. You know, I, I, <laughs> I think that like one person in a relationship does experience like a big, like a dramatic, like um, fitness shift. There might be a chance that the relationship could end. But I think that's only if one person doesn't, the other person doesn't. Like they're just going at a different pace. I don't, under, I don't really understand. I think it's just like a health thing. It's probably a new hobby thing too. It can be very fun and intoxicating to start to work out and get into like get into shape and to be fit. Goes to the gym yeah, is gonna cheat. Because you want to, because you want to bring my. Don't, chicken. Wait, your girlfriend's you're constantly at the gym. Both of y'all girlfriends are at the gym. It's what? 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 Their argument is that this is a new behavior for her, right? So, Walter, your girlfriend works out all the time. Who? Uh, no, dude, you guys, are, you guys are like a comedy duo. No, no, you guys are like who's on third? Who? She girlfriend? What? I don't know where. She got myself a water. When? I just told you. My my wife is due in uh 
my wife who's working out to cheat on me is actually due to have a baby in less than a month. Oh, yeah. Third. What happens if the baby's wacky? Then what are you going to do? Third baby, by the way. Third baby. <laughs> a boy. Three right. boys. Can I get a big ups for my sperm? Telltale signs. Uh, a woman leaving a man and she starts going to the gym. It's actually it's very well documented. I'm okay. just telling you some pictures like that. Let me right. Go ahead and have a. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, listen, I mean, first of all, I would want to see the documentation of this. Um, Okay. Research shows a link between gym and cheating. Okay, so just to be clear, um, this this uh, this is one of the problems that I have with with Myron. There's probably some truth, okay, to people going to the gym and their partner not going to the gym and cheating. But it's not just women; it's men too. Like, <laughs> it's so it's interesting that he he specifically talk. This is again, it's like oh, specifically talking about women. Like, oh, women. Do, this is a general behavior. Um, that's it. But if you're both on the same page, which it seems like they're both trying to go through some kind of a health kick, then like whatever. Who cares? I don't. And for you, <laughs> I was just saying, you guys pictures of yourself in the gym and stuff like that, man. You might want to watch out. And here's the other thing too, because you want to mention with Angie, it's having um, kid, three remember, kids, a telltale sign of leaving a man. She everything up. Hold on, then we let you talk, bro. Yeah. So again, oh, okay. Once she got with me, she switched everything up, and I'm in an open relationship. I do no, what I want. She's monogamous with me. No, I'm open on my end. She's closed on her end. Okay. That's a that's lie. Cool. How's that? How's that a lie? Because I know you guys are cute and you love your girlfriends. She packs my condoms. You guys, it's just part of your business. She packs his condom. That's just weird, but okay. Whatever. Do your thing. <laughs> nice try, Ethan. Again, Al. Well, yeah, that's what you say. You guys have a nice... I don't really understand the desire for Myron to have sex because he's even admitted that he doesn't have good sex. I don't really get it. Like, why just have a bunch of sex with women when you, like, don't satisfy them or make them come? Like, I really don't get it. Like, I, it's just... I don't get it. What's the bragging right there if you're just hanging out with these girls and not doing anything that would make them satisfied? rehearsing to sell it to your audience but you Bro, love your girlfriend i love that for you guys if you're not aware <laughs> give it up love 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 you guys you guys have this wonderful two wonderful ladies and you want to treat them right and i think that's great and it's, a it's a wrap Listen, you're trying so hard if you're not aware we travel a lot we're here in miami we do double dates all the time walter you've had sex with 1,000 women you claim maybe could be more, maybe <laughs> more. <laughs> the point is though ethan you don't know how we operate you just assume because that's all you do you assume. haven't had so you, you've had sex with a thousand women and then myron you've had sex with was it like 450 or something about that you had the exact yeah. number like four, yeah, four. it's like four, four something. It's like you almost count. No, you have the exact number of women you slept with, but not how many Jews died in the Holocaust. Ugh. I don't know. Each one? That's creepy. How's that creepy? Do you have like a kill list? Like, what are you doing? You you thought you you catalog every woman you have sex with? You know that's interesting because your partner Hassan sat down right next to a girl that cataloged the dick size, the amount of guys, the names. What does that do with me? What's other shit? Well, you partnered with him and did a podcast together, bro. I don't know anything about that girl. Don't I don't give a fuck. And you want to Yeah, yeah you know what? It's weird what she did. That's weird. Uh, we no. partnered with that guy, right? No. Well, he didn't do it. She did. Oh, if he did it, it'd be weird. If he did it, if she did it, it'd be weird. If fucking uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln did it, it'd be weird. If oh, you know what I mean, if Myron Gaines catalogs 447, I mean, how long is that list? You got like a whole fucking Torah scroll of girls you fuck. That's crazy. Man, you right. whip I'm it out like a cartoon character and let it roll exactly across the floor. Like that other girl, and your partner was totally cool with that. <laughs> By the way, he's even more critical of Israel than me, and you don't call him anti Semitic, do you? Well, it's, yeah, he's. That's your friend. Yeah, he, fact, that's why I don't do the podcast no more, because he was critical of you being a super Zionist. It might surprise you to know, but being against Israel doesn't make you anti Semitic. Okay. Really? When did I mention Israel? I didn't even mention Israel. Well, I mean, Hassan specifically um, has said that he is not going to be charitable to Israel in any capacity at all, like whatsoever. Uh, what his bullshit excuse was, he doesn't, I don't know, he doesn't want to fucking, his audience is too like left leaning or something. I forget the specifics. It was like dumb. He doesn't have, like, he, Hassan is probably, I don't know, if, I don't know if it comes from being anti Semitic or anti West, uh, but he does not have a charitable take. And you can tell that by the way that um, you can tell by the way that he treated Ethan when Ethan was getting dumpstered because of his like really basic take that like Israel has the right to exist, but they do bad things and it should stop. And Hassan just let people dogpile uh, Ethan. Israel. Thank you so much for the five dollars, Jack Exposito. Esposito. Hey, oh, Papa, this is my 11th time catching the stream. I'm at work completing an online training. After work, I'm going to mass and then to go to gym. Very good. Very good, brother. You think you said the same thing yesterday, my man. So it's good that you have a nice routine. Work, mass, gym. Incredible stuff. When I was accusing you. Oh, yeah, I know. Because if you did mention Israel, you would know that that's what I'm critical of. Not Jewish people. The nation of Israel is what I'm critical of. I mean, you're watching like legitimate what's, like documentaries. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're fucking watching. Apparently, you watched this eight-hour Europa that was like a complete retelling of history uh, in the way of like Jews bad. Hey, what's up, Willie Mac? How you doing, brother? Hey, oh, Papa Legend. Papa Legend. Talk about Fresh and Fit, my favorite little count. Yeah, right. Which one? Me or Fresh and Fit? Or Ethan? Oh, damn. I guess they are a little lol cowie, <clears throat> but uh, I guess they're very well received by their audience. So I guess God bless them. So now, so Hassan is an anti-Semitic? Cool. Neither am I. And he says way more stuff than I do about that conflict. What has he said about the movie Europa? 
What? Did you watch it? Oh, You're so funny. Uh, I mean, listen, good? I haven't read Mein Kampf, but I know it's not good. It's a wrap. Well, Have mean, you I read Mein Kampf? How do you know wrap. it's bad? Have I read Mein Kampf? Yeah. No, I haven't read it. Is Mein Kampf bad book? Is Wait, it? Well, I mean, I don't know. No, he's just gonna say no. He doesn't know. He hasn't read it. You tell us. Have you read this? You should read it. Oh yeah, I mean, it's about Hitler. It's about Hitler's dreams of basically uh, uh, world domination and that Jews are the root of all the world's problems. It's a, pre it's a prelude to the Holocaust. Did you read it? What do you, yeah, what do you think about no, it? No, I you... literally started this conversation by saying I haven't read it, Walter. What do you think about it? <laughs> so then, what, okay. How you doing, Willie? Uh, Willard and Mackle. How you doing, brother? What are you talking about? It? Okay. Oh, shit. Thank you so much for the 15-month uh, small gut from Mandy G. I appreciate that. <laughs> what the fuck? You oh, the, you're like a goldfish, bro. How are you a podcaster? No, I've been meaning to ask you this. Coconuts. Of all the professions in the world, the fact that you're actually a podcaster blows my fucking mind. All I'm going to say is if you're going to call me anti-Semitic for being critical of Israel, then you got to call your friend. I didn't Walter. criticize you for being saying one thing about Israel, man. You're conflating you being a neo-Nazi with being a critic of Israel, and it's uh, stupid. Well, that's what I'm critical of is Israel, so clearly I'm not anti-Semitic. They deleted in private their stream of this so many times uh, after the debate. Uh, yeah, I, I, that might be because they're afraid of it, but they left it on Rumble. So um, it might be because they want, they probably felt like they said something fucking crazy on their podcast. Especially since I'm sure that they said something before and specifically after. And my understanding was that Sneeko was there. Um, and Sneeko is also a fucking, uh, you know, uh, Sneeko is another idiot that says wild shit like Nick Fuentes. So because it's still on there, it's still here. It's still on here if you ever wanted to watch their full thing. There's probably, oh, no, oh incredible. There's probably something on there that they felt was like too risque. So, I think by your logic. Thanks. <laughs> God, you are really dense. I'm not dense at all. I'm just saying, like, <clears throat> I don't even know. Okay, okay. you got me. You got me, buddy. So, okay, right, okay so, so just because my girl packs my condom, so we're in an open relationship. I know you're saying, like, that's a, yeah, like, I don't believe that. Yeah, believe that. Yeah, I don't believe that. I mean, what, what you want me to send you sex videos or something? What do you want? <laughs> Absolutely. What does she pack them with? Or what does she put in, her con in your condoms? You're not. Like, well, what do you need? What, like, bro, what do you need? Are you filming those? Strange. Why do you like, care what we do with girls? Bro? Like, yeah, that's a little weird, man. That's like, your whole shtick. What do you mean? Why? You don't believe us? You're married, bro? I do not believe you guys. Absolutely not. I do not believe us, not particularly. What do you not believe us? Us. You guys are in a loving relationship with your wonderful girlfriends, you think we're both and you're monogamous. And also, you, Walter, you've slept with probably 15 women, and Myron, eight. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> the fucking audio is killing me. Okay, so you don't believe your body counts either. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm weird. That's your comment. Applying to a man about my body count. That's yeah. weird, bro. So you think I got an eight body count, and you think Fresh has a 15 body count? Yes. You think we're okay. Keep it that way, bro. Cool. Fantastic. What do you think, bro? That's that's awesome. Six, six million. What do you think, bro? <laughs> what do you think? Sneak goes freshly for 24. Leave him alone. Yeah, you're right. Nice. Bring it back to the Holocaust. That's Bring it said. back to Holocaust denial. That's what's up. That, that's what you said. Let's yeah. not forget about that part of the wait, interview. Wait, wait. What? Cool. Fantastic. What do you think, bro? That's that's awesome. Six, six million. What do you think, bro? What do you think? Nice. Bring it back to the Holocaust. Oh, they said six million. Okay. That's Bring it said. back to Holocaust denial. That's what's up. That, that's what you said. Let's yeah. not forget about that part of the wait, interview. Wait, 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 I, I thought you wanted to debate like you know uh, masculinity and dating. Well, me, okay, I'll ask you a question in that realm. Why? Why do you? Why is it important how many women you've had sex with? Yeah, that's a decent question. Why does it really matter? You know, I mean, it's good to well, you don't have to have sex with them, but. It's good to uh, date around, I think, figure out who you are compatible with sexually. So I don't think it's a bad thing to have a few bodies as long as you're safe sexually. Uh, you don't get any STDs, you know, wear a condom and whatnot. Um, but it's not really important to have sex with, you know, a thousand women. It's just weird at that point, especially if you don't enjoy making them come. I don't really understand the point of fucking a girl and not making her orgasm. You know, I'm not saying that I've always made a girl come, especially when I first started sleeping around. But uh, isn't I mean, I imagine the goal is to both have a mutually satisfactory <laughs> scenario, no? I never said that was important. You've you've said your body count. You said you've slept with a thousand. Podcast. So it's not important how many women men have slept with? Not really, no. We didn't, well, I would say you don't need experience. You need experience, but like, I mean. Sure, and I would say over a certain point, you're pretty much just kind of destroying your ability to engage in intimacy, whether it's a guy or a girl having too much sex. I don't think it's a good thing. It's like oversaturate yourself, so. I mean, after a certain number, it just becomes novelty at that point. So it's like, no, I mean, it's not. So why do you count? I'm just curious, why do you count each one? I mean, Myron, I believe, has specifically said you have to have sex with at least 50 women um, before you should get in a relationship or something like absolutely fucking stupid like that. I just, I just count. I mean, I'm just one of those kind. Of, I, I kind of document everything in my life. That's mm -hmm. just how. It that sounds like an obsessive, compulsive busy, uh, behavior. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. And Walter, do you count? No. It's too many to count in Walter's case. That's going to be fucking every every day, multiple what? times. That's my boy. Uh, he barely has time to do the podcast. He's just fucking on the way to work. He told me it's eight. You know why it's important to document yeah. things, Ethan? I'm doing I document jokes. everything so that when people make allegations, try to say you sexually assaulted a girl, you're prepared. And you're able to do a six-hour podcast with all the evidence proving that you're innocent and you didn't do shit. <sighs> accusations like that can tell me shit. So I do document everything for that very reason. Great. Fantastic. Yep. Um, well, um, let's see. Coconuts, you are, you are um, religious, right? Who said that? Oh my god, what's the point of this conversation, man? I'm pretty sure they're both like pretend to be Muslim um, as a way to like appeal to their audience 
and also to flex criticism, even though they obviously don't respect any religion that they pretend to belong to. Do you want to end the conversation? Well, Ethan, uh, while well, you're on your decline, I just think you should research Got probably what you assume, you know? No, you, you didn't research much, man, bro. You, well, oh, okay. yeah, you did like, you, know, you got five people that did your research for you, bro. Terrible team, bro. God damn. That part is, is somewhat reasonable. <laughs> they, your, your team is a little bit rough there. May I accuse you guys of being bad faith? Sure. Oh. How are we bad faith? Go ahead. Well, we can start by not answering any fucking question I ask. Oh, you yeah, answer every question I have with like, what do you think? That's like cowardly, what? lame oh. combo. You guys suck. Myron, are you religious? No. Oh, sorry, not Myron. Walter, are you religious? What do you think? You look so silly. You know why I say that, uh, Ethan? Because if you did research, you would know what the answer is. I uh, know what the answer is, dude, but, but that's part of having a conversation, man. It is interesting, because like, it's good to have yourself covered, but if you find it necessary to keep all of receipts because you're afraid of a false rape accusation, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that suggests to me that you might be engaged in some dubious activity. Like, for instance, dating drunk women when you don't dr drink and then taking advantage of them when they are drinking. That's probably something that you would do. <laughs> so... No, no, no. Tell the audience what I am. Let's see how your um, assistants did. Uh, yeah. Let's see how they did. Tell what, what is he and what are you right or wrong? Go ahead. Well, I see you're wearing a cross. Okay. I believe you come from a religious family, correct? Okay. I believe that you're, you have an ex a family member, a grandpa or someone like that who's a pastor. No. I believe you might have been studying to be. Yeah, there's a Discord that is in the description. You guys can join. And then if you link your YouTube to the Discord, you can talk on it. I'm a pastor at some point. Yes. Okay. And I believe that I'm not 100% sure what your current status is with religion. And hence the question, my friend. Okay. Well, the answer is no. Okay. Very good. How fun was that? You're just your thrill and a joy. It was great. You're still monotone. Thank you. You did. Hey, you did answer the question. So you're not religious. You, 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 you can't get mad at us because you've been a little ill-researched. So we kind of see, want to see how accurate you would be with that one. I mean, you guys say that, but I'm pretty spot on here. I wouldn't say you're spot on, man. Like you, you've got things way out of context, way off. Okay. I think once um, they started having the conversation, what the fuck? What the hell is this? Once they started having the um, conversation about. Like that girl before, I think that's where Ethan like kind of lost this like optically for the most part, especially to Fresh and Fit's audience. You know, you're literally our body counts are eight and fifteen, man. You're not spot on at that's, all. Yeah, that's just a joke. I, you know what I mean? I'm just goofing on you guys. And then you also said that we're monogamous relationships and we're loving relationships with our girlfriends. Like, like what? We got exposed. And then you went ahead and said that I'm exposed. I mean, <laughs> that was like kind of funny. Oh, and then you said that we were in loving relationships. Like, ah, uh, gay. It's like, oh, okay. Girlfriend, when I have a weekly show where I call her my girlfriend on my true crime chat, <laughs> we literally play Overwatch together and stream it. What are you? That's actually is gay. What the fuck? Overwatch? What the hell? Talking about, dude. Like everyone knows I gotta go. Like Maybe I'll pay to play some more games. I gotta get my computer set up downstairs. I have a new computer. I had it like I got it like at the beginning of the week and I just haven't set it up <laughs> yet. Never hit that. <laughs> you know how I know it was bad? Wikipedia is a source. Yo, yeah, we can, we can be, <laughs> well, well, you guys have seen the movie. What's a better source than asking? I mean you guys are okay, I don't care. You guys. No, I mean, dude, I would hope you would have done better research than that. God damn, Ethan. You've well, seen the movie. Uh, tell me what it's about. I'm prepared. What, what what else do you want to talk about? What is Europa about? Is it just gonna go? Uh, I don't know, dude. I feel like it's. Just, I don't. We, do we need to go in like this circular conversation right now, bro? Wow. Well, who can say? I spent eight hours watching this film and I can't remember anything about it. Yeah, that pales in comparison to other documentaries that I've watched on World War II. I watch everything, dude. That's a special one, though. Come on, that's one of the special ones that you got. You can't find it on Netflix. You know what I mean? Okay, so so I'm evil, or like I'm a bad guy for looking at alternative history and looking to see something that isn't necessary. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I wonder if they. <laughs> that's fucked up. Uh, I wonder if they ran into two meds ghosts on Overwatch. Yeah, I wonder. So the mainstream media, I think that's important to look at all things. Again, like what you're claiming. So yeah, that's why Overwatch is so dead because fucking Myron plays it. But you're anti-Semitic. I bring Nick Fuentes on. I bring Dave Rubin on. I bring Dave Lola Rubin on. is not King of the Jews. Dick not Just to be clear, <clears throat> bringing people with different perspectives on your podcast is a great thing to do. But they're, we're not talking about, hey, let me bring a conservative like Ben Shapiro on. You're talking about bringing like a legitimate anti-Semitic racist piece of shit like white supremacist kkk neo-nazi member nick fuentes he shouldn't be platformed in by anybody uh, that's not me saying he should be banned off of anything i'm just saying like you, you should morally not be platforming somebody like that that goes beyond just like a guy just that goes beyond like platforming positions like that's a, a very like it's a guy's a piece of shit like it's not that's wildly different not the Nick Fuentes <laughs> is a neo-Nazi. Look, look, the point is, is that I'm okay with having conversations with people that have different views that I that I do. And, I'm and there's no problem with doing that, but you don't give any, I, I know that you don't give any pushback against any of the shit that he says, because you literally are sitting there like being racist with him and having fun doing it. I've seen it before. Okay with having people from different walks of life come on this podcast and talk. What, like, other, uh, what other World War II documentaries would you consider based? Uh, there's a couple, man, that are pretty good. Can I you mean, name them? Sure. I, I like Numek, right? I think that's a good one. Numek? Uh, yeah. Based. By, 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 yeah, pretty based. Talks okay. about you know how JF, John F. Kennedy was killed. Oh, that's another. Check that out. Wait, what's the? Can you read? Is it okay if I read the synopsis of that one? I don't know if that has a synopsis. I don't know if that one has a synopsis, man. But it's very historic. Oh, so, you're, you're, so wait, where are you finding this shit? Nobody's ever wrote a description of it. That's what you're saying. It's never been it's described in the, in the human it. history. You're not going to find it. It's on Rumble. 
Oh. Oh, okay. So it sounds like he likes conspiracy esque of like uh, material. Okay. Yeah, but it's all historically accurate. Extremely historically accurate. What's it about? Well, it covers a bunch of things. It covers how you know the nuclear bomb was flown from the United States. It talks about how organized crime uh, was involved. Where was the nuclear bomb flown to? It was stolen from the United States and moved to Stolen by who, Myron? Israel. Why didn't you just say that from the beginning? I literally. Why is he consistently engaging in like um like anti Jew documentaries? Oh, I wonder why. They just told you. you well, like, well, I had to press it out of you. I, why did I have to press that detail I out of you? The documentary, and then you were interrupting me as I was trying to tell you what okay, it was. So let's keep going. So it's about how Israel stole a nuclear bomb from America. Yep. Go on. Which is, by the way. Go on. It's a fact. Okay, okay, go on. What else is it about? Anything else, bro? This game born. Yeah. <sighs> what do we do, Coco? What do we do? Well, decline. I mean, at this point, I don't. This is your debate. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's no, a historical you guys are just You guys are being very subservient to me right now. I like that. We're not being subservient to you. We're just letting you know that, like, you hey, laid, you got your, you laid down and you're all spread out for me. That's strange. What? So what? I, call, I call this a civil debate, which, you know, on our end, we've been very professional. We've been avoiding ad hominems. You've been taking a lot of ad hominems. You haven't really even debated any of our not ideas. At all. Man, that's more uh, than actually attacking any of our ideas or our viewpoints. You've just been coming at us the whole time, which is cool. I expected that you would do this, which is why we were prepared. Okay, um, so you can't be that disappointed. No, no, no. I mean, I know. Is there anything you want to ask me since uh, this has been very subservient with me and firm control of the interview? As, no, no, uh, no. as the kind of, you know, <laughs> which is which I tend to be in control of, of interactions with people. It's, it's just one of my kind of alpha traits, along with being married, okay. married and having kids and being quite successful, too. I might oh, add. You don't want to have this debate in person when I ask you to do it in person, right? Ooh. What does that matter? Oh, OK. So alpha, but you don't want to have this conversation in person like I wanted to. Who cares? Why? Like, why, why would you have a conversation in person? Like, what's the necessity of that? Who cares? Oh, now it's who cares. <laughs> I think that's a pretty important detail, Ethan. Although, I mean, Ethan's obviously being like a little facetious when he's sitting there being like, oh, I'm an alpha because of this, which is funny. It's fine. That's what they're going to respond with is like more posturing. It's just like back and forth posturing. So why? <clears throat> you know, that sounds pretty subservient that you want to do it on the Internet and not in person. What? Oh, OK. Now it's not so subservient now. Huh? Zoom is, is Zoom is subservient. No, I'm telling you that I wanted to have this conversation in person. and You don't want to do it. OK. Yeah, okay. I prefer Zoom. I do all these kind of interviews on Zoom. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that says a lot. What are you going to beat my ass? What are you saying? I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> why would I be scared? To, why would I, you're applying? I'd be scared if you came to the office, right? I don't know why you don't want to do it. I don't know why. You tell us why you don't want to do it in person. Well, I'll tell you why. Because when sure. I do these types of interviews, like what's the point? I mean, it just sounds like a lot of work for what reason? When you could just do it here. Interviews with people, it's good to have an out for us and you. Sometimes they get contentious. Sometimes they get heated. And when it's on Zoom, we can just hang up and carry on. And same with you guys. I guess that's a fair point too. So that's why I've never had anybody in studio for these types of debates. Okay, well, here's the thing with me. I like to, you know, be able to look a man in his eye when he disagrees with me. We can have a civil conversation, right? And make sure that, you know, stays integrity-based, respectful, etc. Because I'm pretty confident you wouldn't have said half the things you said. I would say oh, everything oh, I said to your face person. every fucking time. And let's set it up in person. I don't want you in my studio. Who cares, man? Why are you so upset? You're so upset. You, you have a six-pack, and so you think that that will intimidate me. Whenever, over the internet, it seems that I have the edge. Personality-wise, uh, control-wise, success-wise, uh, uh, relationship-wise. Family wise. So you're so so you so, bring, so your theory is if you bring the abs Are they just jerking off at this point? They're jerking each other off at this point. I just said to that we studio, then you'll have a one up on me? No, I just said we can have this conversation in person. You don't want to do it. And that's fine. I think that says that signals a lot of things, but that's cool. Okay. I, mean, I am having a baby in two <laughs> weeks. I really don't I'm give a fuck. Out here first class, we can have a conversation in person. I'm not saying that there's gonna be Can any you not express stuff. yourself over video call? No, we absolutely can, but I'm saying you're trying to have this frame of like, oh well I'm the dominant one, blah blah blah. I'm telling you what you didn't want to do. dominate it today, my friend. You didn't dominate It's funny because I know Ethan was just kind of fucking around digging at them and he Myron took this very personally. He's like really going off on this. He's very he's very clearly very upset about uh Ethan questioning his masculinity, even like jokingly. Anything, my friend. Oh, we're, we're oh, all of your points. Yo, but well, we can continue on. Just like I said, you've just uh, been doing ad hominem attacks. You've been reaching, etc. Yeah, no is there it's anything you guys want to ask me today? Uh, I'll, I'll give you the floor. I'll relinquish control uh, briefly for you guys to ask me something. No, no, no. Uh, it's fine. We've asked you a few questions. You said you want to debate on something with uh, with intersectional dynamics and dating. Go ahead. What do you want to ask? Oh, you wanna, I asked. Ask well, I, debate, I, I, you said you wanted to debate masculinity, dating, all this other stuff. None of that was actually covered, which is cool. I anticipated this would happen. No, but, I think we covered it. Oh, he anticipated it, guys. Very good. Do well what we said. We said, what did we say? I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Who gives a fuck? No, no, no. Who gives a fuck? Well, what? we said like dating, culture, men and women. And we said general stuff you guys talk about. This dating and men and women. Ew. This is all stuff you guys talk about. You've had Nick Fuentes on it. Why would you want to date women? Showed you clips of that. How was that taking you out of context? Oh, there was no comment. Of, uh, there was no talk at all about foreign policy with Israel in America, but that's fine. Huh? I mean, we could talk about that. I mean, it's, it's whatever, man. It's cool. Like, yeah, sure. Talk about it. What do you want to ask? Okay, so my, my question is, why does body count matter? You guys said it doesn't, which is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ethan obviously doesn't want to talk about it because he's going to get ripped apart by his audience. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's a contradiction. We agreed, on, we agreed on masculinity, feminism, body, body count, etc. You said body count when it comes to men and sexual partners. We said, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like, that. you should get your experience, but it doesn't matter like that. But men and women aren't the same. You said okay. specifically for men. 
Um, just to be clear, because there's a statistic that constantly goes around about how like women that have higher uh, number of partners tend to be less happy in relationships, right? The what's funny is like men also have this the statistic supports that men with higher body counts tend to be less happy in relationships as well which communicates to me that having too many bodies is probably not particularly good for you um and it has like a negative impact on your ability to maintain a relationship that being said i do think that men and women generally do have like a different experience with sex i think men tend to be able to have um casual sex in a way that's like less emotional than women for sure but I don't think it changes. I don't think that men or women should be engaging in tons of sex. And I've had like a good amount of like sex with people. I don't think it's particularly healthy. Like I was poly and it was like a huge frustrating adjustment to go from like a poly to a monogamous relationship. Um, but it's also been like the happiest I've ever been. So, you know, uh, yeah. Oh, body, right, right, right. Body, yeah. Okay. Body count matters for women. Right. This is one of your guys' great points. Walter, does body count uh, matter for women? Absolutely. Body, body count matters for everybody. And Myron believes that because he told men that they have to have sex with 50 women before considering settling down because he's an idiot. Really? Well, then your mom doesn't... No, I'm just kidding. I won't do that. She's lovely. I was just going to do your mom jokes. Based on actual topics, or are you going to keep making out? Bro, it's clearly over. You want to ask me anything or not? This shit is boring. You guys are so subservient. I'm going to put a little pink cuff. Keep... Oh, my God. This is so stupid, dude. Like, why not engage in the conversation about the... the I mean, I don't want to hear it because it's so far into this. This is legitimately fucking boring. But, like, why not be prepared for that conversation? Again, Ethan, this should have been a slam dunk. If you had some preparation on this, this, this talking point, these talking points, like, you could have fucking dumpstered these guys. But instead, we're sitting here, and, like, when it comes down to, like, that's their main thing. Their main thing is male female dynamics. So, if you were able to say something interesting and intelligent and debunk them, like, you could pull his audience. That should have been the first thing you guys talked about. So like what what why what was the point of the conversation like we had, we talked about Andrew Tate and you know the false accusation you leverage against Fresh and Fit even though they are rape apologists um like what was the point of the conversation like you could probably steamroll him on these dynamics that we were talking about I want to put little fluffy pink handcuffs on you guys and call <laughs> you, you naughty naughty boys love your girlfriends <laughs> you naughty boys love your girlfriends and that is so, so gay that's that's gay to love women apparently. <laughs> That doesn't make yeah, sense no, even. Well, it is what? a joke. I know it's hard to comprehend. All right. So I guess you guys don't, you guys didn't prepare any questions? Oh, we actually, bro. Okay. But uh, apparently you're not versed in the topic, so there's no point. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, the thing is, is that you're hypercritical of what we tell guys on how we advise them to, to move with modern dating. And then we asked that question. You couldn't even really give any type of, you know, solid game plan for guys to move. So I find it interesting how. I'll put one together. All right. I'll go. I'm going to go hit the ground. I mean, you should have probably been ready for this. Uh, I'm going to put together a dating plan. Okay? You know, people like you guys typically tend to be hypercritical of how we tell guys to move. Which we I mean, this is just going to make. Uh, this just affirms uh, Fresh and Fit's audience that what they're talking about is the right thing to do because they're getting zero pushback from Ethan, who is like the counter perspective. I don't understand why. Like that would have been a great thing for him to be prepped on. Save. I don't know if you get this message, but we get thousands of messages from guys saving them from committing suicide, hurting themselves, etc. You're saints. You saved them all. Yeah, we saved them from okay. making really bad decisions with women because guys really do make. I mean, a lot I, of I think if, if there's men that watch this show, if they've learned anything, it's probably how to respect. Uh, and how to have a long-term healthy relationship with a woman that you can call your wife and have a family with. How do you get a wife, Ethan? Bro, what the fuck, man? Do you need By dating OnlyFans girls, right? <laughs> you mean to do the Dr. Seuss listing places again? Yeah, well, yeah, like, I'll write a guide. I'll write a guide. I'll write a guide. Because my thing is, like, you're, you're, like, just, you're talking about the finish line. What about the race? Yeah. yeah. You understand? Like, you have to get All right, are you married? Where you can even identify a female that's... And optically, they're being very smart about the way that they talk because they're, like, they don't actually respect that Ethan's in a relationship. They think it's cringe, but they're they're smart about the way that they're talking because now they're like, oh, no, no, I give you credit for being married, but, like, but do you, what, how about getting there? Like, can you communicate that to people? I, I don't know. Ethan's, like, getting floundering on this point. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> this conversation was such a bad idea for him. It's worthy <clears throat> of marriage, of having a family with, etc. And unfortunately, in today's day and age, it's not that simple anymore. So we live in a very complex world where it's difficult to identify women that are marriage material. And most aren't. Simply, that's just what it is. So you guys are, it's difficult to identify men that are marriage material, too. Like, it's we live in a fucking generation of fatherless children. Like, the people are, like, everybody sucks. <laughs> it's very difficult in general. Like, so. Mm -hmm. All right. I, mean, I, I swear to God, the only reason my marriage is as successful as it is is because my wife is a fucking like behavioral specialist, and she could, <laughs> we can have actual, you know, we have like a better understanding of how like how to have conversations about boundaries because of that. So, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a typical experience. <clears throat> you guys, method is so good. Why aren't you married? Again, because men are the ones that decide if they want to get married. Choice. Whoa. So you have. Oh, what are we gonna force women to marry? Or so, so you choose not to be married. 
Yeah, it's because men are the one. We're the gatekeepers of marriage and commitment. Women are the gatekeepers of sex. Right. Ooh, and um, there's a level of truth to that. I think for the most part, like I, I talk about that too. Like kind of. I don't know if I agree with all of it, but like kind of. Like I would talk about how it's easier for women to get sex because men want sex more, but it's easier for men to get into relationships once they're dating a girl because like women want relationships more. Um, because that's been my experience. Like any girl that I've like slept with would have been in a relationship with me, right? So like once you get to that point. Like, it's pretty much, you know, if a woman will sleep with you, then you're fucking, you know, she'll date you. So, yeah, sure, I guess I generally agree with that, you know. You're 34, right, Myron? Yes. Guys, here's some really good advice for your guy that wants to have casual sex. Fuck other guys. They are down to fuck. And um, do you plan on getting married someday? Do you think it's important? Eventually. The nuclear family is the backbone to any thriving society. Oh, thank you for saying that about me. Good job. You're like 30-something years old, man. I think it's time to settle down. Uh, but a lot of guys <laughs> don't have that ability to find a woman that's worthy. You don't have that ability. I don't have that ability. You're not married. Okay. That's my choice. Oh, but you, but no, the ability to find a woman, you clearly don't have that ability. I mean, the way I would have gone with is like, why do you put so much emphasis on the man and not the woman being valuable as well? Women like bring just as much value to a relationship as a man does. Like, I, okay. I, well, like, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Myron. <laughs> <laughs> if you are single by choice and you don't, let, let me ask you this. Why are you don't on a? Me on a sugar daddy. Daddy. What the fuck? Why are you on sugar daddy it's website? Be your sugar baby, and then he couldn't afford my allowance. Months, it's, it's he couldn't afford. It's honestly like kind of boring. Like the gotcha thing is just like kind of boring at this point. It's been the whole debate. It's uh, it's fucking boring. You know, I. That's funny. Why don't you stuff. just come on my podcast oh, instead? Ethan, are you aware of the fact that we did a complete episode? To be on just, a let the clip, just let the clip play so the audience can watch and then we can talk about it. Or to be on a fucking app. It's called Seeking Arrangements yes. to troll women. Yes. <laughs> and I know yes. a bunch of girls. Yeah, they go on there so they can find women to come on their podcast. Like, yeah, sure. I also talked about it because that's his thing. That's how he gets women so to come I just on here. Be, so thank you for cementing the fact that I don't pay girls off sugar sites. Facts. Thank you. Then why are you on that? Also, <laughs> why are you on that? Because I use it as a dating site. I've said it many times. So you use the sugar daddy. Websites as why would you use there's no way you use a, a dating a sugar daddy dating site just to find or just to find girls without paying them dating sites yeah so we did a whole episode and on then it. you complain about women being shallow I never complain about women being you say, shallow you say it's hard to find a good woman because they're interested uh, and they're they're motivated by material things and stuff and yet you're seeking women specifically who are shallow I mean would supposedly uh, yeah a point that's a good yes that is a good point I've you know that's like the point number one. You know, you're pulling you're pulling a bunch of OnlyFans women onto your show, and then trying to make it seem like all women are just like OnlyFans women, even though they're not. Usually, they're like young people. I don't want to say children, but I'm 33, so like a 19 year old is a kid to me. Um, <clears throat> that don't have like any life experience to just like berate them, and then also to get them paid because all your fans hate those women and then jerk off to them because they're fucking weirdos. Um, <laughs> Willie Mac, thank uh, thank God you felt the sway about it too. I thought it was just going to be, uh, sorry, I'm fucking like my reading, reading comprehension was insane. Thank God you felt this way too about it. I thought this was going to be huge. Yeah, I thought, honestly, it's it's disappointing because it's like every other conversation Ethan has like is good. <laughs> like he decimated Pearl. Um, the Ali London one was solid. I felt like this was an opportunity for him to dumpster the fuck out of these guys. I felt like it should have been so easy because Ethan has the capacity. And I feel like it's just lazy and it's boring like and i think a big part of it is because they you should have talked to ab and preach first i mean i feel like ab and preach are fresh and fits fucking handlers they, they have them on a leash you could have been like hey what's some like really good stuff to get them on and you would have had like tons of shit to like talk about the different dynamics that they had you would have been like you, uh, really able to go into that but you burned that bridge because olivia is sad because of a misunderstanding that you refuse to acknowledge like it's like holy fuck like where are we at um yeah, it was very gotcha based. Yeah, the whole thing is fucking insane. <clears throat> be a certain type of woman, obviously, would be on a sugar daddy website. <sighs> so it seems like you are confirming your biases by even going there to find women. And like, why? Like again, why? I would have went really hard into the how. Like they've said before that they don't drink alcohol. Why are you going to clubs and bars to find women though? If they, if you don't drink, like, why are you even sleeping with women that are drunk in the first place when you don't drink? I think it's really scummy behavior. Like talk about these are the things that you should do. So we're talking about the fucking poop and farts or whatever. How you, you, you know what I mean? What? Okay, you know so you sorry, said, Walter, I'll, I'll say, do you want me to say it again slower? Yeah, I mean, you, you, what is your specific thing that you're trying to insinuate here? Because one, you're trying to attack me for being on a sugar site, which I was going to talk about, but you, but that's fine. So what is your specific critique? Yeah, you, the women, women are what? Just bring up the photos of Myron uh, kissing other boys too. <laughs> like you gotta go to with get, oh Jesus Christ I can't speak. You could have went after him for that too. You could have showed this shit that like where he's like cuddling guys, talking about how pussy is gross, how he doesn't eat pussy. Like oh, so many things that you can do. To, to, but I don't know what, what is this? Are this way you say women are uh, materialistic? Hypergamous? 
Hyper, okay, hypergamous. Okay. And then, okay, let's just start there. Women are always trying to date up a socio uh, in status. Yes. Yeah, everybody is trying to date up for the most part. What do you mean? And and yet here you are. See Men and women just generally have like different things that they will typically value. But like the average woman and the average man are much, let's say, for the most part, people are trying to find like a, a productive life. Like I think it would be great if I could fucking, you know, pay for my, my wife not to have to work and stay home and like hook and clean and do all that stuff to help take care of our kids more uh, when we have them. You know, but like generally speaking, men are looking for somebody that they can get together with so they can have like a constructive family, which means women have to work at this point. So I think that most guys are just like, yeah, I want to find a girl with a decent job too that can like help support it and like on the same page. There's so many different aspects. Speaking out <laughs> these types of women to confirm your own yeah. bias. Don't you find that ironic? Oh, no, good point. Um, because here's the thing. <clears throat> All women are hypergamous, okay? Well, and all women on sugar on sugar daddy websites are. They're even, they're even more so with the hypergamy. So they're okay? hyper hypergamy. Um, but you yes. seek them out, okay? Because here's the thing. Because you well, know that they're, they're interested in your money and not your personality, which is what makes you insecure. Okay, I love how you just jumped to that conclusion, but can I finish my point and Please. then I can go ahead and address right. your ridiculous claim that you yep. just made? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, um, when you're I'm not dating, insecure. Okay, when you're, well, we'll, we'll address that here in a second because I love when liberals like you like to claim insecure. Liberals? Yeah. Yeah, so hypergamy is just like, uh, is a marriage into an equal or higher caste of a social group. Men are the same way. Men and women just have slight, like generally like different things that they might value. So a guy might be more interested in a girl who's like physically attractive and less necessarily interested in what they uh, can financially bring to the table. Like it's just different factors, but they're still trying to date up, right? Um, but that's not all men <laughs> like the, it, things are in the middle class world of normal people. This isn't the conversations that people are having like at all, you know, and I think that there's also a lot of people in general, but like men too, that really, well, men are people, but <laughs> that men don't, I don't think that anybody average, and this is just a speculation, so I could be wrong, but I think that for the most part, nobody wants to date somebody super out of their league. Like, I don't think that like a two out of 10 is really looking to be with like a 10 out of 10 because it's going to make you self-conscious. At least that's my experience, I guess. I don't know. Like, I'm not attracted to like fucking super fit, model-y, blah, blah, blah type girls. You know, I like thick white women. That's why I'm black as fuck, dude. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. I am afraid of dogs too, though. Don't, and I, you know, I'm just saying. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, your left is going on. See this thousand. Anyway. Oh, chill. What are we doing here? That's a whole other conversation. But either way, when you're a guy and you're dating, you need to have multiple methodologies to meet women, right? You mentioned before, hey, you should go to the pause party, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's called, you know, going out meeting a girl in real life. But okay. you want to use dating apps? Yeah, that is what it's called. You want to use social circle? You want to use the club? Oh, God. Dating? Etc. Uh, I don't think that you want to necessarily use all those things. I mean, like, why would I want to use the club to find a girl? I, would, I, don't, I feel like club girls not really on par with what I like. I don't think that you need to use those things. I don't like going to the club, so I wouldn't use a club girl. I would just say, don't try. To, this is the, this is the thing. It's like YouTube audiences. Like <clears throat> it's like an audience. Why would you want to uh, try to encourage an audience that you don't enjoy? Like then you, what what was the point of that? Like I don't I don't <laughs> I don't understand. Why go to a club to find girls if you don't like the club? I wouldn't give that as general advice. I would go where you want to go, comfortable places to go. I mean, if you're a fucking nerd and you love the library, go to the library and hang out there. And then if you see a cute girl there, talk to her. You know, whatever, just quietly. Okay, or they're going to shush you. By the way, libraries are pretty cool. I got a library card recently. Libraries are fucking crazy. There's a 3D fucking printer in my library. It's wild. Um, so yeah. You want to be able to meet women through different avenues, okay? So sugar sites, if you're smart, you treat them like a dating app. Idiots use As it As a club bro, clubs are fine. Uh, okay, fine. Sure, whatever you say. So you get sugar babies and pay. Why would you want to seek out women like that? I feel like people that go to clubs are a little bit more, uh, a little bit uh, more obnoxious. But you know what? Maybe I just don't understand the club dynamic because I've never really been there. On sugar sites? Yeah. So here's the, here's, the, here's the thing. There's a lot of women on these sugar sites, actually, that are professionals. They make a lot of money themselves. They're doctors, lawyers, etc. And what they do is they use dating sites. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know if I believe that, but okay. You're, you're on sugar daddy sites looking for doctors? I never said that. I'm telling you. Dude, he's on there so that he can find people to go on his dumb fucking podcast. Like, uh, that there's women on there, okay, yeah. that are looking for guys that are on their level financially or they're tired That's of That's not what a sugar daddy products. website is, dude. Come on. Who you you can, you're you're doing this silly thing here. Yeah, your, it, so, your limited knowledge is why you're making the comments that you're making. Okay, well, so, so women, doctors, and professionals of all types, professors are on sugar Daddy social websites media, searching for their media, perfect sugar daddy. Social. Now, with that said, there are awesome. a lot of women that are um like basically sugar babies on there and, and escorts. Of course, there are. But your job is the man to screen those girls out. Yeah, mine had their three printer. It's because I live in a rich neighborhood. No, I don't. I live in a nice area though. Okay. And I did this whole episode <laughs> on YouTube where we covered that shit. A to Z. How do you sugar sites to actually date and not get finessed? Okay. Yeah. Don't. I, why would you want to go to a sugar site to date at all? I mean, if a girl's on a sugar site, then she has the perspective in mind that she's looking for somebody to be very financially supportive. And if you can't afford that, then like that's just not the average experience of being able to do stuff like that.
Like, these aren't really dating tips. These are how do you fuck a girl tips. And you do you if that's what you want to do. But, like, don't pretend that this is dating. This is ridiculous. There's no there's no depth to this guy or either of them. It's all just, like, uh, it's all just about trying to fuck people. And that's fine. Do your thing. But, like, let's not pretend that's dating or anywhere close to the next step. All right? Uh, of actually getting into, like, a stable relationship. Because it's not what you're not going to get any good advice from these guys. Okay? And find girls that are actually worthy of dating and not dealing with a bunch of, you know, uh, chicks that you don't necessarily want to align with. Now, is using a sugar site the best way to meet a chick? I would say probably not. The reality is most of them probably aren't going to be fit for a long-term relationship. However, so are, there girls, there? are there girls on there? Because, dude, because on dating apps... Because you can fuck them. Etc. Most women are not worthy of a relationship. Okay, so but but why go there, specifically? So why do your options? So why do your options, bro? Why do the options, God? And here's another thing, too, also. You wouldn't know this, but let me also say this. Uh, no, I'm not, no, I'm just using this as an analogy. You, you know, go ahead. I'm not even going to go there. You might meet a girl on Tinder, okay? okay? Or you might meet a girl on Bumble or Hinge. And maybe she doesn't meet up, or maybe... Or on Grindr. At least they said they were a girl when I met up with them. So. She just doesn't get back to respond to you, whatever. A lot of times, you'll see that girl on her sugar site. Happens all the time, okay? I She'll be way more... I don't... Uh, okay. I don't know that that would happen too much. What, what, I don't know what kind of girl she's really... <laughs> Interested, in, but okay. Or responsive to you on those sites because there's implied status, <coughs> okay? And that's just the how it is. Personality is not enough to get her. Oh, it's the implication. It's the implication, guys. I, I'm, okay. So are you just like kind of lying? About, you're trying to tell these guys to lie about their status? Like, go on the Sugar Bay website. It implies that you have money to afford whatever they want, but you really don't because you're probably poor. Fresh and fit aren't, but like the rest of the people taking the advice, of course. Attention. When it comes to dating apps, your personality can't show until you meet her in person. Yeah, the right. whole goal is to get her on a date in the first when, that's, place. That's when you never get that second date. And that's one of the limitations. Um, that's not necessarily true. Like, it is difficult to get, um, it is difficult to get your personality across through, like, text, though. Like, I agree with that, like, general statement. That's one of the limitations of online dating, which is why I tell guys you need to go out there and be in different avenues meeting women. But with online dating, you are limited. You're just hiding in the avenue and wait for her to walk by at night. Jumper. To that degree, and status uh, and image matters. On your sugar daddy, um, <sighs> profile, you got, you say you guys do one-on-one -on -one coaching? I never said that. It's right here. But you do one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's on your website. What, the, the consultations? Yeah, 30 minute one-on-one. Oh, yeah, we need to update that. I don't do, I, I raise my prices significantly since then. Yeah, because it's on your website and it's open for, for enrollment. And your schedule is fucking wide open, bro. Both y'all, yeah. every I, hour. I, ain't nobody wants to talk to you guys. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 a.m. Look at every day, wide open, uh, baby. You know what's interesting, Ethan? This whole thing is so stupid. I literally had to refund a guy two days ago on PayPal. He actually commented when Candace Owens was in here. Mm -hmm. Why was he jerking off to her? Because I increased my prices and I don't do consultations mm -hmm. like that. That's why it's on your website? It's a wrap. You're not on there like that, man. We need to update it. It's okay. been a while. Fair I've enough. said it. I said it several times on my podcast. <laughs> Guys, I've conversations like that. I've increased my prices. So once again, you're reaching. You failed. It's on your website. How's that a reach? Again, we need to update it. We All right. Update. So that's not my fault. That's your fault. It is weird that he has an updated website, but also like, I don't. What is this? Like, what are we doing here? This is this is just stupid. And by the way, that calendar is looking full though. I don't. I don't know, man. It sounds like a cop. Uh, bro, we don't do you. calls hardly ever, bro. Like we just. We, we, you know what's funny? It's open because we, we fund people all the time. And it, yeah, we don't fund people, man. Don't call everybody. We literally funded somebody a couple days ago. I don't do conversations like that anymore. Sure. So I'm pretty significant. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, same here, man. Whatever I've even mentioned on the podcast a million times. Hey, guys, I've increased my price if you're going to build a console tomorrow. <clears throat> how much is it? For how long? Uh, 30 minutes. That's what this one is, right? I mean, well. An hour, I, maybe? An hour? Well, now I changed it to 1,000 for 20 minutes. What the fuck are you going to tell me 20 minutes that's worth $1,000? That's fucking hilarious. Well, no changing. The, the thing, Ethan, is... It's yeah, nothing, but they're getting idiots to look at it. And the fact that they haven't updated it clearly means that they're not really getting any people to engage with it. Again, Hold it's on. to protect time so that we can focus on a podcast. Because you said we film three times per week or do three live shows. We actually do six. We do one during the day, one during the night. We cover how to make money on Money Mondays. We cover how to date on Wednesdays. We cover calling shows on Friday. We talk about something. How to get in shape, how to make money, how to invest, how to get into crypto. We cover multiple different <laughs> things. Do you think... Uh, uh, crypto. Anytime someone talks about crypto, it just comes off as a scam to me. Do you guys Hold think on, that? Real quick, okay, real quick. Go ahead. This happened today, actually. Hey, man, you probably don't remember me. We had a coaching call back in 2020, uh, 22. I was in a rough spot financially, physically, etc. Today, I'm making six figures, have a great physique, and just really out of it in my life. The catalyst of that call Get was that on Fiverr. What? No, it was no, emailed them. Coaching call. Thanks okay. again. Uh, not emoji. The point is, bro. Like, yeah, no, I, I, I know you can order testimonials on Fiverr. What's your point? No, it wasn't testimonial. Oh, it's, it's not. Okay. Guys, tell me this: when you're trying to, to coach guys how to pick up girls, is it important to give them alcohol? <laughs> okay. What? What? Here's, well, here at the end, there's the clip of, it's Any in here. idea is going to work, guys. It's just that the drinking one tends to have the best ROI because you're meeting her at night and it like loosens up, right? So alcohol increases ROI, and especially when they're underage. And by what the fuck? We're going through so much information so fast. Uh, what? Well, here at the end, there's the clip of, it's Any in here. idea is going to work, guys. It's just that the drinking one tends to have the best ROI because you're meeting her at night and it like loosens up, right? So alcohol. So, like, that clip by itself doesn't really mean anything to me. Like I said, my understanding is Myron doesn't even, like, drink. That's the problem is when one person's drinking and the other person's not. So that could be shady advice based on the context of everything. I don't know. 
but by itself being like, oh, like meet up with a girl that's like drinking because it'll loosen her up. Like that is why girls go, and that's why guys go to bars and clubs is to get a little bit drunk and to loosen up so that they could be more uh, socially, you know, um, available. <clears throat> so like by itself. Again, I wouldn't doubt that there's something more uh, mischievous going on, but like that by itself is like fucking kind of me meaningless. Called increases ROI, and especially when they're underage. And by underage, I mean under 21. You guys give a lot of under 21 girls alcohol in your studio. Uh, that seems to happen sometimes. And by underage, I mean under 21. You guys give a lot of under 21 girls alcohol. Uh, here are nine different girls oh. under 21 drinking on Fresh and Fit under Florida State statute. The crime of providing alcohol to a minor occurs when a person sells, gives, serves, or provides alcohol beverages, person under 21 of age, penalties are... Yeah, that's definitely... Like, so here's the thing. It's very definitely irresponsible to be doing that from like a legal perspective. I don't necessarily care morally because if you're like 18, you're considered a legal adult. So like if you're going to decide to drink at 19, I don't care. But like they should, from a legal perspective, be protecting themselves better. I don't really don't know why they don't. I'll call your studio. I think if they didn't uh, engage so much with all like the ridiculous... Um, gotcha shit like these could have been some decent points but like clearly there's an intention here I'm 18 years old um, 18 uh here she is drinking uh, for cinco de cheers Trump to uh, thursday with the ladies cheers. Yes. call the cops Ethan. <laughs> are you gonna tell me there's water in her cup well, here's the thing. Say, what, 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 18 today. 18. Okay. 18. 18. What's up, Miss Cream? Yeah, she'll tell you, man. My name is Zoe. Oh, come on, Zoe. Zoe. Years old. She's when 18. I see guys that are single, I see her. I see Just to be clear, these women aren't really victims. They know what they're getting themselves into. Most of them are plugging their OnlyFans. I don't really care about these. Like, they know who Fresh and Fit are. You know, Fresh and Fit aren't like these secret, private fucking scumbags. They're public pieces of shit. So if you're going to go to their, their show, I don't necessarily care too much. I'm not trying to be rude, but they know what they're getting themselves into. Um, <clears throat> a lot of shit, but when I see men that I'm here, they are like they're the 21 year olds that hang out that like at, like high schools, so, like that's who they are. Oh, they're so cool, they can give us alcohol. Like those are these guys, you know. 18 Myron's liquor yes. bottles in the middle. They're sipping Kool Aid, I assume, right? They're having a yeah, great we, we soda, see uh, orange soda. To I want to see who in particular this is. We can't see anything. We can't see anything. 20 years old. 20 oh, for real? Yeah, we well, can't see video. Well, okay, well, it's a video of like you having girls Hello. on. They introduce themselves. A lot of them are saying they're 18. This girl just said she's 20. But anyway, and then it cuts to you guys. And then it cuts to you guys back after the show drinking with them. So my question is: Is it good to give underage girls alcohol? Does that increase ROI? When was this? When was this video? <laughs> okay. Uh, can they not see it? I mean, it's right here. Can't see it what, what date was that? Oh, I can tell you. It'd be easier if we could show you though. Is that on our side, Dan? Are you guys pretending you can't see it, or you can see it? I mean, they know that they have underage, under the age of 21 girls drinking alcohol in their studio. They're just like they're they're fucking waffling for time. That's all that they're doing. Yeah, no, we can. I can see your right. little thing there. Oh, you can just acting stupid. Like that's all it's going down to. Like, oh, my reception's bad on my phone, and like they hang up. You know, it's the same tactic. You know? Yeah, we can see the video now. Okay, cool. Shanti, I'm okay. 18 years old. So Shanti's um, 18. Okay. Here she so, is drinking at Cinco de Drunco party. Cheers in the back. to uh, Thursday. So she's sipping yeah. water, right? So there's two situations here. Number one, some girls lie and say I'm 21, and we she said she's 18 in in front of you. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. Or the second one, if we know that they're not 21. We put water in their cups and we do the Instagram story anyway. Uh-huh. I, I did, how did I know that you were going to say they're drinking water? Oh, well, that might be true. I don't really care. On yes. Cinco de Drunk? I mean, they gave that 19-year-old, like, pretty short, like, that, or at least she said that. I guess it could be a lie, but that that girl um, uh, that they were talking about before, like, said that they gave her alcohol, but I, whatever. I don't really care. Again, they're, like, uh, they're illegal adults, but. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, so, okay, it's water in the red cup. Ladies. Again. Yeah. Okay. Nice try once again. Bro, yeah, no, we, I totally believe you guys. If they're turning up with that hot with Cinco water, de Drunco day. Put water in their cups because it's an Instagram story. Well, I, it's so, what, I think it's such a great idea for you guys to pretend like they're drinking. Minors are drinking. I can see how that benefits you so much. I mean, that's such a... Well, they're not minors, just to be clear, but okay. Plausible explanation. Well, you go, you know what would be awesome of us? To pretend like a minor... And yeah, you would want to ID, like, oh, you... Yeah, that's a good point, too. Why wouldn't you ID these people? To have alcohol, so people think they have alcohol, <laughs> but actually it's water. That's again, such a... That makes again, so much sense to me. You are assuming, which is why we do... You're right. You caught me again. Make an ass out of you and me when you assume. So again, you're reaching. reaching once again. I'm not inside, the cup. No, I'm not well, inside the cup. No, I'm not inside the cup. You're you, you got me. Who do they keep cutting? I'm not inside the cup. You're trying really hard, but yeah, man. Build. It's very so, no. easy. And, and so here's another one. It's not just once. It's, it's many times. <laughs> Here is um. You actually brought this up. 18 today. Yeah, I know. You're very happy about it. Okay. She's 18. Oh, yeah. Single. 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 Let's just watch it. We'll finish this in a moment. This girl's also 18. When I see guys. Yeah. You need to find the people that did research for you, bro. Okay. Well, then tell me what's wrong with it. Single. I see her. I see a lot of shit. When I see men around here. So um again. So she is 18, you guys, there's alcohol at the table, and you guys gave her a fake alcohol cup with water so that it didn't look awkward. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly, it's for promotion. Also, so, we include everybody. What's up with this, like, new fucking weird laugh? Thanks, so don't feel left out. Exactly. So, I don't think you understand how shows work, especially how these type of shows run, but ultimately, bro, you're wrong. And again, 
We protect our IDs, but it's all, it's all legal. Yeah, man. So can I ask we, you a question? Can I ask you a question? If you check IDs, how can they lie to you? I don't understand that point. It doesn't really make any sense to me. Environment, <laughs> passive environment, et cetera. <laughs> so let me just follow the logic here. Et cetera. You, invite, you have an 18 year old in your studio. You guys yep. finish the show. You yeah, guys kiss the on lips. You pour everyone drinks. That's before the no, show. Before before the show. Right. Okay, before, before. Right. Before. right. It's good to get them liquored up before the show so it's, easy, it's easier to speak with them. Water. And actually, we tell Water. them, ladies, don't get drunk. If you're able to drink, because we will talk on the show. We don't give them more than two shows. We don't give them more than two drinks, bro. All the time. That's very responsible. Okay, so so hold on. Let me just follow the logic. So you're at this table with a girl who's 18, and you say, um, (sighs) here, take this cup that looks like what you would drink, a red cup, which is synonymous with drinking alcohol. Yeah, we get the point, Ethan. Like, (laughs) yes, they're probably lying, but like at this point, it's like a moot point. It is what it is. Like, I would just move on. And I'm going to put water in it so that people watching think you're drinking alcohol with us. It's for the story. Yeah, it's for the story, bro. Okay, yeah, the story really. Okay, that's I mean, awesome. Hell, if you watch our podcast, now, you think that's a good idea? You see us with red cups and we don't drink. And we're drinking I know you don't drink. That's why you guys are such creeps. You get girls around you drunk and you guys stay. <laughs> I mean, like at least make a like make a point. Be like, oh, well, don't you think that's irresponsible to communicate to people um, that it makes it seem like you're giving under age girls under the age twenty one alcohol, which is like very irresponsible or something. But, oh, bro, that's like Hallmark creep behavior. Again, Myron, it I, is creep behavior to get people drunk, but and then not drink yourself. And you think that's a good oh, idea for eighteen year olds to have so, so have red solo cups? So that so it looks like they're drinking alcohol. Why is that? Is that so, a, so hard, dude. Okay. It's water. It's like, I know. I know you guys are saying it's water, but why would you want to even make it seem like you're drinking with them, bro? They don't want to be left out. Hey, can I get a cup too so I can do cheers? Bro, oh, so you, but it, it's a, it's a, that's not even close to worth the perception that you're drinking with minors. Just don't give them a fucking cup. Only weird was like you give them a glass. Oh, cup of alcohol. They must be bad. Red, give them a glass. I'm the only person who thinks there's alcohol in a red cup. Bro. No, no, it's not about that. It's that it's water, dude. I mean, hell, I even have a red cup when I'm sitting here at the table. Sometimes it's water. Well, a lot of the times, and here's the other thing too. Because and, and when you're what about on Cinco de Drunk Day? They weren't drinking, bro. Of course that, that not. particular was not drinking. Yeah, Maybe the other girls were, but that girl wasn't. She was sober the whole show. If, you, if, she, if she was really drinking alcohol, watch that episode. Oh, no, wait, you don't watch the episode. Why was she sober as fuck, man? <laughs> Yo, bro. Like, Ethan, like, she, the proof is in the Watch the episode, and you can see. She's not slurring her words. Okay. She's not fucking stuttering. She's sober <laughs> as a whistle. Sober as a gopher. Well, I don't know how many people slur on, like, one drink. Um, if it's to loosen them up a little bit, that doesn't mean that they're going to slur their words. But... Yes. Once again, another L on your part. Like, yeah, no, I'm taking fat L's here. It's all right. She's over here. I'm taking fat L's. L. Yeah, She's dude, I just ha- I like to hang out with my younger fans, and I give them red cups that are traditionally used for drinking alcohol out of them, and then make it look like I'm drinking with minors just so they don't feel left out. That's what you said, which is insane. Chris That's Hansen would like to ask you some wait, questions. Wait, are you telling me that you never drank alcohol when you were underage? I mean, they're they're adults, but not, not, not with fuck, yeah, bro. So, wait, hold on. Did you just confess? When you were young. Was that a confession? I think you just confessed. Well, I mean, that would be a confession. A confession if you're like, oh, you didn't drink when you were under the age. That is actually a confession. <laughs> or at least it's uh, maybe not an explicit one, but that's the implication. Like, oh, you didn't drink when you were underage. It's like, why would you need to say that if they're not drinking? I don't understand. And I, I did drink underage, but there's a difference in environment. Like, I was around family, and I was allowed to have some drinks. This is a joke, by the way. It never happened. Um, in a controlled environment versus uh, you being on like a show with a bunch of guys that are clearly to have you there just have sex and promote your OnlyFans or whatever. So like, yeah, sure. But, Especially since I think the devil says that Myron's house too. So. It's not my responsibility. It's not the minor's responsibility. I mean, you're 30 fucking four. Drinking with 18 year olds is just pathetic. We don't weird. Drink, bro. Yeah, you guys don't drink. Makes it even weirder. It makes it even weirder. It does make it a lot weirder that they get that they will hang out with drunk girls and they don't drink. It, it makes it so hey, weird. Even, let, let me, but like you should be going into more than weird. Like it's incredibly suspicious behavior for you to routinely engage with women who are drinking to give people advice that they should get women drunk to have sex with them, and then you expl- like not be into you not drinking alcohol. Like that is incredibly suspicious behavior. It's like it sounds like you're just getting them drunk to lower their uh, inhibitions. Um, it's one thing if you guys all drink, that's like, you're all having fun. You're all kind of like, you know, doing your thing and ha- but you're waiting for them to get drunk. It sounds like there's, there's a lot of intention there. It feels, it feels like a like, disgusting behavior. Let me explain to you. The, the, the underage girls drink water and then the girl of age, okay. they want to drink when they show up. Got it. Got it. They drink so, water. I have a red cup and we, we no, do it so they feel up. included. Yeah. We yeah, want them to feel special. Thank you so much. Z for the seven month small gut. First time commenting, getting me through finals. I could have swore you've commented before brother, but thank you so much. I appreciate that. Sure. And then the girls that are older. You guys are so considered the, the girls feelings the when it comes to drinking and, and posting, and but in the studio, we don't care about them. We'll give them one or two at the most because we don't want them getting fucked up in their age. What's the problem with that? I've seen lots of drunk girls in your studio, man. Bro, it's passed out. They come, come here. What do you see, bro? Are you, they? No, is that a thing? You say you no. give them two. Sh- okay, whatever. Let's continue. No, no, no. Well, I mean, I'm kind of curious about this claim you made. Oh, no, 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 Ethan. Let's go on this road. What do you see that's drunk on the show? I, I've seen, I, I've seen videos of girls. They're drunk on the show. They're drunk on the couch in the back, etc. 
and they got drunk before they came here. Okay. Don't okay. give them more than two to three at the absolute. So most. here they are cheering. Um, here's 20. a 20 year old girl. I mean, the other ones were 18, 20. Hello. Oh, I'm 20. Okay. Uh, I'm under 21. Okay. Take a seat right over there. All right, cheers. Here are the 221 girls with lots of my red liquor bottles here, drinking out of a red cup, which is filled with water, so we don't we don't want them to feel left out. We don't want them. This is fucking crazy. What was the reception of? I mean, I saw some reception. People weren't like super on the side. We're so. Considerate of their feelings before the show. Once the show comes on, we have a lot of women be lying. Thirty minutes actually. Years old. Um, See, Ethan, are you like? Uh, here's the thing, Ethan. When girls come into the studio, right? It's a big podcast. They're nervous. They're not sure. So, like, we obviously have to create a certain aura so that they can feel comfortable. Now, some girls want to drink. The girls that are underage, we don't give it to them. But we have our producer here. He's talking with them. We have girls that work for us. They talk with them. They chat with them for a bit. Put some music on. You got to create a little aura for the girls to feel comfortable. Then we so, do the podcast. Right. The red cup with water is the, is the crown jewel of comforting. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, you know you sound silly as fuck. Girls that come on our podcast are 21 and above. Sometimes it's cranberry juice, sometimes orange juice, but the reality is the majority you, of You asked me if I'd ever drunk, drank underage. Yes, I have. Okay. Yeah. Ethan, uh, I didn't do it, in, but, but like, if adults were offering me alcohol, do you think that that's like, like, you know what I mean? That's weird. No, because you're trying, you're trying to virtue signal right now as if like underage huh? drinking is the thing ever, but you participated in yourself. <laughs> as, a ch as an underage, as a minor, alcohol. as a minor, I participated. As an I mean, again, you could just explain like, what's the atmosphere there. If you're with your family and they're like, oh, you want a beer? Uh -huh. Like, that's not a big deal. But if you're around a grown men, um, it becomes a different conversation to have. Like, you could go with it from that perspective, especially since, again, they don't drink and then they get other people drunk. And it's not just when they're on their studio. It's, like, in general. Like, why are you sleeping with girls who are, like, drinking? Why, If you don't like to drink, then I just think you shouldn't be sleeping with girls who do drink. Um, unless you're married, I guess. Like, whatever. I don't care about that. But, like, in general, it's just kind of, it's creepy, incredibly suspicious behavior to engage in. As an adult, it's a different story. If oh, you're, okay, but sure. as a minor, I participated with other minors. I someone that wasn't 21. Okay, Whoa, you ever did come here someone that was under 21. Okay, man. Sure, we believe that. Just like you believe us with the with the water, right? Okay. Yeah. Sure. And, and all cases of drinking are the same. Not like um going to a date. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think you guys wrapped it up. You're pretty good. Okay. Cool. So how I do you guys? He, why is he, he keeps giving up so quick on some of these points that he could like go in on. I don't understand. So let me ask you this: How do you guys feel about this interview? It was great because you literally brought up all the points that people like to criticize us on, and we were able to debunk them with 40, 50,000 people watching live. We got, what, <coughs> KNR, almost 40 KNR watching? Yeah. I don't know how many you have on your end watching, but yeah, I mean, you made a bunch of claims and accusations, and they're just simply, you know, <coughs> oh, almost like has a sense of Andrew Schultz podcast. Andrew Schultz tried to get a gotcha, and yeah. it didn't. It tried tried yeah. calls anti Semitic, not true. Try to get, oh. ask us, Andrew Tate. Well, I mean, they are anti Semitic. They just dodged the question. They say that he's a trafficker, can't substantiate your claims. Try, you know, I, did. Tried to... I showed you a video of him confessing to it. Well, you didn't show him a video of confessing to trafficking, just to be clear. There's a lot more information you could have went into. Here to debate certain topics that we talk about all the time. Try to say that we're single, or no, say that we hit our, hide our girlfriend. That you're monogamous losers! losers. Well, okay. Let me just ask you one last time. How many Jews died in the Holocaust, you two? You told us about us already, bro. You told us. Oh, you know. We don't know. How many? So to, to rephrase, so, so to recap the interview. Uh, we give minors red cups full of water so they Jesus don't feel Christ. left out for our instances. This is just fucking, this, this whole fucking conversation is such brain rot. Holy fuck. The stories. Andrew, we, Andrew. We, we, we love the documentary Europa, which is about uh, neo-Nazi conspiracies, about based. Jews controlling the we world. With, basically, we with based. And you said it's based. Where, where did we say we love it? Okay, based, right. Thank you for that. You usually say something is based when you enjoy it, so, okay. Very important difference. That is a big difference, because yeah. if we're saying it's based, that means it doesn't align with mainstream media narratives at all. Okay. That's not what based means. Based is when something is like, um... A little sketchy and might not align with mainstream narratives, but also that you think it's a good thing. When you say something's based, you think it's good. It's like, oh, that was kind of edgy and good. That's why you say based. It's that's, but okay. Hey, good. Thank you. Not sure. Well, hey, we all know what, what based what means. Matter? So you say Europa, which is a which is probably one of the most anti-Semitic films ever created, is based. Um, then, let's see what else did we touch on. You touched it? on that. Um, you we touched on that. Let's see. Uh, once girls post, pick, uh, scan. Uh, revealing pictures online, it's over unless they're our girlfriend. Then we can then we can move on. Okay. Um, when you're in a committed relationship with the girl, she's you posting pictures like that, that bro. It's a rap, man. For it's you. a rap, bro. It's a rap. Yeah. Even, you play sound bites. <sighs> I think you don't understand. You play sound bites. Have you saying you love Hitler earlier? Yeah, we can. We can. Oh yeah, you guys got you me good. Yeah. You got to Except you guys word. actually love yeah. Hitler. It sounds like. No, you called us the N word, bro, Ethan. I remember that. You remember okay. that? All right. What? I remember that. So what? What you're false? Are you like a? Are you like a false accuser? Are you doing like false accusation cosplay? Oh no, I'm you making false accusations all day. Assuming mine are based on evidence that I show you. No, no, I'm assuming what you said that word you meant us. I'm assuming. Huh? Oh. Okay. Is that what you don't? Oh, you. And then again, you, it's funny because you played that clip, but you haven't played it again. I said when you're in a committed relationship with a girl and she has pictures of herself. Oh, you want to play it again? That, that's do, we, do we have the? So that's very important. No, I'll play it again. She's with you when she does that. That's a problem. And then once she gets into a relationship with you, and she <laughs> can I just read this to you? Because I think it's funny. It's, it's not really an expose. There's, not, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. I just think it's funny. This is your um, uh, dating profile for the uh, sugar daddy one. Oh, uh, now you're showing this. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so I can see the screen though. Say what? 
I can't see the screen. Okay, now I can. Social media influencer. I'm just here to find a brunette side chick to compliment my blonde trophy wife. This is, uh, that is pregnant with our mulatto. Okay, that's a, it's kind of a slur, but okay. A baby. See ya. Uh, social media influencers, content creators, I run a popular podcast, Miami. I bet Avaka Sodi can't guess my ethnic background through tries. I own a high ticket coaching business that nobody's booking. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Who knows? And I'm realizing that Notorious B.I.G. song, Mo Money, Mo Problems, is disappointingly true. Nice I'm hoping you don't add to that disappointment. Are you having money, or Mo, pro Mo Money, Mo Problems? Yep. Damn. I have so, more money than you, and I'm, happy, and I'm I, good. I'm happy to this bio with you because just so you know, this bio has been copied by thousands of people. Yeah. Okay, oh. just so you, and I can explain to you why I use this term for phrases. Not copy, but here's some of my numbers. Only 4% of male population is over 6'2". Less than 3% yep. of males make over 300,000. Only 5% of men are in shape with abs. And only oh. point, and, and only most other men have a personality that actually makes them desirable to women. I have to invest in these other three so that we don't have to think about that. Okay. I mean, like, Myron's cringe, but the profile is actually not that bad. It's better than the overwhelming majority of what guys are going to post. Most guys don't put anything into their profile. And it doesn't exactly help them. So, I mean, it comes off as, like, if you don't know who Myron is, like, it's just kind of like a playful, confident, flirtatious guy. It's not who he is, but it's what it comes off as. It's actually not a bad first impression. Like, I don't want to compliment the guy, but, yeah. You lucked out. I have all three in one package, so, yeah. Yes, girl. Zesty snap. I'm picky for a reason. Beauty yep. women is common, but high-value men are not. Be yep. prepared to compete. Yep. On so, God. Okay. So, Ethan, um, here's awesome. the thing. When you write profiles, you'd be surprised. When a woman finds you attractive, she actually does read your profile. They spend a lot of time reading. I know, that's the problem. Crazy things. So, well, hold, on, hold on, hold on. It's just cringy. Because, no, you can say it's cringy. I guess it's a little cringy, but it's actually not a bad profile if you don't know who Myron is. Yeah, it's still cringy. That's fine. But, like, anybody's dating profile is going to be cringe. And the problem is, is that, like, especially guys go, oh, your dating profile is so cringe. And then what you what do you do? You don't come up with a dating profile. <laughs> You don't come up with a dating profile. So like you put nothing in there and then you kind of look like a silly little, you know, like boring guy. You have to be a little cringe if you want to get a date. <clears throat> but yeah. there's a reason thousands of men have copied it and I get messages from girls all the time saying, yo, this is literally your profile. Okay. What if they're not over six foot though? They'll use my pictures and they'll do that same exact verbiage. Now, here's the thing. I'm using a bunch of things here. I'm using funny. I'm using uh, crazy arrogance. Now, here's the thing. We will sit there and say, I don't like assholes. I don't like cocky guys. But guess what? What they're aroused by versus what they're attracted to are two different things. Unmarried. Just to be clear, like girls... Okay, so, okay, girls like a guy that's a little cocky and confident. That's what it really is. They don't like a piece of shit. Like, it's a, there's a difference between that. That that profile comes off as, like, a playful, flirtatious person. It doesn't come off as, like, this guy who's super full of himself. So, just to be clear, but okay. Married. Assholes like me. And the other thing, too, is you need to let women know that you're better than them. Okay, and I know that sounds like a foreign concept to you. Unmarried. But, uh, Okay. None of that communicates to anybody that like you're better than them. I don't know what you're talking about. So women date up, right? Women want a man that's better than them. Yeah, men and men and women date want to date at or a little bit higher than where they are. Yes, it's not a unique woman behavior. Oh fuck, I didn't want to get. That. Need to exemplify that now on a site like. And here's the thing: you got to use a different game on different sites. I would never have a profile like that on Tinder or on Bumble. But on Seeking, you need to have a profile like that because you're dealing with some of the bougiest of bougie women. So you need to fight Ooh. fire with fire. Bougie women. You think bougie women read that and respond? That's funny. You'd be surprised. They actually, I'm uh, fucking. I mean, yeah. If they if they want a guy, if they just want like a tall, rich guy, then I like, guess they probably would respond to that. But top top three percent. Be prepared to compete, I have, I have, Buster. Yeah. No, I've yes. seen it firsthand. Yeah. He didn't lie to you. I get hundreds of messages. I showed my secret profile before with people talk shit, and, and yet I'm you're so still unmarried. Not your fault. You don't know yeah. how to. You don't know how to enter a respectful. Oh, this is like, this is fucking dumb. This is such a dumb conversation. Uh, uh, you don't know how to enter a relationship that is meaningful and strong enough that it would be turned. Yes, this is true, but I don't know what this has to do with his dating profile. Into a, a fruitful marriage. You do not, you lack that potential. And I think that's sad. And I how hope that you guys pursue with your girlfriends um, who are lovely ladies. Uh, yes. That you hey, let me ask you something. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're saying that we don't know how. Wouldn't it be fair to say that if I'm, if I've hooked up with a bunch of girls and I've dealt with a bunch of women, I'm probably, probably going to be a good assessor of a good versus a bad woman? No, no, not at all. If your main goal when you date women is to fuck them, then no, I don't think that you're going to be a good assessor of a good versus a bad woman. In fact, I think that because you've had so much sex, I don't think that like you have a particularly healthy mentality when it comes to dating at all. Um, I don't think that you'd be capable of like actually like settling down and finding somebody that you would be happy without fucking consistently cheating on them with. Um, because <clears throat> you're not exploring that side of yourself. When you get good at the things that you do a lot, for like, wow, what a hot take, right? So if you're if you're dating somebody to like potentially be in a relationship, and by the way, that doesn't mean you have to get into a relationship with somebody. You could take it slow, but if you're doing that, there's a good chance that you'll be good at exploring the boundaries and the things that you do and don't like, right? 
because you're going in there with the mentality of, okay, I like this, I don't like that. When you're just trying to fuck somebody, you don't, you'll don't you bypass a lot of the negative behaviors that aren't congruent with you because you don't care because it's not about a longevity. You just drop them when you get, you get bored. So like, no, I don't think that you're really doing anything productive. I don't think that people that are looking for stable, happy, healthy relationships are watching Fresh and Fit. Um, so yeah, no, I don't. D- due to my experience, wouldn't that be fair to say? <laughs> well, if, it, if it's true, you should have found your wife by now. He's just going to say that he doesn't want one. Ethan. Well, Ethan. Oh, Ethan. my God, bro. Oh, God. No. You just get it, man. You, you just don't get it. Get it. This yeah. married guy doesn't understand dating at all. No, you don't. No, he doesn't understand the game. I mean, uh, yeah, I, Ethan probably doesn't really understand dating too much. By the way, when we asked you earlier, yeah. you didn't give any real way for men to meet women in the modern That's day world. That's not my business. I don't give a fuck. I haven't, okay. I haven't written a guide. Well, then you- well, right, but their point is, is that like, if you don't have an opinion on it, then how could you criticize us, what we're saying? <laughs> like that's why they ask. I don't understand why he's not aware of like the optics of that. You are not equipped to have this conversation with us and to try to debate it. our well, it's not that deep. It, unfortunately for you, it's now not that deep. It's not a PhD. I understand all the concepts you bring up. Yeah, now, now it's not that deep. When I'm like, if you're a really out of touch guy and you're watching the two of these guys have a conversation, you're a thousand percent gonna lean towards Myron, right? Like, of course you're going to because Myron, even though it's it's his, um, I personally think that he's really just weaponizing the frustrations of like younger men. Um, and trying to like you know give them a victim complex, blame women for all the problems, et cetera, et cetera. Like at least he's speaking to them of like, oh yeah, see, like they have problems. And Ethan's just kind of like, oh whatever, blah blah blah. It's just like whatever. It, it I don't think it's like a particularly sh- positive communication here. Like it's cool that he's married, um, but it doesn't seem like he can give any advice. Well, she doesn't have to give advice, and it's fine to criticize Russian fit, but like you're gonna have him on your show, be a little bit more in depth about the criticisms here, and try to engage with it. <clears throat> I'm explaining to you the nuances and how that's important when it comes to attracting women. And the Only 5% on, of men are in shape with abs. Again, the platform that you're on okay. dictates how you deal with the women. When you're on a site like that, when you're dealing with women that are some of the most attractive the way, that are dealing with multimillionaires, multi-billionaires, et cetera, you have to be hyper-competitive and also let girls know that, yo, beauty is common for me. You're just a regular chick. It is what it is. You have to almost knock these girls off their bitch pedestal. But you wouldn't know that because you haven't- Again, that doesn't communicate that at all inside of that message. That just, again, comes off as just like this silly little flirtatious guy that's confident. So it's funny how he says one thing, but that's not what he's displaying there. He's not being disrespectful to women <laughs> in that post. He's just being flirtatious. Dated in 2024 because I'm married and know how to have a healthy relationship. Okay, so you are not equipped to give men dating advice in today's day. <laughs> as a, as a- I love the fact that Coconut has said like five whole uh, words this whole interview. Yeah, well, I think somebody wrote a book on how much uh, f- uh, you know Fresh contributes to the podcast. Um, Healthily married a uh, man with a family. I don't have it. I'm not in a position. If you became single tomorrow, yeah, you have no fucking clue on how to navigate the modern day dating market. Divorce t- tomorrow. I mean, Ethan would be fine. He's rich. So if he was single tomorrow, it would not matter at all for him. He's not like a typical person. He's not, I'm not your your average Joe here. Oh, the marketplace. You guys are so oh, funny. What's up? What's up, Ethan? If you got divorced, what would you do? I'd just kill myself. To be honest. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be that explicit. Um, yeah, I love my wife a lot. Like that's pretty much it for me. So goodbye. Both of us understand that. Um, that's it. That's life, man. That's just what I would do. My honest answer. Go knock on your mom's door. No, good one. It is. It was good. <laughs> that was kind of funny, actually. <laughs> it was. It wasn't that bad. We're just being silly now. We're just being silly. I mean, you should probably be a little careful about you know talking about someone else's mom, but it seemed like it was just a silly little joke. So we're just being silly. Yeah, I got you, coconuts. You look upset. You look emotional. I mean, Ethan's mom's pretty good looking. I'll be honest with you. Is that emotion? Exactly. Exactly. With the mama joke. Ethan, since you want to go ahead and criticize my essay profile and how I deal with women, etc., right? Your sexual assault profile. What would you want to? What would you want to have? Oh, got a funny joke. Why that? You denied it. My sexual assault profile. Okay. You said essay profile. I mean, Jesus, man. Seeking arrangement is what it's. I don't. Did that joke hit with anybody? I don't. Oh, okay. I got the two mixed up. I was so used to thinking about the other one. Why are you thinking about sexual assault all the time? That might be unhealthy for you, brother. Yeah, yeah, assuming, yeah. yeah assuming like you've done before and you got debunked. Uh, did the whole show, by the way. Um, so yeah, Ethan, this that's girl, uh, the girl. What, would you, uh, what would you do if you got divorced tomorrow? This girl, say, can you see this man? Than you. What are you if do? I found, a, if I got divorced tomorrow, I would, I would go out into the marketplace and I would fucking, I would talk about how rich I am and how successful, and I would fuck so many. Bro, the second that Ethan got divorced, there'd be like a thousand women in his DMs being like, "Oh my god!" <clears throat> wow, I'm coughing. Oh my God, Ethan, I'm so sorry. Like, do you need this? Or do you, uh, uh, let me know if you need any, blah, 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 blah. It'd be so easy for him, okay? It'd be tremendously easy for him to, to fucking to deal with that. Bitches, dude. All right, it's that easy. How would you go about it specifically? <laughs> my, I, 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 listen, this girl on the left is a. All he has to say is, like, I, would not th- I don't think about that because, like, my wife is the rest of my life. Like, that's not something I've ever considered or would consider because it's unnecessary because I put my time, energy, and effort into. Uh, being with and respecting my wife, not like what the, what would happen if I ever potentially got divorced. 
you know, just having, just considering what you would do if you got a divorce um, is taking away valuable time, effort, and energy away from the relationship, emotional energy especially. Like, what's the point of that? Why would I fantasize about not being with somebody anymore? That's all you really have to say. She's drinking out of a red cup. Girl next to her is drinking out of a water bottle. Well, if she's drinking question. water, hold on. This is good a question. good. If she's drinking water out of a bottle, why is the 18 year old girl not drinking water? Why is she what? drinking out of a red cup? She brought her own bottle. Ta da. She brought her own bottle, man. Congrats, Steve. Why buddy. Did you share the bottle, dude. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's water in those cups. That's what everyone. Why did you think she, she was afraid that it was spiked? <laughs> Believe. Yeah, no, bro, like, bro, they don't know each other. Trying so You're trying so hard, hard man. And it's like, bro. Hey, 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 uh, coconuts. Is hey, this bro. what it's like when you go to, to, to like McDonald's? What would you want to order today? You so. You tell me. The you tell me. They had all this time, and that's the best meme they could come with. It's funny. <laughs> I thought they would have come up with like me holding dynamite or something like wow. that. Yeah, bro, that was. You were holding dynamite. That's not funny <sighs> at all. Our meme guys out today, actually. Yeah, that was from the subreddit. Thank you to them. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Anyway, so wait, I, I, how would you go about, I, I, like, you go about if you were single, bro? Like, I'm asking. Like, what this is our question. Like, I don't care. I don't care. What would you do? I don't care. Now you don't care. I never did. Interesting how whenever we like again, I mean, I feel like my answer would have been a much better deflection. Not even a deflection. Like, give an answer. This is the problem. It just sounds like you know, it's one thing. It's cool that you like are dunking on them. It's funny, all that. Fine, that's great. But when you constantly roll past all the questions they ask and move on, it just makes it seem like you have there's no depth to you or the conversation. Uh, it's just, it's not. It's just I don't understand. Like, this is not smart what he did. At all. Yeah, ask you a question, or we're having a. You know, get into a real well, it's like a weird, <laughs> it's like a weird hypothetical thing. I don't know. I have a lot oh, to think about. When you asked me earlier, oh, well, what if Andrew was actually a rapist? Like, you, like well, I'm you asking you? your opinion on like a concrete, specific video I showed you. Oh, it's you're, a you're, you created like a fantasy world where I'm, you guys fantasize about my divorce a lot more than y'all think about your own fucking girlfriends. Bro, things happen, bro. If you get divorced, it's okay. Okay, I get divorced. What do I do? I um. Okay, what do I do? Okay, let's see. Well, if I talk to a lawyer, I get a mediator probably so that we can part ways amicably. We talk okay. about it a lot. We go through a lot. You know, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to split up. We Not very based, Ethan. You should have just said that you would end it all. Because that's what I... Like, I don't know. You, that, what are you doing, dude? Talk. We probably, maybe even couple, we'll get some couples therapy, you know, to make sure everything's good. Because we want to do, do healthy co-parenting because we love our boys more than anything in the world. And then I'll probably get lunch. Oh, Ethan loves boys? Ew. Um, I'll go to chicken? McDonald's and I'll tell him. You tell me what... I wonder if there's any pictures of Ethan cuddling with boys. Just like there's pictures of Myron cuddling with a bunch of fucking boys. I got... And would you would you try to negotiate desire? Like, is that the, the therapy? Would that, is that what it would be? Or, sorry, say again. Would you try to like negotiate a desire? Is that why you do the therapy? The desire? What does that mean? Negotiate what? Desire. 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 Ne what does this mean? I don't understand what that means. Negotiate desire? Yeah, because yeah. that's typically what therapy is designed to do. I don't. I truly don't understand what the fuck they're talking about. Oh, you guys are doing one of your weird like red pill terminologies. I mean, you it's, negotiate. It's, how do you it's, negotiate it's desire? Strange. What is, I mean, if you're if you're meeting, do you not believe in therapy? At a predetermined location to meet with a therapist to discuss your relationship, and you go over problems and like, hey, well, I don't like when you do this, and I don't like when you do this. Okay, well, if well you we're do already this, divorced, so it's more about just. Ends up being a lot of the times is you take out the trash and you give him sex. Blah blah. We're already divorced. Desire. Okay. What the fuck are they talking? I'm so like I'm, I'm assuming that they just don't really uh, value therapy. That's fine. Okay, whatever. I mean, you're obviously wrong, but do you? So that's what I'm asking. Are, like you're trying. It's like a self fulfilling prophecy. If you don't believe in therapy, it can't work because you don't believe in the openness of it. Like I believe in it because it's worked tremendously for me and my relationship with my wife. I'm, I don't have a therapist. My wife is effectively like she's a behavioral specialist. I don't. I know it's cringe when I bring it up, but it's like contextually accurate here. And she's a behavioral specialist for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities, which helps me additionally because I'm a fucking silly goose. <laughs> trying to go to therapy. What's the point of going to therapy? Because we have three boys that we love, and we want to we want to co parent them healthily. Okay, you can you can do that through the court system. No, I want to go to a therapist. Oh, you want to go through, why don't you want well, to it makes sense to have an emotionally positive relationship with your ex to be able to co-parent effectively. So if he feels like he needs to, uh, to go to a therapist and like, yeah, that actually makes sense. And, but okay. Well, of course. I, would, I prefer to talk to a professional with a degree. A judge a professional. <laughs> with a degree? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, with a big degree there, JD. They're so, a lawyer. They so, a better degree than a the therapist. So your claim, you said classes? What did, what did you say? Because yeah, you said we want, you'd rather go to therapy. And I'm like, I mean, why go to therapy? Me, the, you could, let's just let the court system handle it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, uh, all right. All right. So again, he wants to have like an effect. He wants to be. These are questions that Ethan can answer. It's like, okay, we were going to go through the court system, of course. Uh, although you don't really have to. You could get like a mediator, and you could you could divorce without going to a uh, into a like, go to court. But um, but you'd be like, no, it's not just about the the financial. It's also about like the emotional part and how we're going to effectively co-parent and like make sure we maintain solid boundaries. And we might need like another person to help us get through that because if we're getting divorced, there's obviously going to be a lot of resentment. And there's just so many different like you could answer this question so easily. I don't understand. Listen, cocoa but, uh, coconuts, uh, my boy. He just like, like how many times did Ethan just like roll on from a question? And be like, All right, I don't care. Uh, what, what, what was the point of the conversation? Were you in a bad mood? You constipated? I don't really understand. Like, line, I love you. Ethan, did you really want to debate, man? Because this doesn't it's seem like three a and a half debate. hours. You guys, you guys are just milking it because you have high viewership and you don't usually don't get this many views. Uh, okay. Uh, for me, it's not that big of a deal. Every night, we actually do get we actually get more. <laughs>
<laughs> How many live views you get? Jesus Christ. Well, who fucking cares, dude? You remember, you remember that Rumble? Bro? Yeah, we split the audience. Right now, between uh, Rumble and YouTube, we got thirty-four thousand watching. And how much on YouTube? How much on YouTube? How much on Rumble? We got seventeen thousand on YouTube and another seventeen k on Rumble. How much you get, buddy? Forty-five, forty-five thousand. That's great, bro. Thank you. What's well, around? Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Walter, me and you though. There's a connection. I pulled a wedgie out of my balls, and I think I ripped my underwear. I pulled my under my underwear too hard. I think I think there's something special. You got a you, you got a face that I like, yeah, and I think you're sweet. Uh, but you guys have gotten pretty boring, and I just you're don't boring, care anymore. You're boring, bro. Yeah, now, now, no, you're now boring. Every discussions now it's like you're oh, boring. All right, have a good show, guys. Your aren't working anymore. I don't know anyone watching this podcast, bro. It's just so boring. I agree. That's why I'm hanging up on you, morons. Oh, more yeah. yeah. Yes. No debate. Just add hominems. You call me piglet? You call me piglet? <laughs> wait, you call me. <laughs> wait, hold on, Walter. You call me piglet? No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ethan, I'd be happy to have an actual bait. Hey, hold on, hold on. Walter, you call me Piglet? <laughs> no, no, that's that coconuts. That was me. That's oh, okay. So coconuts, uh, you called me, you called me. Uh, well, hold on, didn't you congratulate me on my weight loss? Why would you go after my weight? That, okay, may, that so hurts bad. my feelings. You're still bigger, buddy. You're still bigger, but hey, you know what? Hold on, hold on. Work? Hold on, hold on. Ethan, Let me see your abs, coconuts. Let me see those washboard abs. Yeah, you look a little thick there, bucko. Okay, oh, it's buddy. Ethan, Ethan, I'll you, you've, been, you've been munching a little too many coconuts. Those have a lot of calories. I know you know how to do that. Okay, look, Ethan, I'll just We should mukbang together, for real. I don't care about Myron anymore. Myron, you're not- Hey, Myron, could you quiet down? We're trying to talk to Walter. Myron, let the men talk. Look, so you guys don't want to have a debate in person. I don't want- I want to talk to Walter. Dan, you're cringe. Come on, bro. Sir, who I find more much more interesting. Walter, we should do a mukbang. I was like, that- Dan being authoritative there and yelling at Myron was the same when Fresh gets authoritative in his podcast, too. They sound incredibly cringe. Because we saw that one time where Myron had to go deal with, like, a fucking issue with his sound or whatever. And then Fresh was the one that was supposed to- facilitate the podcast and it went so poorly they had to apologize to the girls first time he's ever apologized to a woman it was incredible stuff because Sneeko and fucking DJ Academics that's so out of control because they're fucking children and like fresh can the command authority I think it would be fun two guys just eating and shooting the shit mm-hmm. no, I'm good bro what come on no, you guys look upset you know, okay. you know what you should do bro you should focus on staying married Oh, well, yeah. I am. I, ha- I am. Thank There's you for the advice. on the dance floor. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, it, it, I take my marriage very seriously. Thank you, Thank you, you sir. Real hard. I'm, I'm going to be honest here, Ethan. I genuinely thought we would have a good discussion. Uh, a I debate. don't know why you thought that, dummy. All right, I yeah. don't care. We got to go. You, Bye, dummies. What? Dude, this is so stupid. I don't like Fresh and Fit at all. And this is what I'm talking about when I say, like, I want to like Ethan. But, like, it's shit like this is just so stupid. Like, what are you doing? All right, it's been real. No, Thank but, you, guys. Real. No, wait, I don't want to end on that. You know, no, I'm being facetious. I'm being silly. Well, I don't want to. I don't think Ethan did badly. It was never going to be a good debate. But well, I don't know what you mean by that. Like, it could have been a good conversation. I, Ethan could have slammed the two of them on so many points. And he just got fucking rocked. I, I don't. I think it's, uh, I think it's, in my opinion, it's lazy to be like, oh, it's never going to be good anyway, so it's okay that he did that. Like, why? Like, who? What effectiveness did Ethan engage in? Like, who, in, who in Fresh and Fit's audience is like, wow, this guy is actually interesting. I'll watch him instead. What, 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 what the fuck happened here? I, I thank you guys for coming. Uh, we talked. Uh, and we uh, did something. Uh, I think we'll see I mean, what it is. Yeah, part two. You want to have ad hominems? You didn't debate any points. You just attacked us personally the whole time, which I knew would happen. Uh, but you just showed me. Uh, hold on, hold on. My eighteen-year-old friends are here. Hold on. They need. Uh, no, you guys. You guys. Hold on. My eighteen-year-old friends are here. Oh no, no, no. You can use the alcohol cup. Just put water in it for social media. Because you guys used to be based. Now you guys. Hold on. I'm talking to my eighteen-year-old uh, friends. Yeah, put the alcohol. You don't need to drink alcohol. Just put water in it for social media, so people on social media think you're, I'm drinking with minors, which is cool. What do you What do you mean that? Fresh and fit con- constantly moved the goalpost. I don't really understand what that means personally. What exactly are you referring to when they moved the goalpost? They were they were also like avoiding answers. Um, in some instances, absolutely. Like especially, especially when it came to like the, the question about Jewish people. Sure, I'm not saying they did amazingly, but like comparatively, they came off like optically better. So. And this is why, like, <laughs> joke, Ethan Klein, it is true. Oh, do, you uh, have to lose subscribers for a reason, my friend. You've sold out. Everyone knows you sold out. Yeah. You're not capable of having a rational debate like I tried to have with you. My mistake was holding you to a higher standard, to be honest here. That's really my mistake. But that's fine. You just embarrass yourself in front of, what, 50, 70,000 people live? That you're not able to have a coherent, articulate discussion with another adult? Hell, you didn't even want to do it in person, which tells me the type of man that you are? Yeah, what it is. How many people died in the Holocaust, Myron? Yep. You know me, man. Well, I got him with that one. All right. Hey, you're, you're getting him with, uh, with that, guys. You got him. You're, Nazi, you're such a good... You're you're such a good you're not, oh, a Nazi, baby. You got him. No, 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 no. Not yet. I want to do this. Damn. This is anti-Semite. You failed. You tried to say we're racist. You failed. You tried to say, bro. You tried to say that we're sexual assaulters. You failed. No, 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 not that. Look at the chat. What do you mean? I can't see what chat. What the fuck is happening? Oh, man. No, do the whole thing. That whole thing. I was dodging questions optically better. Nobody, I didn't say dodging questions was optically better. I said optically fresh and fit come off better. They also dodged some questions too, but they they came off generally. I would say probably better um, when it came to the points that they were making overall. This was, uh, uh, showing. Is he showing something else? Like Ethan got rolled on the whole sexual assault allegation thing, which is not great for him. And then he barely brought up any points when it came down to it. Like. Uh, 
in a lot of these instances. Like he didn't really push correctly on these these topics, and he kept saying like, oh, "Okay, it doesn't matter," and just moved on. Uh, like when it came to the whole dating thing, Ethan couldn't answer the question of like, "How would you effectively date?" He just said, "Oh, okay, let's move on." You know. On screen. We can't see anything. We can't see anything if you're showing you on screen. Dude. We just hear some music. It's going softly. Go on, guys. Tell me more about me. Also, where are the gay pictures, dude? This is your last chance. Nah, man. I think this is L for you, bro. Yeah, hopefully L. You just proved once. You did this with see. You did this with Steven Crowder too. You couldn't debate him either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you couldn't true. debate him. Yep. As you, everybody uh, knows, I got owned by Steven Crowder. Yeah, you're, you say, oh, you, you brought Charleston White on, but you brought a known camera on that scanned millions of my millions of dollars. I said my period anti-Semitic jokes about venture period. Like it. Well, by logic, I'm Arab. I'm a semi too. I can't be anti-Semitic either. You're see, that's it. That's yeah, see, I told you before. He's like some. He's a semi too because he's an Arabic person. Like if you look at the definition, definition like Arabic people are technically considered Semites, um, but like it's they're not under the umbrella of anti-Semitic. Like when it comes to that. So just to be clear, it's the dumbest thing, bro. What that has nothing to do with Jewish people. If you're if you're Semitic, it just means it means Jewish people. It's colloquial. No, it means no, 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 no. It means anyone from that part of the world, which Arabs count too. Oh God, yeah, but there's different. But anti okay, but you can hate Jews and I hate Arabs, right? You're not a smart guy, Ethan. I'm okay. You're just not an intelligent guy. You're right. Like again, the definition of the word anti-Semitic only refers to Jewish people, even though like this the definition of the word Semitic does include Arabic people. Just to be fucking clear, but all Semites are the same. And if you hate Jews, then you also hate Arabs by definition. Super wise. No, no, uh, by your logic, you're saying that I'm anti-Semitic. I'm trying to do a goof, but I don't know if it's working. Oh my god, this is fucking painful. No, because I'm Jewish too, oh, and I'm like, I can't see it. By that logic, that I'm not, I can't be anti-Semitic either, because I'm Arab. I can't see it. Habib. Hold on, I'm trying That's to That's what he's you saying your logic is, even though he doesn't understand what he's talking about. Goof here, guys. Block our screen sharing, because you guys were scared. Oh, oh, which we know you guys would oh, do that too. I can't too. see it. How many no. kinetic fans are on the screen? We're trying to drown you guys out with kinetic fans. Hold on. Because you can't debate. All you're, Ethan, you're just making yourself look bad here, dude. That you can't have an intellectual debate. You took an L on You watched the whole thing and you don't see how fresh if it came off optically better. Well, then you watch it again with my coverage. I'm not going to go through it. Every single either. talking point. You tried and you failed. There's a reason why they call you guys L3. <laughs> and I didn't make one ad hominem attack on you. Oh, All I yeah, simply did was point to facts and the truth. I didn't insult you one time. Facts and Thank the you truth, much, baby. Respect. I appreciate that. I tried, man. I tried. Again, happy to have a debate with you in person anytime you want, my friend. All right, dude. I'm going I'm to fuck you up if I see you in person, buddy. I'm going to fight you. I mean, if you want to put some boxing gloves on, we can have a nice match. Just I'll be great. I'm gonna I'm gonna fight, preach. Box, preach, pussy. I'm going to intimidate you physically when I see you. I mean, I never say anything, I never say anything about fighting. All right. You Thank you. Box. We can box if you want. Do you want to box? You want to box? You want to stand on it? No. Okay. All right. I assume that. I think it's the same exact reason why you want to have this conversation in person. Just drop it. Just drop it, then. Okay. Uh, it's their Zoom feed is covering your screen, so you can't see it. So I was trying to long time. So question. Yeah. Listen. Uh, that's enough of that. Uh, be real with you, man. That was a fucking train wreck. I think Ethan could have done tremendously better. He has the ability and capacity to do better. You've seen him like trash people, like just pearly things with fucking ease. I don't know why he didn't come into this more prepared. He could have came into this more prepared. Um. You know, most of my issue with him is that, like, my expectations were higher of you significantly. You, you could have got such an easy dunk. Um, but I think that, I don't know, this is fucking embarrassing, in my opinion, for, for both parties, but more Ethan uh, than anything else. So that is that, fellers. Cool.